Yeah, it is. And uh, as we've seen, um, guards can bleed. Tries the dash over to it, gets the grab! What a clean step on the V! That man is a monster! They got two! They got two! Oh my goodness, they turn it back around! Sin cat makes please never underestimate a weeb when you kill their waifu. CTG down at 10% health, 13 seconds left on the cut, fights travesty, oh my goodness, 3 CC, forcing a V! Fires is really low, what is going on? Oh my goodness, down at 5 seconds, there's no way he pulls this out, right? Say Gunja? Jenso gets down to 1%. Oh my goodness. Sadly. And P is going to go down. Details trades one back. Now it's 1v1. 10 seconds on the clock. Retro. No regeneration. Details knows he's got it. Max DP's away. Trying to get the heal off. Retro's trying. There it is. Details takes it home. Oh my goodness. What a finish, Johnny. It gets CC there, but nobody tried to capitalize. Pat. Oh my goodness. Just deleted, gone, erased on the back foot of that one. And his teammate down as well. Magical girls, only one left alive. And Saru Toji showing how strong that hash can be. Stop taking it home. 2 0. Much to chat's dismay. Uh, CBJ, oh my goodness, RSV. Absolutely blown away. But then Zach goes it's down running. on top of it. Oh my goodness, the trade. Now it's a 2 v in the final round here, Okira oh, doing his best on the Shock Nova. He's got his back to the wall. Cassidy Bell's doing as tight as he can get it. MXB, 50CC, the Shock Nova returns fire, but with zero damage. All alone, off meta, just not able to. Oh my god, triple CC out of Idea Life. What a turn for that Mystic. Holy moly, somebody clipped that. Oh, what a monster. I mean, I don't think he wins the 1v3, but oh my goodness. Yeah, he is going to eventually go down. Oh, and now it's no gamble, no loss. That looks like he's sitting on a casting couch. He has to be and backs out of this one. Are they going to? Oh my goodness. With the Hostiludium catch on that one from across the arena, catches both Armin and No Gamble on that one. Oh my goodness, gods do bleed though, Johnny. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Blue Squadron Open. It is Championship Saturday here in North America. We are ready to go. I am Blue Squadron, joined on the caster desk um, with Johnny Five once again. Johnny, would you do your intro here? Oh, yeah. My name is Johnny Five. Welcome to the Blue Squadron Tournament. I am so excited for the second day of this tournament. We had an absolute blast the first time, saw some spectacular fights, had some people who I had not seen before come out to the tournament and just show what they're capable of, and we're going to continue to see that today. I'm sure of it. Uh, yeah, there's only going to be one winner today in the largest prize pool that the Black Desert community uh has ever seen we have a lot of teams competing today it is going to be an absolute blast we are going all the way through the finals we saw both rounds one and two uh last week and that was a blast you guys saw it uh on the hype video there big shout out to note uh in the audience there who put that together for us uh absolute specimen super 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 cool uh johnny do you have a favorite team today um I, I think a lot of people um, are probably going to be looking for the uh, Bobo Buddy Divios team. Um, I believe it's Team C Team also has Raiden on it. Um, I think that's definitely one of the favorites for today, and I think it's probably one I'm leaning towards as well, especially with those uh, players' track history. Yeah, I mean, like, if we look over it, I, honestly, it's funny you mentioned that, because, like, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I think that Divios has won every major Pearl Abyss sponsored tournament 
in his mm -hmm. history, but this one's not Pearl Abyss sponsored. So it, that might be <laughs> that, might, that might be his Achilles heel here uh, for C Team. Uh, they are actually our first match of the day. They're going to be going up against Day Old McMuffin. Let's take a reminder here and take a look at the teams uh, as we kind of get started today. As we have a lot of matches to get through. C Team is Raiden GTR, Bobo Buddy, and Divios. Whew, man, those are a lot of big names, Johnny. Yeah, it, I mean, you have Raiden on the Awakening Valkyrie. We talked about it over and over last uh, time on the tournament. Awakening Valkyrie being one of the best, if not the best class um, for AOA as Shy is not here in this tournament. Um, has all the utility, it has good damage, um, PAs, etc. It's just a great class, plus grab. Uh, Boba Buddy on the Awakening Warrior, arguably uh, number one warrior in NA. A uh, very strong player is in Chonation, so he's going to have the gear to show up for it. It's a good class for small scale. It's got grabs, it's got Q block, um, and then jumping over to Divios, uh, the the main dragon on the team, uh, with Awakening Striker bringing it back instead of the Succession Sage. Um, another super strong class with uh, two grabs, plenty of uh, plenty of essays. It, it was just gross. Um, my brain is not working. This the the barrel roll skill that penetrates forward guard and CCs. Oh, um, is... um, spiral cannon. Spiral no. Or um, you mean for awakening striker? Yeah. Could have sworn it was spiral cannon, but I. It is a spiral cannon. I could cannon? be wrong. Maybe it, it, it is, but it could it's... be wrong. That, that's that one of those thing. skills that it's like, ah, dang it, I had a or I had a protection up and it's just not working today. But just overall, very good class um, composition with very good players piloting each class. So I, yeah. I think they're a very strong contender. Uh, yeah, I think that this might be, this is probably the first seed team. If anyone was going to pick who was going to win this tournament, I would say it would be this team right here. Not only because they are stacked with Divios, but also because this is actually the same team that won my tournament uh, two years ago, I was just starting out as a content creator. I was much newer uh, to it uh, back then in 2022. Uh, but Raiden and Bo Bo Buddy were in my very first tournament a long time ago, and they won. They actually had Dracul on their team, who was an Awakening Sage at the time. Uh, and they went all the way through and took it home for the boys. So uh, I am certainly rooting for them today. But they're in our first match, and they are up against Day Old McMuffin. And I gotta say, there is not a single team in this tournament that I feel like is slouching in any way, Johnny. This is Florang, Bat Soap, and Illiterate. Again, Awakening Valkyrie, Succession Draconia, and Succession Kuno. I think the Suck Drac is something that um, we don't see very often, Johnny. How do you feel about it in this composition here? This, I, I don't think it's going to be one of the uh, best classes for the tournament. It's, it's going to be very, very ion starved. And those ions are very dependent for the class to deal out its damage, to keep up its HP. Um, it's a class that's a lot better in large scale brawls. So coming into like a 3v3 scenario, I think it's going to be initially fine for the burst and then it's gonna quickly kind of spittle out. So it, it's, gotta, it's gotta get something done quick or it's just gonna be useless after a few, uh, few seconds. Uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned that it's gonna get grabbed. He's up against an Awakening Valkyrie, grab. He's up against an Awakening Warrior, grab. And he's up against an Awakening Striker, two grabs. Nobody puts the W in Gwab like an Awakening Stwika. Um, So I am a little concerned for Bath Soap in this matchup here, but uh, do you think that Flow Rank can kind of carry on this Kuno? Because, like, he's kind of goaded on this Kuno. It's absolutely insane. So Flow Rank is a very good Kuno. He's very, very geared, if I remember correctly. Yes, he is. Um, I, I think this is... Um, he's going to be looking for those picks. He's going to be trying to... Uh, find the stealth engages and stuff like that. And then once he gets those picks, then you do have a very heavy bomb um, composition from the other two. That suck track, if it hasn't used its ions yet, is going to be able to just wallop anyone that's on the ground or trying to peel for their teammate that's on the ground as well. So I think if you can get the enemy situated in a small area, the uh, Valkyrie with its vacuums plus the succession drag are going to be very, very devastating. Yeah, um, uh, certainly both these teams have their work cut out for them here uh, as we look ahead here. We also have the Goats versus Sniffa, and we'll do just a quick breakdown uh, so that everybody knows, you know, kind of what the teams are looking forward to today. Uh, let's take a look at Goats here. 
Oh, yeah, it looks like Johnny's camera uh, may be experiencing some issues there. It's no big deal. Uh, the GOATS is Godicus, Hoid, and Swidex. Certainly, the Awakening Valkyrie is the class of choice in this tournament since Shies are banned. Uh, but I do feel that there are a few teams that have done very, very well so far, Johnny, without Awakening Valkyries. Like, it's mm -hmm. certainly a, a bonus, but do you, like, what do you feel like the counterplay is to the class? Uh, Awakening Valkyrie, um... I think one of the big things that it brings is its uh, accuracy buff, uh, along with the heals it can give. If you can burst through the heals, you're going to be fine. And if you're not a super heavy, um, or if you're not fighting in a super heavy evasion composition, you can be fine without. I think we're seeing a lot of evasion comps or a lot of evasion players in here. In terms of directly countering the Valkyrie, I don't think you necessarily need to counter it anyway i think you just got to play around it like any other player i think it's just the big thing of understanding what it brings to the table in terms of utility and making sure that you're not allowing any mistakes by forgetting that utility yeah um but certainly honestly Godicus is kind of the strong and simultaneously the weak point of this composition as he is with most of the teams that he's on Godicus can just when he's playing outside his mind He's basically the best ninja in the game, but uh, sadly, uh, we call him on the floor, I guess, for a reason sometimes. Uh, he does have a tendency to choke, so we'll keep, we'll see if he kind of came out to play today. They're going to be up against Snippa in their very first match of the day. That is Akari, Sayo, Arian, and Rossity, man, who apps, they just came out, they only played, like, one match in, like, their previous, but they, like, 2 owed it and just, like, sprinted through. They were like, all right, we're taking the day off. It was pretty crazy. The Succession Mewa has come out so strong in this tournament that the developers might have to nerf it, Johnny. After already nerfing it recently again, but it's the, the two Mewas in the tournament have proven that the class can deal an absolute disgusting amount of damage. It just bombs uh, in this like small area and anything there is dead. It's got a lot of mobility. Um, it can range, uh, I cannot speak this morning. It can CC at range. Um, it's an overall pretty decent class for the AOA setting. I think we see a, a lot less of it because of its large scale capabilities being a little bit lackluster currently. But when it comes down to the 3v3s like AOS or AOA, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been showing out on the class and maybe it's just a player skill level, but I want to see a little bit more of this class through this tournament. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think that that, that matchup is going to be absolutely insane uh, as we kind of get into it there. Um, I don't know. Who do you feel like is favored? I feel like the GOATS is kind of favored here, but like it, it does have to be said that family has shown up in this tournament outside of their mind. And as we have realized so far, the only ones that can knock out family is family. Is family. <laughs> uh, so far in this tournament. So like one family team is going to go down in that match. I'm curious, what, uh, which, which one do you think is uh, favored there? Personally, I'm going to hand it to the GOATS there. I, I think it's very close. I... I think this is one of the closer matches where we've seen it. I, I can't put um, like a hard bet on either team. I think it's 50-50. And that's my favorite 50 -50. kind of a match to see is the 50-50. I think either team could win it, right? Uh, if you run it 100 times, I think 50 to 50 times each one wins. Yeah. Depending I mean, on like... if Godicus can stand on his feet that that is true that is true but <laughs> this is the winner's bracket so johnny even if we do see these teams lose here we're gonna see them go down to the loser's bracket we're gonna see them again today um because we are currently in the winner's bracket here um mm -hmm. if we look ahead there's another team that i do want to talk about today sinister synergy on the other side of the bracket might be the next team that might be favored to win this tournament this is rujinx um, Precision and Oni-chan. This team's kind of scary, Johnny. This team is very scary. Um, we have Rujinx Ru on the Succession Wusa. Um, I would argue one of the best, if not the best, Suck Wusa in the game. That, that class overall is also in a very scary uh, state. It's very mobile. Uh, it has a lot of iframes. And it just can dump a lot of damage in a very large AoE. Uh, respectively, and so you have to be careful of that class if they sneak up behind you and they do that back attack damage, you're gonna fall real quick, even if you're standing. Um, Precision on the Awakening Drac, another scary class, has good damage, self heal, um, lots of mobility, and then finally with Oni-chan on the Awakening Zerker, I think being the, the, the most lackluster of the three in classes, but a very good um, player on the class, and it's one of those classes that when you pilot it correctly, 
Um, you can show off some very, very disgusting moves. It has, if you're playing smart with it, it can be very disgusting with the desync uh, with a lot of the mouse movement. So um, let's see if he can really pop off with it. Yeah, absolutely. And they are going to be up against Kajito's Baked Beans. I do not make the team names, but this team is very scary. This is Death Grip ice and choice for those of you that don't remember this is basically the same team ice and choice have played together in the best in guild tournament i believe they got third uh this year in the best in guild tournament uh and choice everyone's favorite streamer uh has basically finished in second place in almost every major tournament that he's been a part of um and actually after the last tournament johnny he said you know what i'm just not streaming any more of my tournament matches uh because i want to focus so i don't see him live uh yet today uh but after the tournament i'm sure he will be live today but like we'll see if that kind of helps his performance today the new member of their team since shines are banned there is no Raminia today um the new member of their team is actually a uh, death grip on a succession dark knight it is not an awakening dk i apologize it is a succession dark knight awakening valkyrie succession berserker and i gotta say this team comp is kind of scary mm-hmm this is that um, two bruiser, one rat composition that I've talked about in um, prior days on the tournament. But you have the Awakening Valkyrie with Icy, who is a very, very good player. Choice, the hard cap suck circer. Um, with his grabs, depending on if he builds more AP or DP heavy, he could hold people in the air and just let the Valkyrie and the DK uh, do their thing with the damage. Um, he could play AP heavy and play a lot of support, very fast, very protected class. And then finally on the succession DK, um, it's it's just the definition of a glass cannon, of a melee glass cannon. That thing, if you look at it funny, will fall over. But it's also the thing, if you don't look at it for two seconds, you are going to fall over. So especially with Death Grips having a good amount of gear, um, if he's playing well with his team, he's going to be very, very good damage support um, as long as the other two can properly land the CTs or keep the enemy channeled in an area for Death Grips to do his damage thing. Yeah, right on. And it does look like our very first match of the day is ready to go. So we are going to start getting into this one. The finals of the North American bracket are going to be underway today. This is uh, match one of the day. Seat team versus day old McMuffin. And I'll say, Johnny, we didn't have super favored fights uh, necessarily the first time we had this um, tournament a month or a, a week ago uh, today it looks like the uh, crowd favorite is definitely C team 94% of people I think that we're gonna see a lot of betting on the C team but one of the things I'm super excited for is even if C team is the favorite the crowd favorite they are not guaranteed anything with the players in this tournament anyone can win yeah absolutely we are Locked in and ready to go. King Divios, as the gates open, this is not a team you want to see on the other side of the arena uh, that you are fighting here. So Divios uh, jumps right in here. Uh, he is just rotating superheroes in the middle of the arena. Bobo lands a knockdown with the ground pound right there. Divios actually taking a lot of damage down at half health, uh, but gets really healthy there. Bats up, taking a good amount of damage, does have to be, and you see how quickly this team spreads out, looking for for that V. It does look like they found him outside of V. Cho Nation looking so, so good. The C team coming out and making short work of McMuffin's first teammate right there. It is a 2v3 immediately in that succession. Draconia, as we said, very scary. Bobo actually is on the ground, but uh, there's Raiden there to peel for him as always. That's why he's widely considered one of the best Valkyries uh, in North America here. Uh, as he just kind of kites around, you see how passively uh, he plays on the side of the arena arena just waiting for his teammates to go in so he can support them and then throw the damage it's not Raiden's job to jump in and make the CC happen there's Florang on the ground but he has so much evasion innovation we trust he stands right back up doesn't even have to V um and stands right back up is just fine Didios on the ground as well but again innovation we trust illiterate's being bounced as well but look how much damage he is taking Didios drops the leg and he will go down as well Florang is the last one left alive uh and he is actually He's landing CC after CC. He's kind of working uh, Bobo Buddy right now uh, as he uses Shadow Clone to kind of back up a little bit right there. Uh, constantly keeping uh, Bobo on his toes here on the Awakening Warrior. Seems to be a little bit of the weaker link uh, in this composition. The Warrior uh, a little bit vulnerable. There's a clean grab from Divio's Flow Ring in his hands right there. Does get the V off. 
um as all three members spread out in a triangle sniffing for this v and it looks like they are gonna find him underneath the pavilion they're gonna take him down in the first round here um as we go in c team is gonna take our first match johnny i think that's what a lot of people were expecting the c team to take the match but even with it though it it went down to the minute six it's still very much in family's game it's very much in um uh, in the realm of possibility that they can win this if they come back to it i mean even if they do lose this we are in the winner's bracket like you said they'll have another chance later but with the divios team or with the c team they've just been chipping down they're not doing any risky moves they're not doing anything to put themselves in danger they're playing very smart and very safe yeah right on illiterate going right in again illiterate's been playing this matchup super super well uh he's got the mirror over on raiden over there and you see both valkyries kiting around the middle of the arena looking for their opportunity to jump in and support their teammates if they were to get cc but it's illiterate on the ground and it's bobo doing the damage uh he does look like flooring or divios rather had to back up there and they're trying to get the grab down on him they do find it flooring on the hunt. It's Divios Ving right now is Goliath staggers back onto his heels. Divios comes out of V and it's family collapsing right down on top of him. Divios not used to being on the back foot like that. Does get back to full health thanks to Raiden. It's Illiterate taking a lot of damage now. He has to be in back out of the fight and he is being into the corner. It doesn't look like uh, they're going to find him here as he's going to rejoin the fight. There we go. Right in the middle of everything. He does get healthy again. That purification is so good. Raiden grabs him, though, and he says, sit down. No V available. Illiterate goes down. And Raiden expressing dominance on the Awakening Valkyrie in the mirror matchup right there. Bobo did have to go into V. Look at the support from Raiden right there. Anytime you see them get low on health, it, he is right there with Elion's blessing. He's right there with purification to heal his teammates right back to full health absolutely crazy as they sniff out flow ring they will be forced to the losers bracket it does look like c team taking a 2-0 win in the first round johnny i mean again i think that's what a lot of people were expecting i thought family was going to have that second round for a second it looks um, scary <clears throat> yeah yeah um and then event uh them jumping back into the fight, flooring, and I believe illiterate both falling onto the ground at the same time, taking a ton of damage, forcing a V, uh, flooring managing to get out just fine, dashing around all over the places Kunos do. Um, but when you have that advantage, you can't make the mistake to just get CC'd like that. And sometimes, you know, it might be desync, it might be gaps in skills, um, maybe a lucky CC from your opponent. But you have to be careful to not overrush things, to not just jump in. Keep your advantage. Keep using it and play smart. Right. That's what um, C-Team did that whole time. We did get an instant replay there. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it here. This is why Raiden is so, so good uh, on this Valkyrie here. You see that Bobo actually is goes into V here um, as he's getting bounced around. Illiterate is the one uh, that goes down right here. And you see Raiden immediately on the hunt for his own teammate there in comms right there. They see him come out of V. There's the purification. There's the Ileon's blessing. Bobo is just not going to die. No one on that team is killable because Raiden is just that good at awakening valkyrie is so cool to see johnny mm -hmm. it's Absolutely one of those classes insane. where if you know how to play that thing somebody is piloting a brick and that's what it, it, it is it hits hard it stays where it is um it's it's weirdly supportive right it has the heels it has the pa um it has the accuracy buff so when somebody plays that class at the max it's very very impressive to see and i love seeing the awakening valkyrie shine in this match so far or in this tournament so far absolutely well we're already looking ahead to our next match here which is going to be uh the goats versus sniffa i have turned down effect opacity a little bit for you guys uh in our spectate feature uh so that the effects are just a little less intense for you guys let me know if i need to adjust that again but again we already looked at this matchup once already Johnny. Again, this is Godicus, Hoyd, and Swidex. They had such a good showing uh, in the first two rounds of this tournament. They did not have a bye. They have fought their way through the first two rounds tooth and nail looking so so clean uh, and I do think that they're favored here as long as Godicus is playing um, on the edge of his seat. And Yeah, it's very much you know, if Godicus is sitting up in his chair and is tilted forward a little bit um, I, I think he's going to be able to show off what he can do. It's the big consistency for this team here. So if they remain consistent, they remain on um, on the level they need to be, and they got their fingers warmed up, I think they're going to be a very strong team. Uh, not to disclude the next team as well. Yeah, no, and that is Sniffa. 
the bloodhounds that they are honestly living right up to their name akari sniffed two or three v's uh in the very first round uh of the tournament absolute unit um on the succession mewa he has been rank one aos on mewa for the last two years um absolutely insane uncontestably the best mewa on the north american server no question arian on the succession ninja um and i think that Honestly, this might be more of the weak link. Arian's kind of a unit on the Suck Ninja. And it's going to come down to Arian versus Godicus, I think, here. Because, like, it's a mirror matchup we saw in our last match. We saw the two Awakening Valks squaring off. Uh, and we saw Illiterate come out on the shorter side of that one. So, um, I do think that Arian versus Godicus is kind of the matchup to see. And then you have Rossity Man on the Succession Musa. Compositionally speaking, I do give it to Sniffa here. Compositionally giving it to... The the uh the awakening valk buff isn't gonna or the, sorry the uh accuracy buff from the awakening valk isn't gonna be of use for them um i i, I definitely could see it for the i mean it's the triple rat team the triple rat's gonna be gross for it any one of them finds a sniff the other two are gonna be able to instantly follow up uh rosity man with a ton of damage on Sukwusa, akari with a lot of movement a lot of damage and Arian with a lot of movement and a lot of damage. But with their name, their team name being true, that is one disgusting team to try to V against, right? If you do that anywhere in the arena, these classes, they can find you. Yeah, I think that this is kind of the composition to play into a Valkyrie composition like this. Valkyrie, you saw how passively Valkyrie kind of has to play um, in order to support their allies and really get the value out of the Awakening Valkyrie that you're looking for. And three rats... And they're just not going to let you play passively. I think that if they can get on top of um, the Valkyrie, I, in this case, it might look kind of bad for them, Johnny. I, I think the Valkyrie is going to be the target, especially with um, Suck Maywa having some guard breaks, Suck Ninja being able to grab, and Suck Wusa just dealing an absolute ton of damage. Yeah, I make sure you get your predictions in as we are just about ready to get this one underway here. A Swidex on the Awakening Valkyrie, but certainly um, the matchup to watch is the two Succession Ninjas going at it with each other. Some of the best Succession Ninjas in the world in this tournament. We have Armin, we have Godicus, we have... And, and we have Ari. Honestly, we have pretty much every major uh, Succession Ninja. We do not... I don't think Yellow is in the tournament, sadly. Uh, but basically every Ninja who's anybody is in here uh, as the gates go down and we're about to get started. All right, we have the Awakening Draconia on Hoyd. Hoyd has not been on Awakening Draconia for too long, Johnny, but he's kind of a gamer. So, like, once a gamer, always a gamer. We'll see if he can make it happen uh, for his team here. Gotik is coming out. The initiator for his team tries to get in position early. Uh, not able to actually quite get there. Goes in a block jump to keep himself safe. Um, as he backs up, ninja step backward. Oh my goodness, that's not what we want to see. Gotik is on the ground. Double CC. Hoyt is on the ground too. Gotik is holds onto his V, slithers to safety, uh, and goes in to uh, stealth there. Uh, looking for a V on the back side of it. Akari is also very low on the succession ninja. Or, I mean, on the succession manual rather, trying to get that trade off. And they haven't been into the corner here. Hoyt is very low. Akari's the one that gives an inch though. And he is going to go down. Look how low everyone is. Good block jump grab from Godicus right on the edge of his seat right there perfect grab to clean that one right up uh his team backs right up there it is a 2v3 the goats are technically ahead but they are behind on HP right now as they back up Swidex uh not throwing a heal out towards Godicus right there but trying to initiate with Hostiludium uh as HP dart bars tick down to 80 percent now uh Arian on that suck ninja needs to find or make something happen uh to initiate on that flanking assassin class there Godicus moving through he knows he can play this look how much slower the tempo is now that they oh my goodness the Wusa just gets eliminated he is gone and it looks like Guess what? Family wins again. The goats, well, Godicus does get grabbed, but stands right back up, goes into Red Rain. That is a bleed and a DPD buff uh, for the enemies. But more importantly, uh, it's a nice uh, super armor to go ahead and sit in. While you wait there, you can see they popped all three class buffs on the left side of your screen. Underneath their health bars right there, you can see those icons are their class buffs. And it indicates that they did actually use them here. So they're actually waiting uh, for time. Uh, as the arena kind of ticks down here uh, and their class bucks kind of come back. Swidex in some trouble uh, as it looks like Arian's kind of working him right now on a 9-5. to five, But uh, a clean CC by Godicus 
Uh, and Arian is on the ground. Uh, turns back around. Celestial Spear tries to re-CC, but he resists it. Red Rain to keep himself safe. Arian gets caught right there. There's the grab going down. And again, they're just kind of kicking him around, playing with their food for the next 47 seconds here. Uh, as we wait for it, Arian just kind of running, trying to do what he can uh, in this 1v3 here. Johnny, it's not looking good so far for Sniffa. It's not looking good. They were able to get the V-Sniff but they were not able to follow up and end up losing one of their own for it, which is very, <laughs> very unfortunate for them. It's going to be one of those things where just because you have the V doesn't mean the kill is secured until they are dead. You have to stay protected. You have to deal the right amount of damage. If it was a trade one for one, it might have been a different situation, but giving up one after finding that sniff is very, very rough for him. Yeah, Arian actually getting the clean CC on the Conicus there, but uh, sadly, both ninjas have evasion and neither of them have enough accuracy to kill each other. Uh, so it does look like Goats is going to take the first round of uh, this one as Sniffa has their work cut out for them on the other side. But I think that Akari just traded a little bit too aggressively in that first trade there, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I, I very much agree. Yeah. Uh, we had Goticus and Akari on the ground at the start. A ton of damage being dropped right away. Got a kiss on the floor. Again, if they just stayed on their feet and just did what damage they can, then they just have the HP advantage rather than risking it all and ended up losing the match in the meantime. Yeah, the they had got a kiss on the ground. I'm stunned that with the accuracy modifiers that Maywa has that they couldn't just one shot him while he was on the ground. But that's exactly what we were talking about before is got definitely is known for um choking kind of at the start of matches and things like this kind of throwing the lead but you saw him turn on the juice in the second part of that round here we'll see if they can catch him out uh one more time here as the stub arrows start to come out for akari he's poking away uh at his opponents got is trying to move across uh as red rain and blooming come down for akari right there you can see him on the outside this is exactly what flanking assassins want to do they're trying to corner um their opponents uh on the side here neither team really wants to give an inch as they that finally come in Godicus goes for the cc finds akari good grab on the re cc it doesn't look like they're gonna be able to get him swidex with a good capitalization akari stands right back up tries to trade but he's out of hp turns back around says hoyt is really low but he just can't go back in he doesn't have the hp to trade and mewa has to get in close to do that damage it is very very difficult to get in close but if you can oh my goodness it is a world of hurt hoyt flying after akari here uh, as they try to put damage down down onto Swidex. Akari can't seem to get above 30% HP on this Mewa here. Uh, uh, as it looks like, honestly, Sniffa just losing out on trade after trade here. They just can't get healthy again because they don't have a Valkyrie to heal back up uh, on it. And they just don't feel comfortable committing after losing the first engage in the first round like this. So, oh, there's there the split. hard... Hard collapse down right there. Does look like Swidex is going to go down. They did find the Awakening Valkyrie. That's exactly what Sniffa needs to try to do here. And it is a 2v3 sweep the leg. The Valkyrie is the weak link here. If they can try to isolate and destroy it. Godicus uh, on that Suck Ninja now has his work cut out for him. I'm not sure that they have the damage to actually make this happen here. Um, although they do have an awakening Draconia, so what am I saying, Johnny? Of course they have the damage. They just need to work together really well here. It's one of those things they have to be consistent on. So they have the lead, they need to play together. They need to play smart and they need to play protected. Yeah, Rossity Man down at 20% right there. Health bars are capped at 50%. Hoy is CC'd. He is going to go down right there. You see how quickly uh, you can die against a succession Mewa like that. And now it's just got a kiss left alive with 30 seconds on the clock. And now, how do you like it when we play with your food? Clean stub arrow by Akari right there. Look at the cleanup on that one. And they are sniffing for the V. And it looks like, honestly, yeah, Sniffa cleaning this one up nicely, Johnny. What a clean round for them. That, that was, I mean, they did exactly what we were saying they needed to do. When they got the V on Swid, they, they instantly sniffed him down. They instantly chased him down. They found the target and they killed it. And that put him into a 2v3 situation, uh, putting the enemy down to the back foot. And it's what they needed. It's all they needed to win. The rest of them had the damage. They were able to find the CCs. They just had to play smart, had to play protected, had to get those CCs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as we saw the 2v3 kind of go down in that instant replay right there. The gates are up and away we go. It is a best of three. So the losers go to the losers bracket here. And the goats 
are sweating right now. The gates are down. Everyone is out. Uh, and they are waiting. Rossity Man playing very reserved on the succession woo. So there's the butterfly. Step forward. Looking for anything there. Decides to bounce right back out. It is a longer cooldown right here. Akari moving through the middle of the arena, looking for a stub arrow. See if he can't find a cheeky little pick uh, with the stiffen uh, on that skill there. Arian as well on the Succession Ninja. Going to go ahead and rotate Succession Ninja. Not the best uh, at lingering super armors and things. You constantly just have to spam skills out. That's part of what makes Ninja so, so difficult to play is that you always have to be casting skills to keep yourself protected like this. So that's what you see Arian doing right here. Uh, kind of buying his time. You see he's looking directly at Swidex. He is on the hunt. Block jump right there. Doesn't get the grab off Swidex with a beautiful avoid right there. Oh no, it looks like uh, the Draconia went down. It does look like the goat's on the back foot here. He just died so, so quickly. Arian on the sniff, looking for Godicus right now. But it does look like they lost Hoid. Godicus in the corner, being pinned against the wall. He does not like this. Swidex has no heals left. He is sticking down as well. But clean CC. CC. Godicus goes huge. Absolutely massive on the CC right there. Forcing two Vs out. Godicus bringing it back for family. And they get... Oh my goodness, they got... Got Akari, and they killed Arian. What is happening? Godicus is absolutely an animal turning it around in this match. Family will not go down without a fight. Swidex keeps him healed up. It's Rossity Man against the world right now. Oh my goodness. That is exactly what we were talking about. Godicus just flips the switch. Oh my goodness, Johnny. I'm an absolute fantastic performance of Godicus doing his best appeal for his, his ally. I am just absolutely blown away that the the enemy would allow him to do that by both being unprotected if it wasn't one of the situations you get grabbed it's understandable you know it, it's gonna happen it penetrates through that protections but for both to get cc'd like that in the back forgetting that god wow. is there i know you might think he might be on the floor but he was not that time he, he was, was standing not up that and he time. was bringing the boot yes he was let's take a look at the instant replay there i'm not sure if i caught it uh, quite perfectly, but this CC in the corner here is absolutely insane, as they think they have it. It is a 3v2, uh, and they've got the sniff coming in, but they forget that Godicus exists. They focus so hard on Swedex. Look at the CCs come in from Godicus here, uh, and he just blows. There's the grab right there. Triple CC, and Godicus cleans up house on that one. Absolutely insane turnaround for that match right there. I thought for sure, I thought Sniffa had it, Johnny. I thought they had it. What a crazy round. I, and th those are the matches that we want to see where it's back and forth is close. Again, like before going into the match, I thought it was 50-50. I thought either team could take it. And at any point in time in that last round, I wasn't sure who was going to take it. We had the advantage um, from the goats and then, back, you know, back and forth to sniff it to goats to sniff at the goats. And then finally they closed out for the win. Um, wow. I, I, that was not what I expected. That is not how I want, uh, thought that was going to play out. But man, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Those kind of matches are the best. Yeah, we're super biased because we want to see all of them go to the best of three basically every time. Uh, and now a match that a lot of people have been waiting for. We love to watch Choice play Black Desert Online. And this time he's not just grinding in a circle. It is Death Grips ice and choice and this composition might just be one of the best in the tournament i don't know if the succession dark knight is necessarily the play but it certainly adds a tremendous amount of damage the weakness being johnny that it's super squishy man it is like a fart in the wind uh if you catch it with a single skill so death grip definitely the player to watch here as i think choice is basically playing frontline ice is playing support for choice and death grip is going to be the one that has to throw down the damage without dying himself it, it's going to be one of those situations where if Choice is able to land the extended grab and he's built tanky, Death Grips and uh, Icy on the Valkyrie are going to be able to just dump an absolute ton of damage on that target. There's almost no world where they don't die. I <laughs> spam this flower to give baked beans power. I <laughs> love it. And they are up the against one of the favorite teams to win the entire tournament. So this is a match to watch. Sinister Synergy, team for the Rose, as it were. Rujix, an absolute terrorist on the Succession Musa. Precision on the Awakening Draconia. And Oni-chan on the Awakening Berserker. I think the weak part of this composition is that the Awakening Berserker 
doesn't do super hot into a succession berserker i think in a 3v3 matchup johnny how do you feel about it i think the awakening berserker is going to be the weak link in this situation but it's not a weak class by any means and in these kind of scenarios it can use its flight skill to remain in super armor if it needs to um it can move around very desync desyncly i don't think that's a word it, with a lot of desync um with the mouse movement on its skills it's one of those classes you have to be careful especially with the triple grab it's got range ccs it's got range damage and if it really needs to it can fly right in and blow you up too yeah i mean like this is i don't know man like compositionally who do you think wins this i don't i want to go i want to give it to big beans compositionally yeah i do too i mean like you just it's just a good bet not to bet against valkyries in this tournament man i'm telling you um i as, as strong as valkyries are though i do feel that you can beat them um as we saw in our last matchup um akari's team doesn't have a valkyrie and they were able to sweep the leg quite efficiently there ice is a tried and true awakening valkyrie super super good at the class um and has played in many tournaments and has played alongside choice so uh, definitely he's got his work cut out for him here as he's against awakening zerker with a grab uh awakening Draconi with a grab and a suck wusa uh who can roll their face across the keyboard and basically delete you make sure that you get your predictions in as we are about to get this match underway there uh, there is no chill um today in any of these matches as the gates are down already uh i'm gonna give it to death grip steam 2-1 johnny what do, what do you think the score two, is gonna be one i'll give it to him 2-1 I, I think it's gonna come down to choices grabs and death grips not dying in nothingness yeah i don't beings. So death grip is absolutely a super thirsty dark knight uh down tremendous and uh sinister synergy knows that as they have come not even clothed for this match as two of their members literally aren't wearing any clothing at all oni chan actually hits the ground on the awakening zerker but stands right back up death grip has to be choice on the ground oh my goodness he has to be too that is not good you see rujinx on the prowl right now again oh no, oh, no. choice gets sniffed down he goes rujinx says i know where you are absolutely insane sniff uh, on that one right there ice jumping uh, as all three members spread out right there death grip doing what he can on the awakening dk but sinister synergy looking so so strong showing why they are one of the favorites to win this tournament right here and now it's death grip left alive on the suck dk to 1v3 jumping around doing what he can I don't know, Johnny. I don't, I don't know. In a what? Oh my God! He gets the airstrike. Oh. Persistence on the ground takes a lot of damage from. Oh my goodness! But Death Grip just gets deleted. That's the problem with Suck DK. Almost had it right there, Johnny. But uh, a rough first round. We gotta both. We gotta see both edges of the sword on the DK there, dealing a ton of damage to Precision, getting him CC, getting him on the ground. But as soon as the teammates went to follow up, just a little bit of damage. Poof. Class yeah, you see the perfect sniff from Rujinx right there. They are basically, they all just spread out in the arena. They knew they had two Vs right there, so they could just spread out and look for a V uh, at their leisure as the gates go up into round two right there. So, like, it was just kind of happenstance that he happened to find Choice right there uh, as he pokes in here. Oni-chan actually poking away at Choice, abusing the fact that Awakening Zerker has that range. Comes right in on Choice, gets the ground down. Choice taking a good amount of damage, but expertly holding on to his V right here. Gets back to his feet. Uh, is really healthy because Ice keeps him on his feet with that Valkyrie. A great job supporting on the Awakening Valkyrie right there as he keeps his team healthy. Oh my goodness, Precision takes a lot of damage. Down at half health. Death Scripts, though, is the one to watch as he's down at 10%. Choices on the ground. Rujinx say Gunja Plum almost just ate his entire health bar. And Choice says, this is ethical. This class is fine. Clean sniff on the V again by Rujinx. He just has Choice's number right there. And it is a 2v3 now. Ice is in Oni Chan's hand. Black Rose on the hunt for Cho. They said, we're not here for you. We're here for them. We are here for Divios. Ice gets pummeled by Oni Chan's Awakening Zerker right there. And it does look like they're going to take this. Um, Death Grip doing his best on the uh, suck DK here, Johnny, but I'm not sure he's got it. Yeah, he finally does go down, but it looked convincing, but I just think that they made a couple mistakes, Johnny. I feel like they made a couple mistakes. Choice in both matches getting sniffed out of V by Rujinx is going to be, yeah, it's going to make it very, very rough. <clears throat> it's one of those classes where just looking at it, you might not think that it is the best V sniffer class, but I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit um, 
a little bit uh, like an under, underdog for it, a little bit underappreciated for how well it can do that. It has good movement, um, and then of course it's always going to have the follow-up damage. It doesn't matter what you're playing or who you are. If you're any sort of uh, low on HP, it's going to kill you. Yeah, I mean, Choice didn't do the best job of it. Like, it was really obvious. Like, so what Rujinx would do, and it's very subtle. He waits for a couple, he sees the V, he waits for a couple seconds for the person in V to choose a direction. And then he just goes in the direction where there are no people. Because that's mm -hmm. the most likely place for Choice to go. And that's exactly where Choice went in both instances there. So able to sniff that out uh, and run them down uh, very tragically there. So, um... They're getting swept down to the loser's bracket as we look ahead to our next matchup, which is yet again a banger. There are no bad matchups today. I was just about to say there are only bangers today. Yeah. Uh, Onlyfans.com slash only bangers, as it were. Lazzy Noodles, Larry Fish, Kuma Queen, which is Jazzy Sensei on the Succession Mystic, and Nudes on the Awakening Kunoichi. Remember that this is the team that got second at the best in guild tournament in 2022, the exact same team uh, that got second in that tournament. Nudes actually doesn't have a microphone, um, but clearly it doesn't seem to hurt them, Larry. Or um, Johnny, sorry. Oh, um, I, having Nudes uh, on my flex team before and playing with the man himself, uh, they are, they don't need it. They, they can communicate otherwise. They have pings, uh, I mean, even just the way that they can follow up with you. It feels like you have a guardian angel of an awakened Kuno with you. Um, and then you have Kuma Queen and Larry Fish on their respective classes. I think Awakening Valkyrie is still better in this kind of a setting than Succession Valkyrie, but with the way the Larry plays on the Suck Valk, he can definitely show it off and make it work. Kuma Queen on the Succession Mystic being very tanky and still doing a good amount of damage to any sort of DR class. Um, I think the Mystic is gonna be the weak weak link but not by much i don't know not man much. you say that but like look how tough this team is to kill larry fish succession valkyrie as a spec is definitely more tanky than its awakening counterpart and it's just so so hard to kill larry he has literally all the gear on the server so does kuma queen jazzy sensei on this suck mystic also has a tremendous amount of gear as well and then how do you catch an awakening kuno right like i think it is nudes that you have to try to go after is he was the one that dropped the ball in the first round um like that when they fought the console boys at the start of the tournament um mm -hmm. And they, yeah, I think it's nudes here, but like, it's very difficult to catch an Awakening Kuno. Oh, it, it's so difficult to try to catch an Awakening Kuno. Yeah. Um, um, and that, well, now we're over at their opponents here, which is Rule 11, Kosini, Alusha, and Kairos, who I believe got second or third um, in the best in third place in best in guild of 2023. Absolute units. Um, in this exact same composition here, Alusha actually managed to get out of the gate three out of the four times in that tournament, but a spectacular Awakening Valkyrie, and you'd be surprised how much higher the win rate of this team is when he does leave the gate. I would imagine that it goes up tremendously when he actually manages to get out of the gate. Alusha so far, what, two to one versus the gate? Um, but assuming that Alusha defeats the, the first battle of the gate going into the actual match itself, the Awakening Valkyrie, Awakening Wizard, and Awakening Draconia is a very, very gross composition, just um, just looking at it purely as that. When you get into the actual players for the composition, it becomes even better. Kosini, arguably number one Awakening Valk in NA. Olusha, a very good Awakening Valkyrie. Um, and Kairos, is that how you say the name? Going to be the yeah, one that's I'm how least I familiar it's, with. It's tough, yeah. Um, of the three. <laughs> bringing the Awakening Draconia, playing it for two years though, so should be a very, very good Awakening Drac. Um, a very scary class. I, I don't know. I think this is a very strong group of players. I want to... I want to say that Alusha is going to... Well... I think no. Kosini might be the one that they go for. Yeah, I mean, like, they it's an awakening wizard, right? Like, it looks like he's sitting on a casting couch just looking at him. Um, it's, it's a little rough playing awakening caster in a 3v3 setting like this, but also they know that Kosini is the target in this matchup. So, like, he obviously he builds a little bit more tanky for sure. And then he's got a Lucia there. They have two PAs. They have a countless amount of heals. Kairos can heal himself just by hitting any of the buttons on his keyboard because Awakening Draconia has absolutely no weaknesses as a class. Thank you, developers. Um, so, like, 
Uh, it's a very passive team composition, but they have a lot of damage and they are very deceptive. Uh, if you commit too hard onto one player, I think that you might just die. I think that the, the win condition is to let them, um, let Rule 11 just sit there, let Lazzy Noodles come to them, and then just try to execute um, after they overcommit. I think it's one of the things with the amount of sustain that this, this comp has. You, there's no chipping it down. You have to blast or, or nothing. Um, it, I don't know. I don't think there's any way you can actually chip this, this composition down unless these players play horribly with each other. Um, yeah, Al, we are about to get into it here. Make sure you get your predictions in for the quarterfinals of this one. In the winner's bracket, it is Rule 11 versus Lazzy Noodles here. Rule 11 certainly with the compositional advantage, but Lazzy Noodles not down and out. Jazzy Sensei, probably the best gamer girl on the server. Uh, rank 1 AOS Mystic, absolute specimen, and has a tremendous amount of gear as well. Uh, spent a lot of time in Digital's Flame Tower, uh, believe it or not. That's who was in the Flame Tower. It was almost like he would kill the Flame Tower and then say, never mind, put it back up. We don't want to deal with her. Uh, <laughs> absolutely obnoxious. Um, so the gates are about to go up. Make sure your predictions are in. As we uh, start this one, the final round of the quarterfinals. I give it to Rule 11-6-4. Um... Yeah, I think that Rule 11 definitely has uh, the advantage right here. It might get a little tough uh, on this one. Alusha goes right in, does manage to get out of the gate, which is an absolute W uh, for Rule 11 here. And you see how passively this Awakening Valkyrie plays. Uh, this is the play style here. Uh, and you see Larry also basically doing the same thing on the Succession Valkyrie, uh, just less able to pick anyone with the JOL coming down judgment of light um kuma queen that is jazzy taking a little bit of damage on the chip there uh as she is forced to back up it's larry down at 50 percent on the valkyrie but that's not too big of a deal as he can heal it right back up both teams just kind of chipping away at each other um and oh my goodness nudes taking taking a really poor trade from alusha uh gets back attacked right there uh and now has to watch his health bar but that awakening kuno oh my goodness down at 40 percent now celestial spear thrown out and again nudes just has to back up a little bit he can't trade hostility him across the arena there gosh just taking chip damage after chip damage but good lethal spin spree right there to get some of his health back and trade a good amount of damage back onto alusha health bars are capped at 80 percent right now that's why everyone is down at 80 oh my goodness except for nudes who's down at 10 one percent of the bleed is tipping ticking running for his life is nudes on the other side of the arena cosini buying his time here they do catch larry he's on his back now oh my goodness cosini gets all of his dpd bus down there's the cataclysm oh my goodness that damage was nutty coming out of the awakening draconia kairos right there and he did go down it's the valkyrie that gets swept first and we see that a lot in these valkyrie compositions john 2v3 and this is i mean even in the 2v3 situation they're not out here rule 11 is playing very very passive just waiting they have the sustain they can heal just waiting for a good time to engage it looks like they found it and they're diving right in i think they forced a v there as well yeah, yes, right there it is, nudes. nudes. He is going to go down. Jazzy Sensei was also in V, and there's not much she's going to be able to do with this Suck Mystic. In a 1v3, she is on the ground all alone, and down she goes. Round one to Rule 11. Very, very well played by Rule 11 there. I thought Lassie Noodle was going to have it. Nudes getting out with uh, just a minuscule amount of HP. Seeing that his teammate got a grab, following him for the CC with some damage, forcing a V, but they weren't able to hold on to the lead. Yeah, absolutely. So Lazzy Noodles on the back foot here, but we expected that based on the compositional diff here. I really do think it is um, Nudes that needs to try to make something happen here. They need to find the catch on to Alusha, um, ideally here as the gates go up. Uh, Jazzy sporting the leg warmers on that Suck Mystic. Absolutely cute as can be BDO fashion. Um, the end game of Black Desert Online. Nudes moving in here, looking for an opening, but a lot of Awakening Kunoichi's movement is protected. There's the block jump uh, to try to engage there. Cosini's on the ground, looks for some damage. Lethal spin spree goes down, but look how tanky he is with Alusha supporting him. It's Nudes that takes a bad trade on it. And that's exactly how this composition is supposed to be played. You let Cosini get CC'd. It's almost a bait. And then you turn it right back around on him. You see the lava 
field right in the middle of the arena there. That is a magic DPD buff there uh, for everybody. Block jump nudes looking around. Regroups with Larry Fish. Uh, looking on the side of the fight. Again, just trying to go on Cosini. Gets caught by Celestial Spear from Alusha. That is such a tough skill uh, to actually land, though. Kuma Queen's on the ground. Does manage to get back to her feet. Iframes it backwards. Um, running. That's all of Mystic's iframes right there. She's going to go down without even using her V. Couldn't disengage it. She should have V'd. She was trying to hold on to it. And now it is a 2v3 again. Johnny, oh my goodness. Another 2v3 for Rule 11. They have the sustain. They want to just stay alive and stay together. They can just W key into the enemy. I think yeah. that's what they might do here. Yeah, Larry taking a lot of damage right in the middle of that lava field and the red orb. Uh, get oh, Nudes good going grab. Down. Yeah, good grab from Larry, though. Uh, 1v3, but Larry looks like he is going to go down as well, and Rule 11 is going to sweep them off the map to the lower, uh, to the loser's bracket there in the first round of this one, Johnny. Oh, my goodness. Um, it, not as close as we thought it was going to be. Not as close at all. I, I think that was a lot of practice coming out of Rule 11 this last week. I don't remember them playing that well together, not necessarily just individually on their classes, but the way that they were just working together, following up on CCs, keeping each other healthy, um, and just making sure that the enemy, when they would get CC'd or, or when they would get um, low, that they would die consistently across the board. And that's the little things that will make the difference when you're fighting against these top players on their classes. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I just... It's just a little rough um, watching them get caught over and over again. And again, it was just like little mistakes here and there. It wasn't like necessarily one thing you could point to and say, yeah, that's the reason we lost. Like Jazzy holding on to her V too long. Uh, nudes over committing. And I think they definitely over committed onto Cosini. He is absolutely the person uh, that people are going to be looking to focus. But that's what they're counting on. They're looking. They're hoping you're going to focus Cosini. I guarantee you he's wearing a little bit of a tankier build. He sets up his red orb. He throws down lava field. And so if he, and then he drops cataclysm, which is a huge evasion debuff so if you try to engage on him you're the one that ends up with like minus well overall 20 percent of your dp is basically stripped immediately but you're gonna get the cc but you're the one that's gonna end up taking more damage and that's exactly what we saw johnny mm -hmm. that the down attack debuff that you get or the down attack extra damage you get however you want to word it isn't always gonna be enough depending on what classes you're hitting they can either be too tanky for it to really uh come into play to matter or it's gonna be the thing like you said where you're gonna get debuffed yourself and then you're gonna be the one taking the damage right on yeah so now we're down to the losers bracket here so the losers are out of the biggest prize pool tournament in black desert history so it is definitely for all the marbles in the losers bracket here this is day old mcmuffin which is florang bath soap in illiterate and again we talked about it before johnny i think that bath soap as he's the best succession draconia um probably in large scale pvp at least for north america i'll go out on a limb and just say it uh he's an absolute specimen on it i think in the 3v3 uncapped format like this i think it does suffer I, 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 yeah, I mean, it, it's what we talked about earlier. I think it's going to be the weak link of the group. If Florin can match or can get the CCs that the class needs before time is up on the ions and he's able to dump that ion damage, it's going to be okay. But it's got to be on Florin to get those quick CCs. And of any class and on any player, I think Florin is definitely one of them that can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and honestly, the problem is. Bath sub is extremely susceptible to grab compositions or grab or compositions mm -hmm. that center around like landing a grab and uh, they're up against Among Us V3, <laughs> which is kind of rough because this is multi and pig. This is the standard. I mean, like, so have you ever seen Remember the Titans, Johnny? They say that's, yeah. an, awful, that's an awful thin playbook, coach. He's like... Nine plays, like Novocaine, just give it time, always works. That is what Meth and Pig bring to the table every time. It's the same play every time. Pig is going to hold W and run at you. Meth is going to run around like a chicken with his head cut off until Pig lands a grab, and then both Meth and Multi are going to collapse down and kill you once Pig gets that grab. It is basically just two people avoiding any sort of confrontation at all until Pig is able to find something. And then they all collapse down and just one shot you. It's extremely consistent. And I think that they have a clear target here, Johnny. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I think they're going to have a clear target with the succession drac being on the other team it's the thing though with that awakening striker you know if they have their uh class buff uh pop they're just gonna run at you with the knuckles leaving lines in the ground until they get their hands on you and there's there's not much you're gonna do against that especially with it being a kd especially with it being extendable or uh, well not extendable but a longer animation than some grabs it's gonna it's it's devastating to have pig grab you especially with those two able to follow up with such quick speed on the awakening moose and the awakening draconia uh yeah i just think it's just gonna be a little bit of a rough situation especially pig and meth fun fact about them they have been in every single major tournament together since they started playing the game seven years ago these guys play together constantly i got the privilege of playing with them while i was in vertex that was the hot boys um it was the flex team back then they are absolutely incredible uh with their synergy multi uh, definitely hasn't played with them. I don't believe in a tournament in the past, but Malty's no strangers to tournament. Uh, he is definitely the rank one Dark Knight in ALS, uh, in NA and EU, uh, for season one. And he was the rank one Woosa, uh, in NA and EU for season two. So he's shown that he can be a gamer on multiple classes, but I'll admit, Malty looked like he was the, uh, the target of focus, uh, for previous teams here. I think that, I think that Dale McMuffin's like strategy to win here is almost um, like Rule 11's was last time. Like we know who they're gonna focus and you can use that to mm -hmm. your advantage, right? You know that they're gonna come after Batsup. Batsup can put on a bunch of extra DP um, and honestly just tank for his team and then Flo Rang, it, it buys time because Flo Rang certainly has enough gear. Illiterate certainly has enough gear to make something happen on this team. Uh, it might just be, the plan might just be to bait the succession Draconia, Jenny. And that's what I love with these matches where it's like, well, they have a, a clear target or a clear way to win. Well, the other team can always counter it. They can always go back and forth that these matches aren't ever uh, too one-sided that the other team is just kind of in a complete loss. There's always something they can do. It's a constant battle of counter of counters. And I'm ready to see which, which team here will adapt the best. Absolutely. We'll certainly get your points in. Yeah, you saw nothing. Yeah, excellent job with the prediction there. Um, it is Among Us V3 versus Day Old McMuffin. And I got to say, Johnny... Man, it's tough to bet against multi meth and pig, man. It's really it, tough. It, it's very tough. I, I'm going to put my bets on Among Us V3. I think it's going to be 7-3 here. I think this might be the first uh, first family group to get kicked out of the tournament. Uh, it might just be. It's You got to keep it in the family, man. That's what they always say. Uh, as the gates are about to go up for this one and the predictions uh close down here it is pig multimeter on the awakening draconia remember these guys are incredibly geared players right here as pig jumps across the arena you see how aggressive he is on that awakening striker looking for a grab biding his time a little bit um his team gets engaged on and it is flooring on the ground though but it's pig so much damage on a pig there and oh my goodness that's the downfall of this composition Batso didn't take any damage that's exactly what we were talking about johnny mick muffin failed seeing the wind condition and saying no, no no hold my beer and now it's flo rang who seems to be on top of this one pig honestly just cannot stand in the middle of that composition he doesn't have enough evasion i can't believe the words coming out of my mouth but pig does land a grab right there but he is stunned in position as well drops the leg illiterate's taking a lot of damage on the valkyrie gets back to his feet gets the heels off and he is doing just fine on the trade back here pig gets back i'm smashed with the sangoon buff to help out uh multimeter in notorious there thank you to the nodo boys right there just helping him hit that extra bracket um both teams playing this composition so so well as pig looking for another grab here and they've realized that i think that bathtub is just a little bit too tanky for them they go in multi's got a lot of damage on him he goes down oh no and it's among us that it, it, it loses the first member of the their team and this is what is happening uh, among us is supposed to be the heavy favorites in this match here but family does not go down without a fight florang is an animal chasing down pig now and it looks like he does get the grab down pig is like oh my god he just dies johnny he just dies so quickly that's an awakening um awakening striker that's basically hard captivation meth comes out of v he's at 10 percent. the bleed is ticking down florang says there is nowhere for you to go and Johnny, that round one was not what we expected. Not what we expected at all. Jumping in, and this is partially what I talked about with the issue with the succession drag on the ions, is that 
when they first matched or when they first went together it was a bar brawl on the side of the arena the succession draconia able to just dump all of its damage on top of pig and as you saw even with pig being very geared on the evasion just taking chunk after chunk of damage forcing them to play passively ruining what their initial plans were yeah absolutely. everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face yeah i mean you the, the plan here is just to kill uh pig it looks like oh i mean honestly you catch multi but like Pig just gets one shot, and that kind of puts a huge hole in their composition. As we talked about before, it's very one-dimensional, but it works extremely well. But if you can kill Pig that quickly, even if he lands a grab, I'm not sure. He's going to be really nervous trying to go in for an initiate here. Florang doing an amazing job on this succession Kuno as he moves through the middle right there. He's going to use Tendon Cutter to go forward. There's the block jump. Uh, looking for anything right there. Shadow Clone to disengage it. Um, keeps himself. Flash Slash keeps himself protected right there in the middle of everything. Pig taking a lot of damage. He's on the ground. He looks like, oh, Illiterate might go down too. Looks like he had to V on the back side of that one. Among Us V3 bringing it back right there. Um, as people come out of V, it does look like we lost Bats uh, or wait, no. Yeah, no, it was Bath Soap on that one. The Succession Draconia does get found among us. Finds their win condition. Florang's on the ground now, too. And he's taking a lot of damage, but does stand back up. Kuno's uh, evasion passives helping him out uh, a lot right there. Is Illiterate taking a good amount of damage. Family trying to battle this one back. And a 2v3 Florang trying to get the damage down onto Illiterate. Do they get him? No, they didn't quite get it down. And now it's just uh, Florang left alive and it's meth collapsing down on him it does look like that this one's gonna trickle out of here johnny but among us battles back this is i mean this is making it one one this is a, probably a bit more of what we expected i talked about it before the match even started where it's a it's a game of countering counters and it definitely seems like they understood the mistakes that they made in the first match they understood what uh, mcmuffin was able to bring to the the table that was very very strong and they worked around that to make sure that they were able to get a win here yeah, and it's Bath Soap on this Succession Draconia, who I think that Among Us was just not ready for in the first round. He kind of dropped the ball a little bit in that second round, but certainly the focus is on him uh, as the gates go up for round three of this one. Loser is eliminated. Winner goes on to fight another day. You see Pig uh, running after Bath Soap. Bath Soap playing very, very cautiously here, waiting to use those ions, waiting to put down any amount of damage. Is illiterate, tries to stay out in front of him. There's Flow Rang. Look at Pig, honestly, just running through, holding that W key, just jogging through the middle of the arena. Bath Soap playing so, so passively. Here he goes in. That's what Dracani is good at. Oh, my goodness. Look at Pig's health bar. Oh, my gosh. That's why he is so good at Succession Draconia. Bides his time. It is a slow class, but if they don't see you coming, look how much damage you can get off on this class. Absolutely perfectly played in a 3v3 uncapped setting like this. Again, buying his time, stacking his ions up, waiting to go in. Pig not actually looking at him. There it is. Now they're collapsing down. Florang right there to help him, though, as Florang is on the hunt for multi. And I think that Florang probably finds multi before Pig can find Bat Soap. Or is Bat Soap finding Pig? Look at this. How often do you see a suck track running down an awakening striker like this? Pig has to be. And Bat Soap says, yeah, who's hunting who here? As he moves across the arena, family will not go down without a fight here. It is still a 3v3, but Pig is without a V. Illiterate's on the ground, taking a good amount of damage on this one. Uh, but he's going to stand back up, going to heal back up on that awakening Valkyrie just fine. There's the PA going off for soap right there that also drains his opponents of mana um as he does honestly resist the grab pigs on the ground he doesn't have me down he goes look at the damage for soap oh my goodness does have to go into v at the end of that one right there but they are on top 2v3 the draconia just slapping it down um back of it full health right now get another one and it's see um meth going down as well multi's the only one left alive we did not see this one coming family moves on among us gets knocked out of this one oh my goodness johnny what is happening i i don't think that's what people were expecting it was definitely not what i was expecting pig getting absolutely devastated just oh it just a gross amount of damage coming out of the draconia you talked about it too during the match itself if you're care if you're not careful that class can hit you it brings that claymore down hard it it is explosive with the amount of damage it can do it, you can't underestimate it even if it's a slower class yeah i mean it's just absolutely insane let's take a look at the instant replay here look at how well he plays this suck track i mean you just don't think it's possible it's like junso on the guardian 
Uh, absolutely insane. Wait, he waits for his opportunity here, constantly avoiding a grab, throws the PA down. He knows he's perfectly safe here. Pig knows, okay, he's in PA. I can't really get that, make that happen. Misses the grab, going down right there. Turns around, sees his opportunity, and bam, look at the damage come down right there, and then immediately goes into V uh, to play it safely. But oh my goodness, did Bath Soap come out so, so strong in there. Uh, moving on to the next round of this one absolutely crazy match right there upset honestly one of the first upsets that we are going to see today but certainly not the only one i don't think um getting knocked out of this one well i think that's part of the thing with this tournament is even if there's like upsets aside from a couple teams i think most of them are very much viable at this point still to to win it um so even if it's maybe like a 7-3 uh or even 8-2 for predictions on things I think you can't just dismiss any of the teams that are left right now. I think you have to keep thinking about them. If they play smart, if the other team makes too many blunders, if there's just a good matchup, anyone can win any match. And that's the best part of it. Yeah, I mean, like it could go either way. So be careful with your points when you're betting. Um, absolutely might go hard here. Uh, and for the first time today, we are gonna see Skeptic Loves Shy with their teammate subbed in here. Skeptic had to leave for brunch uh, last time in the middle of the tournament. So they actually brought Goldsteinberg in as a ringer on the Awakening Val or I mean, on the Awakening uh, Warrior here. And I actually think that uh, it actually improved their composition because before they had an Awakening Dark Knight, uh, Johnny. Like, how do you feel about it now? Goldstein, no gamble uh, on a Suck Ash and Armin on a Suck Ninja. I think the Awakening Warrior brings a bit more than what the Awakening DK could. I think the DK had some damage support that it was trying to bring, but I don't think it was working how they wanted. Um, I think bringing the Awakening Warrior for another grab is very good. It's going to be a more Bruiser-esque style class. Um, I know Goldstein has a decent amount of accuracy on it, so he's going to be able to handle some light evasion targets as well. He's a, a good uh, small-scale warrior as well. I think he's going to be a very good substitute here. I'm just baffled that of anyone, Skeptic would turn his back on family. You don't do that. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Goldsteinberg coming in as like the stepdad here when Skeptic left for milk a week ago and just never came back. Um, and they are coming in. They are up against Sniffa, which is Akari's team. And we just saw this team play. This is Akari, Sayo, Arian, and Rossity Man. Um, again, this is yet another family. The only team that can knock out family is, get this, family. Family. Um, yeah, family. No, family is never left behind unless it's Skeptic leaving his entire guild behind for the eighth time. Uh, Akari on that succession, Mewa. Arian on the Suck Ninja. Rossity Man on the succession, Wusa. Compositionally speaking, this is one of the only matches where we don't see a single Valkyrie in the match. So, like, compositionally, who do you send this to? Uh, I, I want to say Sniffa. I think they're going to be in a little bit better of a position um with the succession wusa followed up by the two rats the the suck ninja has its grab the suck mewa has guard break if it has a q block that it needs to deal with like goldstein berg um i i it's a tough one i i want to give it to sniffa but not too much but at the same time i want to give it to them a lot and i don't know why i think it might be the suck hash um i think the suck hash might be one of the weak points to be honest with you here um That's, i think yeah. that I think it's Goldsteinberg on the Warrior is the matchup to watch. If Goldstein performs, gets the grabs, gets the initiates down uh, for Armin, I think that they can make something happen. But I don't know, man. I think that I believe in Akari uh, is absolutely crazy. And there's just so many threats here. It might be a little tough for Goldstein to make something happen. Warrior is traditionally a very frontal guard protected class, and he's up against three rats. Mm -hmm. He... It's three classes that he's not going to have a good time trying to deal any sort of damage um, against, but he's definitely going to be one of those classes where as long as his grab isn't on cooldown, it's going to be one of those aces that he can keep in his pocket, and those rats are going to have to be understanding of that, that if they get too close, that Goldstein is going to be able to peel them very, very well, and if they get too, they get too ballsy with it, they're going to suffer, and we've seen it before with this team. Hopefully, they don't repeat it again. Yeah, absolutely. We have Skeptic Loves Shies versus Sniffa. Make sure you get um your points in again it's the caster curse man you think that one team is favored and then the other team wins but that's how this tournament is these are the best of black desert these are the best players uh that play on north america and eu respectively um and 
Yeah, obviously it is not skeptic. It is Goldsteinberg on this one. Uh, on the Awakening uh, Guardian, I mean, on the Awakening Warrior, but definitely has his work cut out for him here. All eyes on gold in this one as we move over to the live stream. Make sure that you get your uh, votes in for this one. I think as this a, is going to be another good match that we see today. This I could be crazy. To, I want to give it. I think it's gonna be on gold, like you were saying. Yeah, um, I think gold buying his time right here. Um, waiting, he knows he's a little. Oh my gosh, the card gets caught immediately. There's the collapse, clean collapse from Goldstein right there. But he takes so much damage on the backside. That's what I'm talking about. As he's running for his life now. Fortunately, uh, wait. Oh no, Arian finds him on the suck ninja. He thought he was safe. Came out of stealth and found him. He's gonna come out of V underneath the gazebo right there. And it did unstick me, but it's Goldstein gets killed right away. And that's exactly what we were worried about right there. Is the warrior was just not prepared for three rats coming after him like that. Oh, Johnny, not so great in the 2v3 here. Do you think they can pull this? Oh, wait, there's the hold that thought. There's the the um Arid Descent. Oh, I forget. I forget the name of the skill uh, for his Shashin right there from No Gamble, No Loss. Ross City Man's on the ground, but he gets floated as well. Akari with big damage going down onto him. Look at the damage for the Suck Mewa right there. He's going to come out of V. Down he goes. Akari is there to mop up the pieces, and the Suck Mewa has the damage. Armin all alone in a 1v3, but honestly, if you were a betting man, would you bet against Armin? Apparently so. He's already on the ground, and he's probably going to die right here. Agent uh, A cannot clutch the 1v3 in this scenario, I don't well, think. Well, I actually think he's trying to die. You see him just standing there waiting to die. He's trying to just get his cooldowns. I think he's just waiting for his cooldowns. Yeah, like or like he wants them to die because he knows that they popped basically all three of their class buffs right there. Oh, Johnny, that was not the way they wanted that to go. I, I don't think that was the way they wanted it to go at all. You can't have Armin be the one left. He's built too tanky so far in this tournament, or at least last time he was. He might have been. A, he might have switched up his gear. If I remember correctly, um, people are allowed to switch gear in between matches, correct? Um, yes. When the gates are down, they're allowed to change up their gear. But during the round, you'll notice that Armin, he could have just taken off his gear there, but that would have been against the rules. So I'm glad that he did not do that uh, right there, even though he was trying to die. Armin goes in. He knows he has to initiate just a little bit faster here. Uh, looking. Can't find Arian. Get CC'd. Double oh, my CCs. goodness. Down he goes. Double CC. Goldstein's already on the ground, taking a lot of damage, but he's got his back to the wall. Expertly positioned on the Awakening Warrior like that to keep his back to the wall. Uh, frontal Guarded Super Armor. Armin just not doing any damage to Akari when he's on the ground right there. Can't get the Red Rain down for the DP debuff uh, as he continues on the hunt here. Goldstein just can't catch a break underneath the gazebo right here. And it does look like they found the Wusa. So if he can pull it back, if Goldstein could just live right now. Armin's on the ground right now uh, trying to stay alive. No gamble on the hunt. Goldstein backing up, biding his time. Finds the CC onto Arian, but they go right by him. They know the focus is uh, uh, Akari in this case. And Sniffa on the back foot of it. Goldstein out Absolutely pulling it back in this round right here. Down at half health, Sniffa trying to battle back on this one uh, as health bars are going to move down to 80% at the two-minute mark right here. Uh, Akari taking a bit of a bad trade uh, right there as Goldstein also, oh my goodness, big CC right there. Akari's on the ground. He's taking a lot of damage, does have to V. Uh, no gamble, stands right back up on that hash. Uh, again, in evasion. Uh, we trust right there. Akari gets sniffed out. He is going to go down, and Sniffa is going to lose this round of it. Family, again, will not go down without a fight Johnny one of the big things there that we saw was that they were definitely targeting Goldstein we saw Arian get several CC's on Goldstein but they were never able to follow up and fully kill him his teammates um, trying to peel for him and we saw Armin going into the gazebo trying to make sure that he stayed alive suffering a CC himself but able to still give enough peel to keep him alive Gold using the his um, his forward guards, keeping his back to walls with pulverized to get some heal to keep himself alive, to keep that sustain. Spamming out ground smash, putting the slow on people, trying to fish out some CCs. Very, very well played by them, even with their weakness um, being very much in full view. Yeah, it's gates up and away we go here. Looser is knocked out of the tournament uh, as Arian looks for the malice coming across for Armin right there. Not going to find the stiffen uh, with that one, though. Uh, as he slithers in, block jump to keep himself safe right there. There's the red rain. Gets a clean DPD buff uh, and bleed down onto the enemy team over there. Skeptic loves shines. Uh, Goldstein doing a good job of keeping himself safe uh, in this one. Blade spin comes down. Arian looking for no gamble. Uh, no loss right there, uh, but not able to find it. Uh, Gold actually takes 
taking a lot of damage. Uh, has to back up on the warrior right there. Arian engaging, trying to back up. Akari is trying to throw down uh, a decent amount of damage on the main wall, but he's on the ground, taking good damage. There he goes. He is running for his life. I'm not sure he can actually uh, get away from this one, though, as Arian using blades been there trying to clean up a little bit. Ooh, goes into stealth. Very sneaky in the middle of the round right here. Looking for any engage that he can. Akari dashing away again on that Maywa, just taking too much damage. Arian's on the ground. That is not good. Good collapse down. The Rusa is going to go down. Rossity Man not pulling his weight on this one. Arian's going to come out of E. Akari gets hunted down as well. It looks like Arian will go down in a 1v3 all by himself and more power to Goldstein and the, the boys over in family here to pull this one back even after losing that first round like that finds that CC there but stands right back up it was almost a bait uh Arian doing a solid job in the 1v3 right here finds Armin as well um yeah I'm just not gonna find it Johnny it does look like Sniffa is going to get knocked out of the tournament here Arian doing a fantastic job holding the 1v3. Oh Has my three gosh, he's kind of, yeah, there's the grab as well. Oh this, is, this is kind of, this is kind of going hard right now. Like, what is going on? Uh, did his best right there, but it is going to be Skeptic Love Shies. Moving on to the next round of this one after a rough performance in round one, Johnny. That means later on we get to see the families fight each other. Oh, man. Again, the only one that can knock out family is family. family. As we have seen, also probably Divios, but we're going to, we're going to see that too. Um, <laughs> on this one. I don't know. Thoughts on it? Did that play out the way that you uh, you kind of thought it was going to here? I thought initially what both teams were doing was exactly what I was expecting. Um, I kind of, I really, really expected Arian to go after Goldsteinberg. Uh, the the Suck Ninja is a very good matchup uh, against the Warrior there. Uh, applying a lot of pressure, getting the CCs on Goldstein. What I didn't expect um, was the fantastic uh, cooperation and teamwork from Goldstein's allies, keeping him alive, applying peels, making sure he had some space to use his sustain. Goldstein trying to keep himself healthy. Um, looks like they was built a little bit tanky there, using ground um, slam or ground smash to fish CCs and keep people slowed, which helps for uh, its own peel effect and helps to allow his allies to, to win the rounds or find CCs themselves. That's exactly what we saw from that. Yeah, I mean, like it's just a tough situation right there i think that uh both teams played it really really well there uh as we look ahead to our next match here it is going to be uh canijo's baked beans which is choices team with death grip and ice here uh up against no team no drac wusa valk abusers and <laughs> uh, it's an interesting choice because they're up against the valkyrie here in the losers bracket uh, compositionally i think that this team can work but they they were playing uh, they made mistakes in the first round of t uh today johnny i i do think they made some mistakes choice got uh sniffed by hit both of his v's by rujinx which is really rough to see um death grips wasn't able to follow up with a lot of the damage which i think was partially due to the the cc's not being in a good spot for him to do so i think choice has to stay on his feet he has to play a little bit more protected and i think choice just needs to sniff out and try to be a cc bot here build a little bit tank here look for them cc's look for those extended grabs and allow your two allies to just wail away on the enemy yeah absolutely and they are up against team no wusa no draconia no valkyrie abusers here but this is the first time we're going to see them playing today this is Chief Ezrelia and Leif Fonda, the only Awakening Corsair in the tournament, which was surprising to me because Awakening Corsair is considered one of the stronger classes in this kind of a format like this. Um, but Ezrelia on the Succession Lawn, Chief on the Awakening Striker, Striker and Leif Fonda on the Awakening Corsair. How do you feel like the Corsair does uh, in a matchup like this? So I think one of the biggest weaknesses with the Corsair is that it is going to be... Um... I would assume, I know for LaFonda, he's going to be evasion, but I believe most players are going to be playing it evasion versus DR. And I don't think it's going to have the damage it needs against a lot of the compositions, especially with the Valkyries showing up as well as a DR target. Um, I think it's decent. It's got Seamus, which is that four guard penetrating CC from range. Absolutely balanced. No one would ever argue otherwise. But I think the big weak point of the team is going to come down to Azuralia on the Succession Lawn, a very, very good large scale class. But if you have mini map awareness in these small format fights, it's going to be a bit of a weak link here. 
Yeah, compositionally, I know that they're probably going to be looking at Death's Grip on the Succession Dark Knight because he has to get in close to do his damage. Chief with the Awakening Striker can land a grab. I think compositionally, they absolutely can do it. Normally, I would not say a Succession line is particularly great in a 3v3 uncapped, but it is as Relia, and we've seen stranger things with Succession Dracadias today, so um, who knows? It could be anyone's game. Who do you feel like takes it, Johnny? How many, how many rounds? I'm gonna give it to Big Beans. I think it's gonna be, I think this is gonna be a 2-0. Yeah. Well, actually, um, I'm gonna give it a 2-1, 2-1. And you're giving it to Beans? Beans. All right, I'm giving it to Team No Wusa Drac Valk Abusers 2-1 here. I think that they are absolutely gonna come out and slap this. I'm not sure the Death Script's gonna be able to handle the damage um, that is gonna be coming his way on this one but we are about to find out so make sure that you get your votes in here as we are about to get started with this one the gates are down and we are getting ready as we are about to start this one both teams rearing to go this is the first time we've seen leifonda's team today uh as he sets up the cannons and waits for his team to do the initiating. That is how Awakening Corsair plays it. Oh my goodness, backflips immediately. Death Grip on the hunt for him uh, as he goes right into iframe and constantly keeps kiting around. Suck DK does have a lot of accuracy, so Leifana cannot rely on that evasion. Has to be immediately on this one. Death Grip loses a lot of damage on the trade and has to back up as well. Choice is also very low, down at 4%. Barely gets his health back because he pressed one skill. Leifana gets blown away in the middle of his movement skill right there. Uh, by Death's Grip, who just runs him down. Celestial Spear goes down for Ice, and they're in a 3v2. Chief finds a CC on Ice. We'll see if they can collapse down. Death's Grip there to try to peel. Azrelia doing his best on the suck line, but gets blown away as well. And they just don't have the damage without Leifonda here. Chief has to be, and Johnny, that, that Corsair just get gone. Gone. I mean, that's the... <laughs> That's that double-edged sword of the, uh, I guess it's not a double-edged sword, but I guess that's the, the duality of Succession DK. Um, it is a walking melee glass cannon. If, again, you look at it funny, it's going to just disperse into dust. But if you don't stare at that thing like a weeping angel, it will kill you so quickly you won't know what happens. Yeah, I mean, you see him just go, oh my gosh, he just disappears Tears. from view. Ooh. He is just gone um, immediately. And they're just after that Awakening course there. They know their win con they know their win condition and they are trying to execute. There's Death Grip. Uh, that little cheeky poke forward there is the attack speed buff uh, for DK right there as he goes into Lunacy Nocturne right there, getting Got through. Got already? The yeah, there's the Twilight da uh, Twilight Dashes. Where's Wheel of Fortune? Again, Death Grip just buying his time. This is how DK is played. You wait for your opportunity to strike, and then you do all the damage all at once. He's after Leifonda. He does not want to give him a moment, and he finds him a clean uh, float right there out of Death Grip, forcing the beat for Leifonda. Oh, and they sniff him as well. The airstrike goes down. Look at the damage. Succession Dark Knight looks so good in Death Grip's hands, and they are 2v3 now. Look at the damage coming down uh, for this team. Team comp choice actually really low on health, so they need to watch it. Ice actually losing a lot of health too. He goes down. Choice is gonna die too. No, he has to be. It's two v three again as as they battle it back. Team No Wusa Valk and Drac abusers absolutely bringing it back. As Relly is saying, you don't get to do that. I am a succession line. You will die. Uh, nope. And. Just as I say that, it is Death Grip finding Israelia. He is going to go down. It's Chief all alone in a 1v2, and they are a little nervous uh, to go in on him here. Uh, Chief cannot swap gear in this, so if he's wearing a tanky set, uh, sadly, that is just going to be it. Hopefully, he's got enough damage. You should have enough damage on an Awakening Striker to kill a Succession Dark Knight. If you can catch him, but look at this man. Move on, Succession Dark Knight. Down he is going to go. No, he does get right back up, um, but very low on health. Clean CC out of Death Grip right there. There's the Twilight Comma with the mouse move right there. Flipping that camera around. Look at such a crisp looking class. That's why everybody loves Dark Knight. The airstrike uh, not quite connecting right there. Twilight Comma goes in again, but Chief is standing in full super armor, trying to keep himself alive, uh, waiting for health bars to tick down to 50% here. There's the grab. That's the damage. Lunacy goes down and the V comes out, Johnny. Oh man, on the edge of our seat here. Chief is able to keep alive a lot longer than he should. Unfortunately, Choice is just going to run up and give him the grab.
Yeah, tra tragically, there it is, Baked Beans, moving on 2-0, but they gave them a run for their money, Johnny. Oh my goodness. I I don't think that was what a lot of people were necessarily expecting out of the, that last round there. I think that was a very, very good performance uh, out of Baked Beans there. Uh, LaFonda going down um, as well with somebody else on the other team. My brain is, of course, not working. Um, but when you have that 2v2 situation, uh, the succession lawn from Azorelia trying to follow up with some damage and the DK just again just Thanos snapping him in dust um, a great performance and a great showing from death grips so I thought I was going to be uh, lost and it looks like my camera has died yet again oh, why no, OBS do you keep crashing you look fine you look fine to me oh is it fine okay. yeah you look you look good to me you're okay. totally it fine was, it was just my twitch it was my twitch never mind yeah you're fine uh, I'm going to take this opportunity guys um, to go ahead and shout out our sponsor for the tournament today for the first time Invicta Gaming Perlibus is not sponsoring this tournament Invicta Gaming is they do custom PC builds so if you're looking to build a PC but they are known for their pc optimization so no matter what game you play especially black desert online they can get you 100 to 200 extra frames no matter what your equipment is uh and they help your equipment run cooler and last longer it's absolutely worth the investment uh, on that one i have done it myself choice had his pc built and optimized through invicta as well so have many of the creators in our category and the reason we love invicta so much is they come out and they sponsor these big community tournaments like this i I can't emphasize enough how much we should support them. Um, so if you're looking for PC optimization or you're looking to build a new PC, they do free consultations. Go check them out right there. Uh, Johnny, as we look ahead here, we are looking for the final round. Uh, this is or the final match of round three here for the losers bracket. It is going to be Lazzy Noodles versus Stins Steakhouse. Lazzy Noodles, Larry Fish, Kuma Queen, and Moods with the Awakening Kuno. And we saw them just come up a little bit short in the last round. How, where do you think the weakness really was? It, it felt like the, the big weakness in it, and this isn't a player thing, but the, just the way that the compositions were playing into each other. It felt like a lot of the time when Nudes was trying to follow up with a lot of damage, he was just getting blown away himself. He wasn't able to stay with the sustain, even with healing on some of his skills, trying to pop those in there when he can, trying to deal some damage with the spin. He wasn't able to sustain enough to continue with that damage that you need on Awakening Kuno, especially when you have a Succession Valkyrie and a Succession Mystic. Your damage might not be fully there against some tanky targets. So if Nudes isn't able to dump his kit on somebody, they're going to have a hard time um, finalizing kills. Yeah, uh, and they are up against Stins Steakhouse, which is an interesting name uh, for a team to say the least. But this is Pastor Pete, Details, and Dabin. These are the corrupt and enemy boys right here. I'll let you go ahead and introduce the boys. Yeah, so we got Pastor Pete on the Awakening Valkyrie, a newer Valkyrie. Um, and maybe a bit more time invested in the last week or so. So we might see a little bit different of a performance from Pete. Details, arguably the number one succession wizard in North America. Very, very, very skilled in the class and very geared as well. Coming out with a ton of accuracy, even with Caster being a little bit more of a blind class, uh, is going to be just fine here against some of the evasion targets. <clears throat> and Davin on the succession Woosa, very, very strong class. Ton of damage, very evasive. As we saw last time, it's again a glass cannon class and it blew up for a few times while trying to deal some of its skills. So I think if this team can work together again, the, um, or work together very well, they'll be fine in this tournament. I think they're, they got the players, they got the classes, they just got to synergize and be warmed up in this first match here. Yeah, I mean, Details is someone that needs no introduction to anyone that has been in large-scale PvP for a long time. Absolutely the best, pretty uncontestedly the best large-scale um, succession uh, wizard in the game well at least in north america there is a succession wizard on eu that i believe uh, is also basically equally or better uh honestly but details absolutely a specimen on that succession wizard we don't see very many succession casters in this tournament i believe he's the last one left alive the last one standing here um i do think that the weak link here is absolutely pastor pete on the awakening uh, valkyrie not because he's a bad player but because he just doesn't have a crazy amount of experience on the class and we saw that last time where details was just begging him for a heal and just couldn't quite get one uh sadly so we'll see if pastor pete can come out on this awakening valk 
uh, and perform because we know details he's gonna be bringing the heat this is details his second tournament uh in his history here um and he got in his first tournament he got second in the best in guild tournament this year uh in 2023 only losing to divios in the final uh match of that tournament there Davin on the suck Wusa is I would say he's newer to suck a Wusa, but he's definitely no stranger to it um definitely at least solid enough that I think that he can he can make the plays happen here so Johnny who do you think uh wins this match I think if the synergy is together I'm gonna give it to the the, the corrupt enemy boys I have to be a little bit biased on this one I think they're gonna be just fine as long as Pete's got the the fingers warmed up on the Valkyrie uh yeah I think that uh you might be right there I think Lazzy Noodles is gonna actually you know what I'm giving it to Lazzy Noodles I think that the, the experience of Larry Fish he wrote the book for Succession Valkyrie this man is an absolute specimen on the Succession Valkyrie I think the experience will win out for Lazzy Noodles here I understand that you can't bet against your own team but I absolutely can we are very much so team Jazzy Larry and Nudes here uh as we get ready for this one so make sure you guys get your bets in um before this match gets started as the gates are going down Looks like 61% of people think that Stin's Steakhouse is going to take this one home, Johnny. I I, I think it's going to be a, a good fight still, uh, but I, I think Steakhouse is going to... If, if uh, Pete makes no mistakes here, no big blunders, I think it's going to be a 2-0. Yeah, we will see as the gates go up and we are into this one. Uh, Jazzy going to go ahead and pre-buff here. Keeping it, that is a full rotating super armor right there for the Succession Mystic as she kind of buys a little bit of time. Nudes off on the side of the fight over here. You see how this positioning Larry and Jazzy right in the middle. Nudes off on the flank on this Awakening Kunoichi. This is exactly how you play. Uh, flanking Assassins in Black Desert. You see Pastor trying to go in on him with Hostiludium. There's the engage from all three right there. Uh, Details gets himself out of danger very quickly, but it's Pastor they collapse down on in lethal spin spree does a good amount of damage Larry throwing as much as he can on the succession Valkyrie uh tries to get forward Pastor beat on the ground lethal spin spree almost takes him but now it's Davin on the ground as well detail scrambling backwards going guys we just gotta we we, we gotta play better than this I can't carry this uh and he's gonna need some ibuprofen for his back after this one details throwing out the damage to the best of his ability Larry trying to put a little bit of pressure on him uh but it does look like Lassie Noodles has the brand as Davin tries to come away on that succession Wusa, but he's down at one percent uh and is trying to get his potions uh back up right now but Wusa can't do very much uh if you don't have hp like that so you see details needs to get back he's gonna look for a baby heal right there uh and throws it out details says i don't have time i'm busy carrying you let pet let pete do that work right there so throwing out range damage as they try to engage once again there's the earthquake of eight coming out for details dps to the other side of it they're putting a good amount of pressure on him but he is keeping himself safe right here there's the protected area going down for details he cannot be killed right now larry fish taking a focus meteor in the back he's gonna lose most of his hp right there nudes very low on health details firing away like a cannon from range right there it is gonna catch um nudes on that one he is gonna go down and it does look like lassie noodles although they were up initially is struggling now to actually come up with the win here as details has been given enough time to fire pastor pete looks like he actually went down it's now a 2v2 um jazzy bringing it back grab on the details he's on the ground there's the bounce good down smash perfect cc by jazzy cleaning that up on the succession mystic says i don't care who you are you cannot stand in front of me like that absolutely Chris black grab jazzy sensei and larry fish showing their synergy in the arena here davin all alone at first in steakhouse ticking down low on health it does get low but boy was that a close round johnny i the, when they got into the 2v2 situation seeing pete go as hard in as he did i i was not expecting that watching him just kind of die solo alone not really having as much peel as he needed details trying to drop the damage on top of the enemy but then being so tanky it didn't matter they were still able to kill pete yeah getting the grab right there is jazzy and that's where they kill look at the cleanest cc uh and combo right there just so crisp being able to catch details like that he is so so slippery uh on a succession caster like that so to be able to get that grab down in a clutch moment like that and to pull back a 2v3 uh is absolutely incredible nudes needs to play a little bit safer here you see again this perfect positioning for lazzy or for for lazzy noodles uh larry fish and kuma queen perfectly positioned the valkyrie just out in front of the succession mystic nudes out on the flank 
strength once again uh that is very intentional right there uh as they get ready to engage down here davin just throwing out uh his th setting up his thunderstorms going with butterfly step forward uh he's gonna be the one that aggressively goes for the engage jazzy says nope gets the grab down immediately onto davin and that's how it's white so hard to engage on a succession mystic and essentially what amounts to a 1v1 davin comes out of e right under the arena what are you doing man and it's, they almost didn't have enough healing for him but he used all of their heals to try and get out of jail uh right there and davin is able to recover but that's most of their long cooldowns right there jazzy gets bounced uh but larry is right there drops a heal drops the pro uh protected area uh jazzy just gets right back up on her feet uh looks like Davin took a big amount of damage on the trade oh my goodness Larry goes Larry really low yeah has to be right there he is gonna be to safety details constantly shelling out this damage trying to keep Davin safe look he won't even toss him a heal he says it's not my job look at the Valkyrie there's the focus meteor right there that's the big damage uh there's Bolite coming down as well gets into range Larry got his back to the wall on the succession Valkyrie they're trying to pin him into the corner he doesn't have grab they're losing members news is gonna go down details is on the ground now too though and it's getting bounced has to move away and it is now a 1v3 on this one lazy noodles looks like they're gonna come up short the corrupt boys battle back in round two right here johnny oh my goodness a lot better performance out of uh steakhouse there they were playing how i thought they should be playing where they kind of have pete not very far away from him still within skill range just acting as a forward wall just challenging people to just come at him while the, his uh while details can just dump that range damage you have dabin who can do a quick little movement or a quick little flank to just dump a bunch of damage as well it allowed them to burst down larry enough to make him v standing and even allow them to to secure a couple kills there to win yeah. the match absolutely and now we are 1-1 one, one in this one uh as the gates go up loser is eliminated both teams showing they understand how to play this composition pastor be going very aggressively forward with hostiludium right there and larry just buying his time he does not have uh hostiludium in succession like that so he can't move uh like that uh but honestly goes in on larry larry just tanks the tanks it with the frontal guard nudes gets in behind him and you see details perfectly positioned on the side of the fight out there throwing damage forward and they do not not have enough pressure on him pastor pete finds the cc on the jazzy sensei uh but she does scramble back to her feet here uh pastor pete doing his best to kind of dash around looking for yet another cc uh but it looks like Stin Steakhouse playing this perfectly so far. Uh, oh, Pastor Pete gets CC'd. Larry Fish with a clean combo, but not quite enough damage right here, and there's no follow-up. Not enough co communication right there. Pastor Pete heals himself right back to full health after he stands back up. Hostiludium's right back in with that one. He knows that Larry doesn't have grab for a little while longer here, but is unable to capitalize on it. Uh, details, again, just every time he gets engaged on, just TPs away. They can't get on top of him. Pete gets CC'd again uh, and is on the ground. Uh, details is really low as well. Well, Blizzard does come down, uh, gets himself to safety right here. Pete is being, uh, Jazzy is looking for the sniff here. Doesn't quite find Pete underneath the podium right here. Um, as Nudes was looking for him as well, Hostiludium to re-engage this finds nothing uh, as both teams again heal back up and this is tense. Still 3v3. Health bars are down at 80% right now. Um, 30 seconds until, oh my God, Details gets caught with Celestial Spear. Does manage to get back to his feet though uh, and they are unable to capitalize on that clean celestial spear by larry right there but it looks like larry might go down no he does get his v off and they are sniffing right now for that v looking for larry fish it doesn't look like they're going to be able to find him as nudes and uh jazzy try to hold down the fort uh while he's in v no nudes it goes, goes down nudes went down it is a 2v3 but they pulled this back last time oh, grab by Pete. yeah good grab by pastor p right there to battle it back it was a 2v3 last time jazzy and larry were able to pull this one back but now neither of them has v details on the ground underneath the arena Pete unable to actually peel Jazzy finding the pick on the details down in a 2v2 now oh my goodness but Davin and Pete clean it up what just happened oh my goodness Stan Steakhouse take it at the last moment I saw it absolute flashbacks of last week when uh details was on the edge of the pavilion there and came out of v and died and pete wasn't able to help him i thought we were gonna get that's, round two of it that's and exactly it is what, what I happened thought. yeah it, it, it is what happened uh pete was unable to save him again and i thought it was gonna go down just like last time in history of because details could not be saved a very very unfortunate v Ving immediately after kuma um so kuma coming out of the v in close proximity was able to have the advantage um, but uh, 
thankfully for them, Pete able to follow up, grab on Kuma to get her down while Davin was able to deal the damage necessary. But whoo, that that was a that was a Absolutely. close last yeah, round there. Let's, let's take a look at the instant replay here. We did catch it um towards the end of the match here. Um as Pete, honestly, you thought you were having flashbacks to Nam. Look at it, like he turns around. You think he's gonna peel him? He didn't heal details. What are you doing? Well, he did get the heal up, but he didn't use purification. Jazzy gets the snipe off, and then both of them just die immediately. Pete pulls it back. Davin has the damage, and it, the round is just cleaned up just like that. It happened so quickly. What a tense, close match that was. Good fights to both teams uh, on that one right there. That's an end when you're going to be clenching. And I mean, just as we get into this match as well, or into this tournament, as a reminder, make sure to stay hydrated. It is very important. Make sure you're not shrimping in your chair. Yeah. You're going to want to stay hydrated and you're going to want to keep your posture in check. Absolutely. Um, that is the end of round four as we move to the quarterfinals here. Um, over, we are still in the losers bracket. Technically, it's going to be a skeptic luck. Oh, what did I just... You... Hold up. What? What? Stay hydrated. That's all I'm saying. You're... I don't even know what to say, man. All right, Skeptic Love Shies. I... Skeptic Love Shies, team. Goldsteinberg, no gamble, no loss, and Armin. Um, honestly, we keep thinking that this team is going to lose because it has a Hishashin, and they just keep going. They're like the little engine they could. How do you even have that? What? I'm, I'm actually the water stunned. Bomb. I got it yeah. on Amazon. What do you mean you got it on Amazon? It has my face on it. Okay. Oh. What? What do you feel? What do you feel like? How do you feel about this team composition? The only that they played together in two rounds of the tournament so far, like this. Um, I thought the 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 comp or the the cooperation between the team of the coordination was a lot better, especially with Gold Scene being a little bit of a fill in. Probably got a little bit of practice this week. I still think the hash is the weak link here. Armin and Goldstein playing very, very well together, um, making sure to peel for gold as he was the number one target in the last match they had. Um, I think if the succession hash can either find a target and kill it on its own while the first two peel each other, uh, or if he is able to just follow up any damage from Armin, who seems to be a bit tankier on the ninja today, then they're going to be in a pretty good spot. It's a very off meta, very weird composition, but it's working together. And I'm I'm a little bit surprised on how well it is, but I kind of like it. Yeah, well, it's kind of strange. Yeah, I mean, you do kind of like it. It kind of grows on you, but so does family, as it were. Uh, day old McMuffin, uh, the other side of family, and this is a flow rang bath soap and illiterate. And I got to say, as well as Skeptic Love Shies has been playing, um, again, I don't think he thought that name through all, to all, uh, all the way, but it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I think that Flow Rang, Bath Soap, and Illiterate are definitely favored here. I don't know. What do you think? I, I would agree with that. I think Dale McMuffin has got this. In the, I don't think Goldstein's going to be able to do anything against that succession Kuno. I think it's just going to run all over him just like Arian did last time. But uh, <laughs> unlike last time, the thing is, if uh, Florian gets a CC on Goldstein, the Succession Drak and the Wicked Valkyrie follow-up are not going to be stopped by Armin this time, I don't think. Right on. Yeah, as we head over to the Versus screen here, what do you think it is? We are still in best of three format at this stage. Um, so, I don't know. It's not Skeptic. It is Goldsteinberg uh, on an Awakening Warrior here. Skeptic loves Shies. Or I, I, I would give it to Dale McMuffin 2-1. I would give it to Dale McMuffin... I think it's going to be 2-0. Oh my goodness! No faith in Armin. You heard him. He said you're garbage. Um, agent, I did you not heard say it here Agent A is desk. garbage. That's Agent A. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah, we are about to get into this one. The BSR is being reset here. Uh, as we are about to get started uh, again all eyes on Goldstein as I think it he is the playmaker that everyone is trying to watch here. It's in this composition. Typically it is Armin, but. I think that Goldstein might have his work cut out for him against Florang. I don't think he's going to be standing up uh, so much against Florang with the amount of gear they have, Johnny. I think it's going to be very difficult for him to stand up unless he's building just full DR tank. 
Yeah, as the gates go up and away we go here. Oh my goodness, look at that collapse down. Florang is on the hunt. Goldstein's like, okay, please, please, please. I need an adult. Runs for his life, looking for any damage they can find onto Illiterate, which is that Valkyrie. And you see Florang is just all over Goldstein, but he's doing such a good job of keeping himself protected. Illiterate scrambling for his life right there on his back. Um, Goldstein disengages instead of throwing damage down. I think that that was a little bit of a mistake as Illiterate stands right back up, heals himself back to full health. Goldstein misses grab right Right there uh right in the middle of everything is flooring though and he takes a good amount of damage uh and has to disengage it's illiterate down at really low health goldstein takes the kill on that one illiterate's gonna go down flooring's on the ground as well and this skeptic love shy composition is showing up today there's the ground slammer right there as flooring and illiterate run for their lives uh it's the draconia that is the one uh that is dead at this stage and that we talked about that suck drac uh it's so so hard uh to position correctly here there's the ground pound or ground slam rather uh going down dropping illiterate rather low uh but does get back on that valkyrie gets himself back up to full health if they can find a cc they can absolutely pull this back but that's not what they're looking for as flooring goes on the ground they don't have enough damage to kill him though and now it's no gamble on the ground uh, they don't actually capitalize, though. His health bars are actually going to kick down. Good block jump grab right there by Florang. Does he have the damage? Flo um, Goldstein actually forced to be. This is a 2v3, mind you, as Florang is just making play after play after play. Looking for Goldsteinberg. Oh, good grab down onto Florang right there. Armin battles back and says, no, no, no. I'm the better ninja in this case. Florang says, don't worry, I'm a Kuno. Oh my gosh, but it doesn't matter. No gamble. Catching him. Down goes Florang. It is going to be Skeptic Love Shies taking round one, it looks like, as Illiterate all alone, I don't think can win the 1v3. Um, uh, despite the fact that he, he did a good amount of damage right there. He's getting two CCs right there. Oh my goodness. Um... And they seem to just be playing with it. it looks like they're just waiting uh, for cooldowns here as they know that they are one uh, match loss away from elimination on this one. Johnny, how do you feel about round one? Have you, have you changed your prediction yet? Uh, I... No. They had the CCs on Goldstein, but they didn't have the follow-up damage like I was expecting them to have from the yeah. composition from their players. Skeptic, just the Skeptic team just playing absolutely fantastically with each other. Um, continuing out through this tournament to just get better and better at their coordination, better and better at the synergy, and just showing what you can do, even if you have an off-meta composition, that if you play it right, if you adjust to your enemy, if you adjust to your team itself, you can do something that most won't expect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as Skeptic Love Shies is up 1-0 so far in this one. Uh, and we're going to be watching Bath Soap as Illiterate looked like he was the one scrambling, but it was Bath Soap that went down first on the Suck Drac. So, uh, honestly, just needs to play a little bit more passively, I think, I think uh, at the start of this one. The gates are up. Florang certainly able to find the picks, but without Bath Soap there for the damage, I don't think that they can actually kill um, their opponents. We'll see if they can make it happen here, though. Um, playing really well so far. Not getting grabbed. They dove, dove straight onto him. Oh my goodness. Uh, no gamble actually takes so much damage. Yeah, down at 20% HP. Forced to V. And Bath Soap on the sniff. Uh, Knock actually going to find it, but no gamble. Not able to actually uh, make anything happen. Uh, on ooh, on that Hashash and Armin in the middle of everyone with Red Rain. A clean debuff for everybody right there. But Bath Soap is doing so much more work on that Suck Drac keeping himself healthy as Armin looking for a grab. You can see him on the hunt. He knows that that is the target for him. Florang doing his best on the other side of things to try to initiate for his team. No gamble. Gets really low. He has no V. Bat Soap also really low. Uses that protected area uh, skill that people love so, so much. Gets himself right back to full health uh, and regenerates, but it's got like a 40 second cooldown, so he can't use it again for the next 40 seconds. No gamble, no loss. Down at 10%. Uh, ticking down here, and he is just going to die from stand Goldstein's on the ground. He's taking a lot of damage. Illiterate buries him. Armin is now running for his life um, as it looks like Bath Soap turning it back around. Skeptic Love Shies down 2v3 right now, but can absolutely turn this back. Goldstein doing his best under the pavilion. Dies from standing on the warrior. Just doesn't have the super armor trade capacity. And it is just Armin left alive. You can see him standing still. He wants to die, and they do not want to oblige him yet. They are playing with their food because, again, they use a lot of their class buffs right there. Um, Armin just wants to die, but they are just going to let him live, uh, which I think is just a wise choice, Johnny. 
This is a lot more of what I was expecting out of McMuffin here. Instead of going for Goldstein, they end up getting no gamble, no loss, really, really low. Uh, the Draconia, it looked like just able to follow up damage to just finish them off. And that's something you got to be super careful of, especially in uncapped, is when you are fighting certain classes, you have to keep in mind how much damage they have, how much burst they have, and how much range they have. Because even if you're at 20, 25% HP, that doesn't mean that you can't get one skill. There are plenty of classes in the game at the moment that can do that and bath soap was able to show that on no gamble don't loss there yeah it is now one one um in this one armin looking like he's sitting on a casting couch uh all alone by himself right there but as a member of pimps would you expect any less um we love suzane and down goes arm it looks like they've <laughs> waited enough time right there and again family taking that w right there we'll see one more round to go both teams one round from elimination johnny one on one the, for the family fight so let, let's see which one is going to turn their back on family here i i don't know i at first i was very heavy leaning towards mcmuffin but i think it's i think it's definitely in one's game obviously it's one one but i think it's going to depend on if gamble and goldstein can stay healthy or if uh the mcmuffin team can find their target yeah, it's gates up and away we go. Family certainly looking amazing without John Skeptic here um, as he abandoned them completely to go get a, a gallon of milk last week. Uh, goes in, gets the grab onto Illiterate, his arm, and Basso playing uh, really, really slowly at the start of this one, sliding around, trying to abuse the iframes on the succession Draconia, but taking a good amount of... Oh my goodness, that just gets his health right back. Uh, again, right there, that is the resiliency uh, of this team here. Uh, as he has a Valkyrie to keep him healthy. No gamble, no loss. Losing a lot of HP out. Looks like that second round again. Armin's on the ground as well, down at 20%. Uh, but it's still anyone's game on this one. It does look like Skeptic Love Shies are on the back foot um uh in terms of hp trade uh but again it could just go either way no gamble no loss oh my goodness look at bath subs damage going in right there on the succession draconia and he is on the hunt gets grabbed on the ground is forced to be goldstein with the big damage right there to try to turn it back around can they sniff him in v uh it looks like the fight does collapse down on him they're gonna get him he is down Skeptic Love Shies turns it back around. Flooring's on the ground as well. Getting bounced. Armin doing a great job putting damage down. Flooring has to retreat. No. Chooses to stay in on this one and is going to be punished for it. And it looks like Goldstein punishing this family team here. Skeptic Love Shy comes up with it out of nowhere on the back side of it. Oh my goodness. They look so rough at the start of that round, Johnny. Not that is not what I was expecting for the, the the bar brawl at the gate to just completely turning it around. We had flooring on the ground. I was thinking he was going to be the one to die, and then we ended up getting another CC from I believe Goldstein ended up getting that kill instead with flooring managing to stay up. It's those little things of I understand your teammates on the ground, but you have to know what your teammate is capable of. If they're a fairly um, well geared evasion player, if they're a DR tank, if whatever they are, right? If they if they can live. You can't sacrifice everything or risk the CC like that needlessly. Um, even in these tournaments, you got to have a cool head. You have to stay focused, and you can't just try to rush into something. I think that's going to be something a lot of players end up doing. We've seen it before, and I think we're going to continue to see it in the future. It's one of those things of, I think the only thing that can really solve that is experience. And it's a thing of, there's a lot of people in here who have, you know, five, six years of experience, and some of those who, this is their very first tournament. Yeah, and it's absolutely showing right there as both teams, I think, did an amazing job in that round, making that happen. As we look ahead to our next round, this is the uh, final match of the loser's bracket for now. Uh, it is going to be Stin Steakhouse versus Cangino's Baked Beans on this one. Stin Steakhouse is this Pastor Pete, Details, and Dabin team. Um... Johnny, you think they've got what it takes, man? I mean, like, they look a little shaky at times, and then at other times, man, they just look so strong, they just battle back so aggressively. I think if they play together well, they're gonna they're gonna do pretty decent. I think the big issue is, um, as we continue, and we'll talk about the, the, the versus screen here in a second, but I think it's gonna be dependent on if Pete can keep Peel for details. Details needs to be able to get off his damage. He needs to not have constant pressure on him. And I think that's going to be difficult as we go into this next comp. 
Yeah, um, as we look ahead to this one, uh, Kyojino's baked beans. We saw the Succession Draconia look uh, relatively weak in the first round, and then they came down to the loser's bracket and just stomped. In the next round, you saw how strong it looked. So it's really going to be up to Death's Grip here on this Succession DK to, I think, make a lot happen. But you have Choice and Ice with grabs and initiation and support. Ooh, that's a scary uh, team. Those are some scary team names, Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's going to be the thing of with this team if choice is again on that tankier variety he's going to be able to i think he's going to be very deadly versus pete the thing with it though is that details have so much ap and accuracy especially the accuracy part um and with dabin on the wusa support uh for that supporting damage if choice does an extended grab i don't care if he's double cadre he's going to die standing in it i i think it's going to be very very dangerous for him to do so he's got to be quick on whatever ccs he gets if those two are around and all of these players are certainly excited to get going. They're all whistling their whistling horses. They're all whistling the at each other in the arena because they are checking each other's characters out, respectfully, of course, uh, on this one. As we look over towards the versus screen for this match, make sure you guys get uh, your votes in. It is Kanjino's Baked Beans versus Stins Steakhouse um, in this one. And this this has got to be a banger. Honestly, who do you think takes this, Johnny? I think, I honestly, I got to give it to Baked Beans. I want to say Baked Beans because of the Suck Circle, but the Suck Circle also seems like a crutch versus the, with the extended grab, unless he just chases down details. I, I, I'm i going to give it to Baked Beans in the end. I think what they should do is run details down with the with the Succession Circle and the Suck DK. They, that's what they got to do, in my opinion. Um, I honestly... I am not entirely sure um, because I've heard Choice talk about details on stream before and he he thinks that, that, that he's basically uncatchable. So like they might have a different, um, they might have a different um, strategy coming into this one uh, as the gates go up and away we go on this one. Choice, Death Grip and Ice playing very defensively uh, at the start of this one. Death Grip's honestly out in front, which is interesting. Uh, but waiting for the enemy team to kind of come across the arena here. There they are. Details starting to poke away on that succession wizard right there. It's going to be on Death's Grip to try to get on top of him. And it's so easy for a successor. It should be. Yep, yeah, oh, details, details on the ground. Yeah, details get CC'd immediately. He's just getting eaten. Oh, my goodness. Look at that Dark Knight on the prowl for that one on the sniff right there. Does look for details going right back in with Twilight Comma, but look at the trade of damage back for details. Now he's the one aggressively looking at Death's Grip right now. And Death's Grip is the one in the corner taking a lot of damage choice, doing his best to stay healthy on this one. Details manages to get out alive. Very difficult to lock him down. Miss grab right there uh, as details again. TP's around, keeps himself safe. Death's Grip had to back up and disengage. You can see that how dynamic that Succession Caster versus Suck DK is both such high volume so much damage on that class oh my goodness oh, it looked like the goes down so quick yeah Davin just immediately died in the corner right there choice does oh, we got land. the grab from choice yeah another grab right there as well and it looks like they're gonna clean up yet another one no pastor pete limping away from this one details trying to fire back some damage on the back side of this one but down at 100 hp and just can't get that health back with the Dark Knight right on top of him. Uh, he is running for his life. As Choice looks to re-engage, he knows he's basically one hit from dead. If um, Details tries to hit him, Details actually uses Mass TP. That's an interesting choice. He's only going to get to use that once per match. It's got a five-minute cooldown. Uh, so he probably doesn't get that up off cooldown again before the end of this round. And he does get CC'd. It is all for nothing. Kanjito's down in a... Uh, well, honestly, a 2v3. It looks like Death Grip actually got killed on this one as Pastor Pete's the only one left alive. Oh, goodness. And it's a little rough uh, out here for him. Couldn't get into Cho. Couldn't win the 1v2. And Root says, stay on the wait list. <laughs> That's just doing man sturdy there. But it's, it's very much the thing of initially when they came out of the gate, um, we saw Beans playing very very passive, very defensive. Um, and then once the, the fight actually started to break out, um, you saw Choice looking at almost not bait, but as a distraction, putting that forward pressure on the details. It looked like details had the horse reins on a little bit with uh, Death Grips able to get that follow-up CC, which was huge for the start of the fight.
yeah uh ice here on the awakening valkyrie doing his job all dripped out look at the drip on that valkyrie looks so good positioned out in front of this one uh to try to block any incoming damage that he might uh absorb from details but details playing very defensively doesn't want to get cc'd right off the rip again like he did last time just so easy to go find him there's the hostility man the engage from choice goes down as well uh not actually finding anything though a good disengage from stin steakhouse right there uh as they kind of cross details gets down to half health is actually forced to v from standing and the in any entirety of baked beans spreads out looking for him oh my goodness they found him but he comes out of v uh death script down at 10 percent health uh on that dark knight trying to get on top of details and details trading back really well trying to get away like that um death script trying to get on top of him does get healed right back up like that details in the corner fighting for his life choice says come over here i got you for three minutes choice gonna take him down a clean grab right there death script's there with the damage and baked beans gonna clean up this round it looks like in a 2v3 i'm not sure that stin steakhouse can actually battle this one back no it is a 1v3 now a wusa against the world details did go down baked beans bringing it back in the losers bracket of this one johnny a very good performance on beans in that second round we saw as both pete and ice were on the ground by the pavilion um that pete was just trying to focus the damage on icy as he was able to get out of his kd first follow it up with another cc and you could see in the background from my pov that i was using as details is just being held in the air hostage by choice Pete turning around doing the 180, doing Hossie to try to get to him as fast as he can, but unable to make it in time. Details going down, that's going to be hard to keep your team alive. He was able to keep him alive last time, or dab him alive last time in the long grab, but not details this time, and that's going to lose you the fight. Just an absolutely tough one right there. But I, I think both teams, again, played so, so well. And every single time we get through a round of this tournament, if you can believe it, the matches get better every time. Johnny, the next round is C-Team versus the GOATS. And there is some lore with this one. Uh, C-Team is, of course, Divios' team. The GOATS actually almost knocked this team out of the best in Guild Tournament in 2022. It was family that actually had the closest round with them if you guys remember the best in guild tournament from 2022 um they actually went one and one and they they got them down they almost beat them in the final round and divio said he sweated more in that match uh than i think he has in any pearl of his tournament like that it was sweaty and now they are up against them again raiden gtr the best valkyrie in north america bobo buddy uncontestedly the best awakening warrior in north america and divios the best player in the the world on C team here, but Johnny, look at the goats now. I'll let you. I'll let you introduce Gotikis over here. I'll let you introduce the boys. All right. So first, of course, we have Florida Kiss. I mean, Gotikis here on the Succession Ninja. One of those players that, when he's on his feet, he is absolutely terrifying. The Succession Ninja is again. It's got a lot of what you need. It's got the the V sniff. It's got the damage. It's got the class buff. It's got the grab. It can do it all when you play the class consistently. It has some gaps. It has some weaknesses. It's not going to be one of those free win W key classes. It's one that you have to play with a lot of skill. It's one you have to be consistent on and you can't make mistakes, especially against this kind of a team. We have Hoid on the Awakening Draconia. That's a little bit more of a free class when it comes to dumping some of your damage, but its mobility is actually quite unprotected in a lot of the ways. Um, that people might not expect. Of course, it's fast, it's great in large-scale combat, it's still good small-scale combat, but its weaknesses start to appear more in the smaller scale than they do in the large scale. And then finally, Swedex on the Awakening Valkyrie, arguably, I would say top, I would say top three. Um, I think he's a very good contender against Raiden. I think if Raiden is gonna have his work cut out for him in a 1v1 Valkyrie situation, it's probably gonna be one of those. Um, so great to see what he can bring to the table as well. He has great composition for his team. He has great players. I think C team is going to be the favorite here with the bets for sure, but no I don't question, think they're yeah. out of it. Yeah, no question uh, on that one. I think that C team is definitely favored, but like you would count the goats down and out on this one. I think that obviously they were favored the last time they did this, but again, uh, the, there it is on the accomplishments right there. I remember shoutcasting that match. You were right on the edge uh, of your seat in this one. I believe that um, 
it it did end up going uh armin it was armin divios and raiden i believe on the same team uh in that one so bobo body uh replacing armin in this case uh, so Godicus, no Succession Ninja to go up against here. But I think that the Suck Ninja actually provides a fair amount of engage. And Bobo, as great as he is at Awakening Warrior, is going to find it very difficult to not get CC'd uh, if Godicus is playing uh, at the top possible level here. If Ahoyd is playing at an incredible level on the Awakening Draconia. So like, I don't know, man. I, I, like, obviously, they're favored, right? But like, do you think that Goats is able to pull this one out? I think if I think Goats is definitely able to pull this one out. I think it's going to depend on how C team plays. If they're playing together, if they're playing like a stacked death ball with Divios trying to find some CCs there, I think they're going to be in a much better solution. Bobo Buddy can do ground smash to, to fish out some CCs, especially against the Succession Ninja. Um, any sort of engagers are going to be really rough from Hoyt's POV just because of how unprotected some of them can be. Um, and Swid is, I think Divios is going to go after Swid. I think that's what we're going to see a lot of. Yeah, um, I mean, we will see here. I love how Norelio's in the chat. He says, rank one pickleball player. Godicus is known for his pickleball. He is a pickleball enjoyer. He always talks about it. I've met him in person before. It's actually insane <laughs> that he came in a chat and said that. What a kick it, Chad. Uh, as the gates go up and away we go, Godicus is just straight out of the gate. Uh, very aggressive there. Hoyd flies in with him. Swidex playing uh, defensively on the back foot here, uh, waiting for someone to get CC'd, even if it is his team. Uh, both Swid. Uh, and, oh, Godicus is on the ground uh, over there, but does stand right back up. Hoyt's taking a lot of damage, uh, but it's Bobo down at 10%, taking so much damage on the back, but he's trying to get healed from Raiden. Has to V. Raiden doesn't have an appeal uh, on that one, and we have not seen this team under this much pressure yet. Bobo's in the corner, taking so much damage. Can they finish the job? Running for his life on the Warrior. Can he finish him? Yes, they can. The Goats absolutely coming out and winning the first round of this in a 2v3, Hoyt's on the ground. Can they bring it back? Beautiful CC from Swidex right there. Good peel to get his teammate back up on his feet. Raiden's very low right now. Divios down at half health. Gods do bleed, Johnny, as it is still 2v3. Divios is trying to battle it back. He absolutely does. It's still 2v3 now. What is going on? Swidex trying to kill Divios. They just can't kill him. He's the Terminator, man, as they run for their lives. They just can't make it happen on this one. They're backing up. They're doing the best that they can in this situation. It is still a 2v2 now. They thought they had it, but the Goats with the throw on this one. Gotta just get CC'd. Stun. Swidex comes in to try to heal him. Does get him back to his feet. Both Valkyries doing an amazing job here. Swidex on the ground, though. That's the that's the one that gives, honestly, when you have two Valkyries and it's a 2v2 like this. Oh, my goodness. DDO's doing a great job. A oh, sniffing. That V. That's why he's the best, but God. Godicus grabs him, tries to get him back to his feet. Not absolute, not gonna make it happen though. Oh my goodness, the 2v2 just came down to the better Valkyrie in this case. Godicus doing what he could to try to peel that, but now is in a 1v2. I'm not sure he has the damage to make it happen. He might be able to kill uh, Raiden here, but I certainly don't think he has the damage to kill Divios. 53 seconds left on the clock. Uh, time is ticking down here. HP bars are capped at 50%, and oh my goodness, you all thought I was capping. You all thought I was pretending. But boy, oh boy, Johnny, wasn't that a close first round? I <laughs> I don't think people were expecting that quite. Um, with it starting off with Bobo Buddy going down as he tries to get out of it. That's going to be one of the big weaknesses of the Warrior in these kind of matchups is if you need to move away from the enemy and they have a good amount of chase with um, the... Uh, the goats having a good amount of chase and um, not allowing him to get away as all of his movement skills are going to be forward guard. It... You can't put yourself in a position as a warrior where you have to run away from that kind of a comp. It's going to be really rough to try to get out. Divios being so tanky as well, able to kill the Draconia while he's on the ground and kind of a 1v1 situation is also one of the things that's going to be really rough because when you make it a 2v2 of Valkyrie Striker versus Valkyrie Ninja, I think you just have to give it to the, the Striker there. He's going to be too tanky. You're not going to be able to kill him with that support. We saw... Um, I believe it was Swid try to kill Divios and Raiden just instantly healing him back up. It, there's nothing you can do there. It's gonna be really, really, really difficult for them to kill Divios here. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, dang, man. Like, I thought that they had it. If they had just played a little bit slower, I think they got ahead of themselves. We need to reset, he's dead uh, on my screen. Um, 
okay well he's spamming uh that they need to reset the match here so um they are waiting uh on this one yeah it looks like they're gonna go ahead and reset uh the match uh, on this one so we'll go ahead and bring it back to the caster decks uh while they kind of sort that one out uh yes we are still in best of three format we're not quite in the semifinals uh quite yet here uh, as the semifinals will be the next round uh of the tournament but uh yeah they are resetting the match here it did look like one of the players uh did bug out while the gates were down so we're gonna go ahead and uh get them right back in here and get the match going again c team is up 1-0 but it was not a simple 1-0 johnny it was not a simple 1-0 at all um, going into the next match as well as a reminder for the people, if the gates are open, the players are out, and if somebody crashes or has a bug, it's just one of those unfortunate things. There's not much we can do. But if the gates are down and there's an issue and the players report it quickly, then we can make measures to make sure that the issue is remedied uh, going into the match. But I think going into the second round here, um, I, this is one of those situations where, like you said, with the prior tournament, C team has to be a little cautious here. Divius might be sweating a bit. You know, he has that Achilles heel of this not being a PA sponsored tournament. Um, so he, if he's not careful, he might get that crutch used against him from the goats here. I think they very much have this uh, as a possible win. Either way, both of these teams will see again as one will move to the loser's bracket, which I'm super excited to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're getting the players right back into the, uh, arena here. Um, looks like there is some confusion with the bracket here. Um, so we'll, we'll get that sorted out as well. But like, honestly, I don't think that anybody but me thought that this match was going to be this close. But man, I, again, I saw this round basically play out, uh, previously as well. So, um, absolutely crazy uh, on this one. Uh, it is still 1-0. Yeah, it is still 1-0. Uh, as the players kind of load back in here, uh, did you? Uh, how'd you feel about the Swidex versus Raiden matchup? Where Swidex, uh, they they came down to a two v two and ultimately ended up being Swid, uh, giving an inch there because like in a two v two like that where you have a mirror match, it ultimately comes down to who plays the better Valkyrie there, and Swid has tragically got caught. I, I do think tra um, Swid did get caught with it. I think it's part of an issue, not necessarily of the Valkyrie front, because they do seem to be playing very evenly, very on the same um, par, but it's a thing of the the supporting player, right? Like this isn't saying that Goticus is a, necessarily um, a worse player, but just the composition. When you have that super tanky Awakening Striker just holding that W key, putting trails from their knuckles, dragging to the ground as they just chase down your ally, it's really hard um to to really deal with that especially as the valkyrie because you're going to run out of movement that's protected and those are classes that as soon as you run out of the, of the protected movement if you try to use something unprotected they're going to be able to follow up and cc you very very quickly right um and it looks like um yeah we have a technicality one of the players did crash so we are loading them right back into the arena here uh, i'm not sure like you're a warrior main johnny how do you feel like bobo mm -hmm. like what do you think bobo can actually do into this situation because he just took so much damage and it didn't feel like there was much he could do he just like died uh from standing so he was uh he was in the corner by the gate um it's one of the situations where he can use pulverize to sustain himself especially with the 10 percent bsr it's going to give him a good amount of healing but if he especially trying to get back into the, the pre-awakening block because it's a stronger block than the awakening you have to just stick your butt in the corner and pray a lot of the time. If you get lucky or if you have a good opening, you can use head chase into solar, solar flare, which is um, iframe into essay, assuming he took the core, to get a little bit of protected disengage. And then you have to be so quick uh, to use that forward guard movement to get out of there. But when you're fighting really good players or when they're looking for that, you might have a hard time. And sometimes it's just like we saw previously with Goldstein in the other match, where you're in that corner, hunker down, you're like, if I'm dying, you're coming with me, and you just yeah. throw out the E to try to just grip someone to throw them on the ground. So, I don't know. It's it's a very, very difficult situation for Bobo Buddy to be in, and it's going to be one of those split-second timing uh, decisions that is going to decide if he lives or not. Yeah, I think that, like... Honestly, yeah, I, I, the GOATs had the, the strategy. Like, run Bobo down, um, and Bobo just... You saw how helpless he was. Even Raiden mm -hmm. supporting him. Raiden threw out basically everything he had. And they just weren't able to save him. Bobo ended up going down anyway. But, like, then they just got too aggressive. I think that if, if they just play passively, if they just take a breath, they get Bobo down, they take a breath, they back up, uh, and then they re-engage, I think it's 
definitely Raiden is probably the next target there because I don't know if Divios is actually killable um, on that Awakening Striker. They just don't do a whole lot of damage to him, uh, especially if Hoyt is not uh, on top of them. But like, and Divios did get low at the start um, of the last round, so they could definitely kill him. But like, I think they just need to take a breath um, and then uh, try to re-engage on it. Um, if we look uh, at our next round here, we look at Sinister Synergy versus Rule 11, and then we're on to the semi-finals already, and we will move to a best of five format for both the losers and the winners bracket there. So um, the tournament definitely starting uh, to heat up a little bit here, uh, as it looks like uh, both teams are almost ready to go. We're going to move over to the versus screen one more time here, Johnny. Do you want to change your prediction at all? I do not want to change my prediction at all. I'm still giving it to C team. I think the goats are far from out of this match, but I think C team is, if they keep their consistency, are going to win this. I think the goats' best thing is to just destroy Bobo Buddy as fast as possible to get him out of the match while not losing anyone yourself. And then you're probably going to want to focus Raiden um, just simply because when Divius is on the ground, if he's getting heals, if he's getting uh, PA from Raiden, you're never killing him. He's going to be a difficult target to take down even just alone, let alone with that supporting Valkyrie. Yeah. Um, now, everybody did leave and reset, so the match is technically reset here, but we know that C team is up 1-0 so far in this best of three, so if they win even a single round here, they take the best of three, and they push the GOATS to the loser's bracket. Uh, the GOATS has to win the next two rounds, and I think they are absolutely capable of doing just that on this one. Let's see, Johnny, as it looks like both teams are getting ready to go here. Swidex at the gate here knows that he's up against potentially one of the best Valkyries to play the game in North America. Godicus knows how well he has to be playing in order to make this happen. And I'll admit, he is he is playing out of control so far on this one. He's going to dive straight in. He gets underneath the gazebo. Uh, it goes in and right back out again. He is looking for Bobo here. Oh, goes in his stealth, uh, dives right in, looking for Bobo, does find him. Hoyt on the ground. Yeah, Divius Hoyt. on the ground. Hoyt's on the ground. Divius is on the ground, too. Everybody taking a lot of damage with the Valkyries, keeping everybody nice and healthy as everybody stands back up, and the uh, uh, rotation moves back. Divios down at 30% health, backs up a little bit there, uh, and realizes that, oh, he can't just stand in the middle of everyone. On the ground again. Got to get with the cc on the grab. Do putting in work on Divios right there, but they just can't kill him with Raiden standing over the top of him right there. But Gotik is doing so much work on this ninja, moving around the arena like this. Oh, they've collapsed down on what looks like Bobo, but Divio's also taking a good amount of damage as well as it snaps me off. It looks like, oh, the goats lost their Draconia. Oh no, that's tragic. Now 2v3, Swidex comes out of E. Raiden finds him right there, but they find him on the ground. They do have Divio's on the ground if they can try to kill him right here, but no, he's gonna scramble back to his feet. Uh, and Swidex and Gotikus are going to reset a little bit here. It looks like C-Team might just take this away from them. Godicus might not quite have it what it takes to beat this team composition. Bobo with a clean grab on the Godicus right there. Good turn for the Warrior. An excellent play to try to peel himself right there. Swidex doing a great job, though. Supporting Godicus, getting him back to his feet. Godicus on the ground again when he tries to look for a pick, but it's Swidex that ends up going down on that one, and it's Godicus is the only one left alive. They are going to go to the loser's bracket, it looks like here, as Godicus is in V. You see the enemy C team spreading out in all directions, looking for him. It's Divios that finds him, but he does get out of E safely there. Finds Raiden on the stun. Actually, two stuns on the Divios and Raiden right there, but it is C team that is going to take it home there. They're going to move on to the semifinals of the winner's bracket, uh, and the GOATS is going to move down to the loser's bracket down there. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people are expecting there. It was very, very close at a lot of the times, and I don't think a lot of people necessarily caught that, where we saw both, uh, both teams have several of their players get down below 25-ish percent HP, 50 percent HP, and especially in these uncapped tournaments, when you have the right people get the right CCs or even just dump damage at the right time, you can die so, so quickly. You have to be careful. Absolute fantastic healing. PA is coming out of the Valkyries, keeping their players alive in that bar brawl at the very start down on the ledge. We saw several, I think we saw over six, seven CCs in total come out, just like first CCs come out of players there. The people getting up and going down to the ground, just quick back and forth all over the place. Um, 
Yeah, they wow, played super I was waiting well. for yeah. somebody to die and nobody did. I know, and nobody would give an inch there. That's just how good those players actually are. But tragically, the GOAT's coming up short there, but we will see them again uh, in the loser's bracket here as we look ahead to our next round, which again will decide who goes to the semifinals. Um, both teams, this is the winner's bracket, so both teams here will move on to the semifinals. It just depends on whether or not you'll be in the winner's semis uh, or the loser's semis. Uh, Sinister Synergy, who is the favorite favorite team uh, on the bottom side of the bracket here, Rujinx, Precision, and Oni-Chan. Oni-Chan on the Awakening Zerker, Precision on the Awakening Draconia, and Rujinx on the Succession Wusha. Such a scary team, Johnny. I mean, this is a very, very disgusting team. We talked about it earlier with the Succession Wusha damage, the Awakening Drac uh, damage grab, and CC heal sustain. Not at all. Um, and then Oni-Chan on the Awakening Zerker, providing some nice range support, but also able to get the, the three grabs off as needed. Um, follow up with some melee damage is very good against evasion targets. It's all three of these classes are very good in the 1v1 or the group scenario. So it's, it's gonna be a situation of you can't just single one out and hope that it's a 1v1 or just try to fo uh, target focus one. They're all gonna be able to peel for each other. They're all gonna be able to do good damage and they're all gonna be able to just stain as they need. Yeah, um, and we look over at Rule 11 here. Remember, this looked like the unbeatable composition. I mean, like, mm -hmm. you think with an Awakening Wizard, you'd think sweep the leg, but, like, they look so powerful in every round of the tournament so far. Rule 11 with Cosini, Alusha, and Kyros, uh, or Kairos on the Awakening Draconia. They just look so strong. Ventus, um, like, I had multiple teams in this tournament. This is the only surviving team uh, for Ventus in this tournament here. <laughs> But man, they look so good in the best in guild tournament this year. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a very strong team. Again, we have the Awakening Valk, which gives the accuracy buffs, gives PA, gives heals, uh, and itself does good damage CCs and has vacuums. The Awakening Dr Draconia, we've seen a billion times. I'm sure everyone is so happy to see the one billionth Awakening Draconia. And then followed by, I would guess, the, the I believe they're the only Awakening Wizard we saw in the tournament, um, or at least the only one that made it a fairly good distance, was Cosini on the Awakening Wiz. And a lot of people, like you said, would try to focus the Awakening Wiz, but as soon as they get him on the ground, realize that Cosini is built like a brick shit house and does not go down <laughs> nearly as easy as you expect out of a caster. Yeah, it's a little obnoxious. Um, I will say that for what it's worth, uh, Sinister Synergy is not wearing clothing on its female characters. And again, that worked really well as a distraction against Baked Beans uh, in the previous round as they Choice immediately uh, took a look over there, um, hopefully respectfully, uh, and they just went down immediately. So we'll see who wins on this one. But both teams absolutely geared out of their minds on this one. So make sure mm -hmm. you get your bets in. Are you on? Team Ventus, or are you for the Rose? As it were, Sinister Synergy has looked so strong in this tournament so far. Johnny, give me your prediction here. Uh, I think it's Sinister Synergy 2-1. Uh, I think it's... I think it's going to go be the other Sinister way? Synergy 2 to... I'm going to give it to Rule 11. Let's give it to Rule 11 on this one. I, I think it's going to... I don't know. This is hard. Uh, like, I, I love that the even continuously throughout the, the, the tournament, it's a hard decision on this one. Like, I, I'm going to give it to Rule 11, 2-1. Uh, yeah. I think it could go either way, but I'm, I'm just going to give it to Rule 11. Um, give them a little cheerleader here. Um, It looks like we are uh, gates up here into round one of this one make sure you got your predictions in that should be closing in just a moment the gates closed and it looks like alusha did leave the gate which is an objective w for ventus right there smoover i know has all of the eggs in this basket clean grab for oni chan right there uh but it does stun him too alusha is grabbed but both of them taking a lot of damage um on the back foot of it neither team putting down quite enough damage uh to kill the other oni chan can back right up zerker has a lot of sustained precision gets he seed is on the floor here oh my goodness has to immediately v on that one in kosini showing what awakening wizard can do oni chan do it a good job on the awakening zerk uh trying to kite around and honestly find grabs find openings uh but he has to kite out of this one and try to abuse that range there we go that's what we love to see the titan blow going down right there trying to pound the ground that is a slow on that one precision moving right back in on that awakening draconia trying to make something happen on this one still a 3v3 good grab right there on a precision from alusha clean on play on that valkyrie novi on precision does get back to his feet iframes away presses a 
button and awakening draconia is just fine he gets back to full health kosina gets grabbed by oni chan but oni chan just leaves him it does look like uh it is alusha that did go down on the side of the fight right there now it's precision running for his life though as he might trade they might be able to trade one back on the other side of it rule 11 desperately trying to run him down but oni chan putting on the pressure with the awakening zerker from range right now doing his best rujinx buying his time they know they can just play this slowly it is a 2v3 after all alusha is dead kosini gets stiffened misses the grab onto kosini Cini right there and has to back up uh, a little bit. And again, Oni Chan, there's just not enough here to pressure him. And he's just wailing away from range. It's Kosini on the ground. There's not enough peel without the Valkyrie there. And there's the grab from Oni Chan for the Rose. Um, looks like is the answer in this first round. Kairos comes out of E underneath the pavilion. But Johnny, rule 11, taking it down 0-1 taking it down 0-1 for sure. I think one of the big mistakes that we saw there is that Oni Chain got a great grab at the start um, and was taking a good amount of damage as well as the person that was within his hands. But as soon as he dropped the person on the ground, he tried to use time to rock the, the backwards forward guard skill, movement skill, to get out of the situation, got CC'd, but never had any follow-up damage to really make him in danger. Didn't have to burn the V at all or anything. And one of the big things that the, the Rule 11 team can do is as soon as they see those extended grabs from Onichan, throw your slows on him. Keep him in that, um, that slowed, stuck state, because even if the person has hands Vs, he's stuck in that animation. All right. Ooh, Kosini, um, oof. Onichan came right in for the grab onto Kosini, but immediately gets punished uh, as Kosini plays it perfectly and TPs away. Alusha's right there uh, to peel for him as well uh, and showing why Hellfire is such a powerful skill uh, as Kosini just constantly hopping around, uh, throwing out slows, throwing out debuffs. Um, and honestly, now he's not under any pressure. This is all unprotected range here. This is extremely risky to do uh, for Awakening Wizard like that. You just don't have very much range. <laughs> And you certainly don't have a crazy amount of protected range, but he's holding Hellfire right here, um, which is arguably one of the best skills in the entire kit right there. Slight dash forward and multiple CCs uh, in there with a protection as well. Throwing out a good amount of damage. Alusha perfectly positioned behind him. And Kosini not uh, actually getting uh, grabbed quite yet on this one, but they trade one back. Oh my goodness, the Corsair just immediately dies, but it's... Is it Kairos? Kairos just went down on that one, and it's Kosini uh, is the only one uh, with Alusha. <sighs> like, these are the only two left alive here. Is there Kairos just died as Black Rose has them pinned into the corner. Kosini gets CC'd. Alusha's there to peel for him, but I'm not sure they have the damage without Kairos actually present here. Oh, man, absolutely tragic in this round of it. Kosini underneath um, the pavilion right there. Oni Chan just pounding away. Black Rose looks like they're going to move on to fight Cho Nation, as is the tradition in this tournament here. They will move on to the semifinals uh, of this one, Johnny, but 2-0 for Sinister Synergy coming out looking good. Very <laughs> Looking very good there. Um, this You can definitely tell that these players have played together for quite some time. They've been practicing within uh, the arena and they ju they just know their stuff. They have the experience, they have the gear and they have the classes to just do what they need to do to secure these wins. And as we move into the semifinals, um, if I am correct, uh, yes. yes, as we move into the semifinals here, um, jumping into the losers brackets, we're going to see some teams we've seen before who are, again, not out of the match. They just have to climb their way up through the muck. Um, I, I think we're going to see some of these teams do something that we might not expect. Um, and we might end up having completely different end results than many have predicted earlier. Yeah. Which is, uh, it's that's what I love to see, baby. Yeah. I mean, like, if you're like, oh, we have this one team who's going to just win the match. Well, why are we having the tournament in the first place? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, we're moving to a best of five format as well. Um, and it's, it's starting to become winner take all. Again, we're getting closer and closer to that prize pool, that juicy, juicy prize pool at the end here. Uh, the first match that we are going to see in our semifinals looks like it's going to be rule or I'm sorry, the goats versus Kajito's baked beans. Um, and gosh, man, every round of this tournament is just an absolute banger, Johnny. Uh, uh, Kanijo's baked bean, death grip, ice, and choice. Honestly, such an incredible composition. Do you feel like, what do you think the weak link is uh, in this? I think with them cleaning up with some of their issues in the earlier matches, I think the, the big, it's, it's a double-edged sword, truly. The, the suck DK is a weak link, but also a great playmaker when 
when necessary. We saw him get some great CCs on details in a prior match. Um, we watched him take out the Fonda, the Corsair, out of nowhere. It's one of those things, and if uh, Death Grips is able to stay alive, not even necessarily find a CC, but just apply the, the sheer high amount of damage that class can when it needs to, it's a very, very strong uh, class for this composition. I think it's going to really struggle into any sort of composition that ha can, has a self-peel range class or that has large AoEs like Wusa because they can kill that DK before they know what hit them. Yeah, and that's the big problem here is I'm seeing Godicus here, and it's really going to come down to Death Grip versus Godicus. If Godicus can find Death Grip or if Death Grip can, can absolutely eat Godicus because they can both just kill each other uh, almost from standing. So the first... Honestly, the first catch will win uh, in that case. And then you have Hoyd and Swidex on the back side of it. Um, I think that both Valkyries are just extremely good. I would give a little bit of the edge to Ice here as I've seen him in more tournaments, but Swidex is certainly no slouch, no stranger to that Valkyrie. So that's as close as it's going to get in that matchup there. Hoyd on the Awakening Draconia, I think might be the weaker link here as Godicus has been kind of playing out of his mind so far on this tournament, Johnny. Yeah, Gothic has definitely had the fingers all warmed up for this one, ready for it, staying on his feet, just being an absolute playmaker for his team. I think it it's going to largely come down to if Gothicus can find the CCs that he needs, or if uh, Death Grips on the DK can find the the back kills. I don't know how to describe it, but the, right. the snipes, the, the snipes throughout the matches. It's going to be a bit harder into this composition as it is thick, unless he's killing Gothicus himself. Yeah, I really, I sincerely think that I, in the matchup between Death Grip and Godicus, I think Death Grip wins out uh, in that matchup. Suck Ninja versus Suck DK is a very versatile matchup, but honestly, um, the Ninja has way more room for mistakes, in my opinion, and the Suck mm -hmm. DK just has so much front loaded damage, and I think that Death Grip is just so smooth with it. I, I gotta give it, I. I got to give it over. I, I'm going to bet against family in this one. You don't see it happen very often, but I am going to bet against family uh, on the side of this one. I am going to give it to Baked Beans, two, uh, or I guess 3-0. All right, 3-1. I'll give it to go. I'll, I'll give Goats one round on this one, one but round. what do you think, Johnny? I, I, I'm going to hard agree on that one. I think 3-1. <laughs> I yeah. think as you continue in these tournaments, it's going to be hard to 3-0 people or eventually, I mean, just absolutely skunk someone out. It's going to come down to how many blunders are made uh, by Death Grips in position, I think. I think that's going to what it's come down to, is positioning from Death Grips. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, remember, guys, loser is knocked out of the tournament. Best of five format. This is the first match of the semifinals here. This is the loser's bracket down here, so you can't afford to make any more mistakes. Ice versus Swidex, who would you put your money on? Ice versus... Ooh... <clears throat> it's so hard uh like they're both so good at the game man it's yeah, actually it, just wild i think that i think swidex is I less aggressive ice just because of gear i think ice has a good bit more gear than swid um, swid I, is geared but they're this game the numbers are just starting to crawl up the <laughs> yeah i so think it's uh, ice on that i think ice is more aggressive and i think that fits choice's play style more i think they play together super super well um, you like he likes the hosty forward and make stuff happen. Uh, Swidex likes to wait for his opponent to make a mistake, uh, and is definitely a less aggressive Valkyrie in this three v three format like this. Uh, both incredibly good uh, in large scale, though. As we are about to get started, uh, make sure you get your bets in, as this is the semifinals of the Blue Squadron Open. Here, the gates are about to go up. Choice trying to battle back and win his first tournament. Gates up. And away we go on this one. Ice positions himself under the pavilion. Death Grip knows that, that that ninja can go into stealth and find him. And so, like, he's just... He wants to play so nervously on this one. Choice does find a CC uh, on that one. Swid stands right back up, though. Um, nothing to worry about right there. Choice just running around the arena. Uh, Godicus looking for Death Grip. It is going to find uh, a little bit right there. But there's the CC. Death Grip trades it back. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Godicus is healed right back to full health. Finds a grab. It's knocked over again. It's a CC clown fiesta in the middle of the arena. V's are blown everywhere. Swidex does get out. Um, Godicus now has to be on the backside of this one. And it's the... Oh my gosh. This is such a risky V. This is what I'm talking about. That does not pay off Godicus griefing right there stands up oh my goodness does manage to get out not enough damage right there coming out from baked beans but the gamble just barely pays off it does look like oh no death grip died the 
they did find him the dk goes down the gambit pays off the goats look like they might take round one gotta kiss this on the ground though and they are spinning to win on top of him swine x doing his best to try to back him up ice is gonna go down though and now it's just choice left alive oh my gosh this is so back and forth johnny it's going to be back and forth in the entire time. Like I talked about earlier, though, I think this is going to be a round for the goats with just choice surviving here, being too tanky to try to do the 1v3, in my opinion. Death Grips died first. He's got to be careful. He's going to be the, the main target for the enemy team, but he's also going to be the primary thing that's going to win his team the match today with the sheer amount of damage his class has. Yeah, oh, good grab there on to choice, but they're honestly just playing with him right now, and choice knows it. They're just bouncing him. They're waiting for cooldowns. They did this in their previous matches as well here. They know that Choice really has no chance of 1v3ing on a succession Zerker like this. Uh, it would take a miracle uh, from the heavens. There's Hastaludium all the way across the arena, and you thought Zerker was fast. Um, there's the vacuum going down right there. Godicus is CC'd, and Choice is doing his best, but just doesn't quite have the damage uh, to make anything happen on this one. And again, it just comes down to Death's Grip versus Godicus, and Death actually just got caught out. First, it was Godicus, but I'll be honest with you, Johnny, I think that they fumbled. They had Godicus. Godicus V'd to an extremely risky location. That's what makes Godicus both good and bad at the same time. He makes really high risk, high value, uh, high reward plays like that. And honestly, it didn't pay off. He got CC'd immediately, but they just didn't have the damage there. And I'm wondering if they if their damage just got lost into the the wall or exactly what happened there. But like, they just can't allow that to happen. It's one of those things where you have to be careful and understand the, the nature of somebody's play, right? If they, if they take that high risk play and you're able to capitalize on it, you want to do as much as you can to capitalize it, but you can't throw the entire match for it. We saw this previously. Um, I believe with like Akari Seyo getting a good CC on a sniff, but I ended up throwing the round um, because they used unprotected skills while other people were trying to peel. And if you do that, you're just going to turn what turned into a very positive uh, situation for your team into a very negative one. So you have to keep that in mind as you continue forward. Yeah, it's just a bit of a rough situation is all eyes on Death's Grip for this one. He can't afford to get caught. They did a good, he did a good job initially finding Godicus, but that seems like every team finds Godicus in the first few seconds, but he just somehow lives. I'm just not sure. Like they just can't find the damage and I know they have the accuracy to kill him. Both teams playing defensively here. Again, this is a best of five. So no one's at match point quite yet there. Death Grip buffed himself up with Unveiled Dagger. That is an attack speed buff for Dark Knight. You see Godicus on the side, and he sees him too. Um, sights are just locked in for this one. There's the block jump going through. Death Grip keeping himself protected. Choice disengaging as well. Neither team wanting to uh, really go in with any amount of damage here. Death Grip waiting behind it. There's Godicus going in on him. Goes in with the air strike. Doesn't quite find anything there. Uh, Ice trading with Hoid. Uh, Death Grip down at 50% has to V. Oh no, this is really risky. Are they gonna find him on the V? Choice jumps away, they just abandoned him. He's gonna die. There is no way that he is going to live through that. They found him again. That was a terrible place to be too. Horrible decision-making right there for Death Grip to be all alone. And now it is a 2v3, uh, his team all alone on this one. I'm not sure that they can bring this back. Uh, Ice down at 40% health like that choice. Not uh, doing his best. Got to kiss on the ground, though. Taking a good amount of damage. Can they actually trade one back? They do have a lot of sustain. They have a lot of heals left. They do both have grabs. They could make this happen. Um, No, tragically, they are going to lose the Valkyrie, too. And now it's Choice CC'd. And they want to clean this one up probably as fast as possible. Um, As they know that they just blew... Baked Beans just blew all of its class buffs right there and still lost the round. Absolutely tragic uh, on this one is Choice Again, the last one left alive at 20% health. Uh, it is Death Grip uh, that gets caught. Panic Vs and then V tragically, Johnny, to the wrong side of the arena. It's not to the right team. It's one of those situations of where you... Ha I mean, he got the CC on the Draconia and he got him down to like 40% HP and forced the V and then eventually had a V out himself shortly afterwards. <sighs> Again, turned a positive situation into a very negative one by, by having a very poor V choice. Sometimes the 
um, the off meta or the non standard way to do things is best just because people are going to be expecting that more meta approach, right? When you always uh, be to the corner of the pavilions or to very specific situations, they're going to expect that. We saw earlier with Bobo Buddy where he went against the wall, and that was right where the fight was happening, and there ended up being no follow up from that. That's some things doing the sometimes doing the wrong thing is the right thing because it is the unexpected thing. Yeah, I think um, that's a lot of things. Uh, yeah. a lot of Probably the hottest take from Akari has ever had, and he's had some hot takes. He said, Succession Dark Knight actually just doesn't do a whole lot of damage uh, by itself. And I think that that might be the only person in the Black Desert Online community that actually thinks that, as he probably played, he plays Succession Mewa. So when you compare it um, to Succession Mewa, maybe, because that class needs to be nerfed into the ground. Um, but I'm fairly certain that was the hottest take of the tournament so far. So big props to Akari for saying the stupidest thing that I could have possibly read uh, on the other side of the screen there. It looks like they're down. Oh, to the goats is it match point here match point i mean this is opposite of what i think we were uh thinking was going to happen in here it's definitely not the down and out um this is the losers bracket here so whatever team uh loses the the best of five is out for the tournament no longer able to get into that prize pool can you remind us real quick how big is that that sweet juicy prize pool? 400 dollars the largest that black Whew. desert has ever seen johnny as we come out here, Death Grip goes right in aggressively. He is eager to prove himself uh, as he dives down on this one. Wheel of Fortune catches Goticus. There's the there's the damage going down there. One skill does a third of his health. There's big damage again uh, as Swinex uh, trying to dash away, but Death Grip is behind him. Good grab on a Death Grip. Swinex on the ground. Death Grip's the one in trouble though. Does Goticus have the damage? No, Death Grip gets back to his feet. And both teams doing their best right now. Again, Big Beans cannot afford to drop this round right here. The Goats bearing down on death grip can he get himself out of trouble down at 80 percent health like this dives right in big damage right there huge train back swine x is really low on health but it's death grip that dies from standing oh no very no. tragically just not able to trade the damage in that is the weakness of succession dark knight on that class is you're just so squishy yourself unable to get the damage down there choice down at 50 percent health his tournament dreams are running out here down at 10 percent he's gonna be he's doing his best he's in the corner got a kiss on the sniff not gonna find it it is a 2v3 can choice battle it back here in the middle at 20 percent ice is down really low as well out of out of heals out of pa out of options is the valkyrie is he hostile ludiums away and they're doing their best to try to fight back in this 2v3 but it's so hard to pin down a ninja like this I'm not sure that they can actually make this happen. Just a tragic 0-3 loss, it looks like. The GOATS going to move on in the first semifinals round here. Uh, as Choice doing his best, honestly, still a 2v3. The health bars are starting to tick down, but Choice getting really low uh, on health in this one, and they just can't seem to find the damage uh, on him. Ice actually pretty healthy right now, uh, and they are looking for a grab because I'm pretty sure BSR Terra Sancta should be up. They Oh, there's the grab Ooh, right there. Ice got... can come back. Can they get Godicus right here? Do they have the accuracy? No, they don't because they don't have Succession Dark Knight, which again, according to Akari, does absolutely no damage. Um, he is got a kiss. He is going to go down on the side of this one. The Valkyrie, the only one left alive. And he is going to go down as well. The goats are going to take this one in a crisp match from them. Very, Good very <laughs> Wow. Um, that last one, I thought when uh, we had, I think, four to five people in a very, very tight clump by the grassy area down below in the lower part of the, the AOE arena, or AOA arena, that we were going to have the win for beans because they had the ccs they had the grab from choice i saw death grip jump in to deal the damage that he needed to swid going down to just absolutely no hp but was able to just roll away out of the kd got up was able to heal and survive able to keep his um his allies al alive as well you have to secure that kill that valkyrie is going to be one of the the, the most important targets when you can kill them because they're they're going to be the ones to keep themselves and others alive uh, they're also going to be, if you're fine, if you are evasion, probably going to be the main thing that's going to help his team kill you too. So keep that in mind as you go around. But oh, that was so close! And yeah, Swid would I have mean, gone down there, making it a two v two. I think Beans could have been able to pull it back, but with Swid surviving, I think it was a bit hopeless there. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, tragically, the mods would just not allow the chat to spam the flower to give um, Beans power, and so they just ran out of juice in that round there, but they fought really well, made it very, very far uh, through the tournament here. As we look ahead to our next semifinals match, uh, we look at Rule 11 versus Skeptic Loves Shy on this one. Rule 11 is Cosini, uh, Lucia, and Kairos. And again, this composition is just so powerful, Johnny. It, it, it's definitely a slightly off meta composition, but it's still going to be a very good one. You have the support from both Cosini and Alusha. Kairos being on the Awakening Drac. This might be a little bit weird to say, but the the probably the squishiest on the team is the Awakened Draconia. Um, but it's definitely not any sort of glass cannon build. Probably more of like a bruiser, a light bruiser. You have Alusha who's going to be very thick on the Awakening Val Valkyrie. Cosini, again, is just a brick wall. You think the caster would be the play sometimes, and it is definitely not it. Both of them able to provide a lot of peel, a lot of support for each other. Makes this team very hard to chip down. It's one where you just have to blast them. And I don't know if this... I next team has the comp for it i really don't i completely agree with you i think the analysis is spot on for that skeptic love shies goldsteinberg no gamble no loss and armin and we saw in their previous round johnny that no gamble no loss was just taking bad trade after bad trade and like if they dive in at all on this comp i mean like they're ready for it you know what i mean like rule 11 mm -hmm. was ready for it in every round of the tournament so far they're ready for the dive onto cosini or lucia and they just trade it back so efficiently i'm not sure that the hashashin is going to be able to get much done here but like what do you think their path to victory is I think their best shot is going to be to kill the Draconia. It's going to be hard. It's going to be very, very difficult with having the support heals, protections, etc., from the Valkyrie and the caster. But if you can isolate that Valkyrie a little bit away or make it so that the caster and the Valkyrie cannot apply those supporting uh, skills, that's going to be your best shot. I think going after Cosini is kind of a bit of a bait trap, especially with the damage that this team has. Warrior isn't going to be able to deal enough damage. Granted, versus the team they're fighting, he is going to be able to use a lot of his forward guard skills in, uh, in comparison to some previous matches where there's a lot of rats. Um, but the hash, I think the hash is going to kind of struggle here. Armin is going to be too tanky to not do any sort of damage. So I think it's going to come heavily, heavily down to if Goldstein can get down, uh, get his damage. Yeah, I think that... Um... Yeah, they're definitely going to have their work cut out for them, but we've counted them down now before. Armin is probably one of the most educated minds in Black Desert for 1v1 and 3v3 like this. The amount of knowledge packed into that man's giga brain is absolutely insane how much he knows about the game. So I would definitely not count them down and out just yet, but compositionally, they fought uphill battles so far in this tournament. We'll see if they can pull it out here. It is not Skeptic on the Awakening Dark Knight. It is Goldsteinberg on the Awakening Warrior. So make sure that you get your bets in for this one. This is the second match of the semifinals. This is the loser's bracket. Losers are out of the tournament. Winners go on to play for the largest prize pool that we have ever seen. Johnny, who do you think takes this? I'm going to give it to uh, Rule 11. I think so, too. I think that they, honestly, 3-1. I'm going to give it to them 3-1. I'm not sure how many matches you think they're going to do it in, but I'd love to see it go to five matches, but we will see. I think they're compositionally. They just look so uh, good here. There's Cosini buffing everyone up there. There's the Valkyrie uh, accuracy buff as well as the gates uh, are out. Gam no Gamble on the loss getting the CC on the Cosini, but there's the dive in on the Lucian just peels him right away, and Cosini's just fine because, again, that umbilical cord is attached at the hip. Kairos is on the ground, though, taking a lot of damage. There's Goldstein with the grab on a Cosini again, and they're doing what they can, but he is built like a brick crap house as johnny said before cosini gets out throws out a uh, lava field gets the heal from alusha the uh, pa comes down as well the draconia actually went down on the side of the fight looks like armin may have sniped him as alusha and cosini are trying to battle together in the corner kairos tried to take the 1v1 with armin and just got played like a fiddle right there so shouldn't go off on his own like that and it looks like skeptic loves shies again voted the underdog but again come out and show us why they are such a powerful team. Oh, Goldsteinberg on the ground, taking a lot of damage. Can they finish it? I'm not sure they have the damage. Double CC, though, comes in for no gamble, no loss, and they are going to save him. Ooh, Goldstein almost threw it away right there, right at the end. That was very scary. Alusha getting bounced, tossed like a salad on that Awakening Valkyrie right there, but Skeptic Love Shy is looking so good, Johnny. 
<laughs> I mean, maybe this is a bit of the cast or curse or something, but after saying three, every zero, time, bro. every time, maybe, every, every, every time, time, every time, yeah. maybe you're right on this one where it is a three one skeptic coming out here with a very, very uh, clean start. And then maybe a little bit of an adaptation from rule 11 here. We'll see in the match, but I, I'm excited. This is, this is more of what I like to see rather than a three Oh three one. Hopefully it's back and forth. Maybe it's best. Oh. Uh, yep. to the final funneling round. on funneling bsr on a gold steenberg so we can use i think it's the 10 percent on warrior correct me if i'm wrong uh what the 10 percent actually is or like that low bsr they are funneling bsr uh on tim so that he can use something no gamble no loss engages armin slithers in um and isn't quite gonna find anything uh on the engage right there looking for alusha lucia stands tall there's the grab down onto cosini and oh my goodness who is it goldstein down at 50 percent, 20 percent has to run for his life uh armin now on the ground as well um taking a punishing uh, amount of damage right there from this rule 11 team composition and again just landing slow after slow with that aqua jail uh doing super well with that awakening wizard there's armin with the grab onto a lucia bait no gamble no less and armin gets cc'd double cc again they're just getting bounced man it's a nine to five they are working them um as they go in here and since burlis isn't sponsoring the tournament they thought it fit to literally make an announcement in the middle of this match armin taking a lot of damage right now on uh, and skeptic loves to shies he's actually down at a 2v3 right now as armin does his best to get a grab down but i don't think they have the damage to kind of get through this as it's goldsteinberg they sweep the leg goldsteinberg is a tough awakening warriors a tough class to play into this team composition he goes in for the grab and then just gets punished for it immediately there's armin getting punished as well getting knocked around and he is probably gonna die here Looks like he's not going to be. He's down at 10%. Alusha's really low, too. He feels like he has to stay in to try to get the bleed down, but now he has to retreat uh, to try to get out of there, and Alusha's just running him down, uh, pushing him backwards here. Uh, and it, no gamble. Just can't seem to make anything happen uh, on that hash as he slowed constantly. Uh, Armin did V there. Uh, comes out of V. Dives right back in with Malice. Doesn't find anything. No gamble, no loss. Goes down on the back side of the fight, and it looks like that Armin will go down as well. Oh my goodness, the battle back 1-1, one, one, Johnny. That's exactly what we want to see there is when you have the, the battle back, make it into the one uh, one to one. Whew. I mean, that's I think that's a bit more of what we are um, expecting. I'm hoping to continue to see um, the, the battle back and forth. I, I'd really love to see each round go back and forth until we have a final winner then for some sort of nail biter. Yeah, clean CCs right there. That's what turned the round around is you see the double CC just bouncing them constantly over and over and over again uh, so that they just can't get up and they couldn't support each other. And that was the CC that did them in in that previous round there. Armin looking for the Malice does actually find the stiffen on the Kairos uh, and then the grab on the Cosina, Cosini. It's Armin getting catches left, right, and center. Goes with the blade spin and the red rain in there. But Cosini just taking negative damage. I swear they healed him on that one. No gamble actually takes uh, a punishing trade on the backside, trying to put damage uh, onto Cosini. And we've seen that time and time again. Cosini dives in with double TP. Hellfire goes with the Cataclysm. Not going to find anything, though. Uh, runs in, and they seem to be ignoring him now, as they don't feel like he is in the win condition any longer. They're looking for Kairos on the Awakening Draconia, and they have found him over there. I'm not sure that they can get to him in time. Goldsteinberg is found out, though, and now it's him sitting on the casting couch. And he has to be. Um, we'll see if they can sniff him out of the V. Cosini using that lingering iframe on Frigid Fog on Awakening uh, Wizard uh, to kind of reset the fight a little bit there. Keep himself protected as he ran out of super armors uh, on the backside of that fight. Uh, Goldsteinberg able to reset here, but taking a good amount of chip damage. Armin on the ground, down at half health right now. Cosini uh, protected areas. They're all, they just can't be killed right now. They have to try to disengage. As Armin's down at 50%, I'm not sure he saw. The protected area is down at 30. He's on the ground, does get back to his feet. The uh, PA does wear off here. Uh, Aqua Jail does hit two targets. That is going to slow people. Armin on the ground again, gets caught by Hellfire. Now it's Cosini on the ground, though, trading back, though. No one wants to die. There's the Rabam heal keeping everyone healthy on the side of rule 11 right there the composition is so tanky it's so hard to get through um uh, goldstein doing a great job of keeping his awakening warrior healthy on the back side of this one get cosini gets grabbed armin goes in but he's really low on health he's got to watch his health bar here goes in for the blade spin ninja steps his way uh back out of that one goldstein on honestly cosini on the hunt finds armin again oh my goodness this awakening wizard just running armin down uh on this one and he puts his weapon away actually runs 
through the arena because he doesn't want to waste his uh or he had his teleport on cooldown there uh uses his tp forward now as well throwing out the dpd buffs he's on the low ground it's very difficult to do damage uh on the low ground for awakening wizard like this uh and again we're down at 48 seconds left on the clock no one has died yet uh this is getting very very tense go seating down at 40 percent everyone's locked at 50 percent health bars the valkyrie support is going to do less and less as we move in here no gamble no loss taking a poor trade there down at 20 percent has to back up armin rotating his way in now no gamble down at 10 percent cosini gets cc feels like he has to be but no gamble is in the corner as well this is not looking good armin finds the red rain cosini's in the corner hellfire catches three goldstein goes down armin doesn't know what to do absolutely crazy armin oh finds another cc on the cosini right there it is second grade mob ball soccer eight seconds left on the clock can they come up with a pick it is 3v2 armin's on his back four seconds three two one they aren't gonna find it rule 11 is gonna go up two one and it is going to time out johnny I, is that their first time out of the tournament yes or no, of, the, of today rather of today yeah not a, yeah a first unintentional timeout yeah I, I think that's uh <laughs> yeah i mean we had a few stalls but i think there's a little bit different with it like you're saying um again like the nail biter that we were wanting when you get down to the last literal second in a 2v3 situation because it's it's the case of even with it being a 2v3 it doesn't mean you are out of the fight it doesn't mean it's over and they're continuing to battle until the last second on both Hold sides. That that's exactly Cos what we want to see. Yeah, Cosini gets CC'd immediately. Armin came in from stealth, but uh, unable to make any damage happen. And that's what this Vantage team composition is so good for. Again, that umbilical cord is so strong. Alusha's actually on the ground, takes a lot of damage. But again, Cosini keeps him healthy. That umbilical cord trading nutrients back and forth between mother and daughter right there. Absolutely crazy. Alusha on the ground again. Uh, I'm pretty sure he can get himself back up. Yes, does get himself back up on his feet. It is standing and block. Uh, uh, is nice and healthy right now. There's Armin in stealth right here. Goes in, gets the grab down on Cosini once again, but I'm not sure they have the damage. Uh, there's the blade spin going down into the red rain. They have to get the debuffs down. Armin gets CC. No gamble, no losses on the ground. Family is on their backs. Armin's taking a lot of damage uh, on this one. Gets back up but like and tries to trade it back, but it has to disengage. It's down to 20%. Oh, got down to 10, 10%. Kairos on the hunt. Can he find Armin? That would certainly put the nail in the coffin. He is not supposed to be this low and lucia looking for the damage armin feels like he has to re-engage on this one and again all the players stacking on top of each other who's gonna give the inch first armin goes into stealth if he gets this is so vulnerable right here if he catches a, even a single stray he can die here um if he get oh my goodness there's the block jump forward catches the stun from cosini he says who found who and armin has to v on the back side of that that is why that man wrote the bible for awakening wizard he you just can't catch that man it's crazy alusha on his back right now that could be really bad for rule 11 as we're getting down to the one minute mark here elfars are gonna tap out and 50%. Armin's getting very low. Armin's gonna try to get out of there. He has no V. Does disengage. Kairos is the one that gives an inch. Goldstein running for his life. Armin running as well. They know that they have the upper hand. It is a 3v2, but they're very, very low. Skeptic loves shines. Not sure if they can actually pull this one out. 58 seconds left on the clock. Here comes the re-engage from Alusha and Cosini. They're not very mobile classes. I'm not sure they can actually lock down a single member of this team here. Uh, as they are grouped up in the middle of the arena, Goldstein knows he just has to buy his time he just has to not die no gamble has to not engage as well every time they engage they just everyone just chooses to disengage there's the ground slam right there um alusha jumps up in the air cosini standing his ground good patience by goldstein to land that grab cosini's gonna go down alusha's gonna die too this is going to five rounds johnny cue the silver scrapes <laughs> i mean Oh, Ooh, I, I think this is... Oh, wait, Alusha! Wait. Oh, my God! Oh. Armin barely gets the grab back right there. That was very scary. Goldsteinberg trades it back, but Skeptic... Oh, Skeptic loves shy <laughs> Almost brings it back right there. Let's see that in an instant replay. That was very, very scary. Yeah, uh, that that is a, that is a cl that is a clench moment, uh, but thankfully a little bit of a clutch from his teammates. They're keeping him alive. Woo! Uh, that that's that's a situation you got to look out for again it's never over until the bell rings you got to be careful with that you can't put yourself in a susceptible position to just lose um but 
Now, right, I mean, now, now it's the last one. If that Terra Sancta, it's one frame. One frame mm -hmm. was the distance. If the Terra Sancta goes off there, he blows away two people. Um, like, mm -hmm. and, and Alusha might actually come up with that win. That's how close this round is. It is all the way to the fifth round of this semifinals match. Loser is removed from the tournament. Winner goes on to fight again. Goldstein buying his time on the side of the match. He knows he might just be the kill target, so he's got to be careful. They're looking for Kairos on this one. If they can try to find that Awakening Draconia, it's Alusha that gets low, but again gets healed right back up. It's so hard to kill a single member of that composition. You have to try to isolate them, and Kairos knows he just has to stay with his team right here goldstein buying his time kairos Alusian, cosini in perfect position here armin looking at his enemies right here seeing if he can't go and he knows that uh awakening wizard has trouble getting back into awakening punishes it finds cosini on the grab gets punished himself kairos with the damage re cc armin has to be that's not good there's no gamble no loss trying to bail him out of trouble goldstein in fuller street scattering like roaches on this one but they found kairos kairos has to be now too both sides losing a v on this one goldsteinberg has to be as well both teams being left right and center and running out of options no gamble no loss firing from the high ground right now on this succession hash doing what he can to try to make something happen right here thank you so much for this best land anniversary announcement stop griefing me cm team thank you so much no gamble no loss moving right back in on this one it is still a three b3 gold Steinberg waiting patiently on the side of the arena here. Uh, Armin tries to go in and make something happen. Kairos on the Awakening Draconia doing a punishing amount of damage. Can he stay alive? He is the focus. Can he throw the damage down? There's Goldsteinberg on their arm, but Kairos on the ground too. No V. Can they get him? They do find Kairos. Oh no, but they find Armin as well. That's arguably a more important target. Oh my goodness. 2v2 and it's in the final round, Johnny. What is going on? Go see with his back to the wall uses mass tp to get away he's trying to regroup with alusha alusha trying to get on top of them uh trying to create some space so that cosini can get back on his feet here it's alusha and cosini such good synergy versus goldsteinberg and no gamble no loss this is by far the closest we have seen i would give it to the awakening wizard and the awakening valkyrie have the advantage here they're waiting on cooldowns 30 seconds on the clock it's going to come down to hp on this one all the way down to the wire there's the engage on goldstein who gets CC! Goldstein with the fumble on the five yard line! Horrible blunder! Down he goes! 1v2! It looks like rule 11 might just pull this one out! Tragic for Goldstein! He knew he was the target! Unable to keep himself safe! But oh my goodness, was this not the closest round of the tournament yet, Johnny? Oh, by far! I... I mean, through the entire time, I never knew who was going to win, even into the 2v2. <laughs> the Valkyrie and the Wizard have the clear advantage, but you just never know. If somebody gets one good CC or one good catch or whatever it might be, there's definitely enough damage in both comps to kill the other, just like we saw with Goldstein there. What? <laughs> what is your face right now? <laughs> what is what going mean? on? How is he even doing this? I don't understand. It's not, look, I don't look like that, okay? Look, I don't, I look, do like, I'm de I look like I'm deep throating a hot dog. Uh, like, how did you even find that? That's actually just crazy. Do you have like a green on, he has to have green on his face, right? Like what is going on right now? Um, absolutely insane. Let's take a look at the instant replay here uh, as we start to break down that last match right there. Um, it's Kairos. Do you think that this match ends right here because it's Kairos that gets caught? But Armin is arguably a better trade on the backside, as important as he is for his team. Both of them trade out on that one. And Cosini and Alusha just clutch it out for their team once again on that one. Just so, so crisp, Johnny. Absolutely very, very insane. <laughs> Absolutely obnoxious. And now, without further ado, our winner's bracket semifinal match. I think that people have been waiting. This is the number one and number two seed of the tournament. These two teams are the favorite to win it. This is their first time meeting each other in the semifinals here. This is going to be all the hype in the world. C team with Rain GTR, Bobo Body, and Didios. It is Cho Nation versus Black Rose. Tale as old as time, Johnny. <laughs> A tale as uh, old as time, but hopefully the result is not quite what people expect hopefully not an absolute um stomp 
from the side many may expect. I'm, I'm ready for another close match. I hope we get another one just like that rule 11 versus skeptic. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm, I'm hoping that this one goes all the way to five rounds like that. I want to sweat. I want the pit stains. I swear I want them. Um, this is going to be, honestly, these are some of the best players on some of the best classes that you can hope for uh, in a tournament like this. Rain GTR is the best Valkyrie in North America. Has proven it multiple times. Bobo Body, again, the best Awakening Warrior. And the only Awakening Warrior now left in the tournament now that Goldstein has been tragically knocked out. And Divios, who is the best player to have gifted his presence uh, in Black Desert Online. But they are up against... Uh, Rujinx's team in Sinister Synergy. Rujinx on the Succession Wusha, Precision on the Awakening Draconia, and Oni Chan on the Awakening Zerker. Honey, I feel like Cho always is favored in every matchup. Do you feel like Black Rose has it here? I think they're... Okay, so last time, if I remember correctly, um, from the Guild Tournament, we had a very similar composition from Black Rose, but I think it was details instead of Precision. Um, and I might be wrong in Rujinx as well, but I know Oni was in there. But it's the, the, the thing of, if they can keep Divios down, or at least not allow him to apply all the pressure that he's wanting to apply, they're going to have a much better time, and it's going to be it's going to be realistic that they can win this. With it being now into the semifinals, the match is going to go a lot longer. So if you have any sort of strategy that you have prepped out of the gate, you can't use it the whole time like you might have been able to prior. They're going to have more time to adapt. And if any Ooh. teams can adapt, it's going to be these final ones. Well, hold that up. thought. I actually skipped one round. I actually hyped this all oh, up we? and then realized, yeah, no. So yeah, the losers round six actually happens uh, before C team does. I apologize. We're actually going to see uh, rule 11 versus the goats um here first it's rule 11 out of the frying pan and in to the fryer i apologize guys i jumped ahead of myself but we will see that next i promise um we'll, we'll see that next i promise cosini alusha and kairos on rule 11 and they are going to be up against the goats this composition johnny just looks so strong they beat armin do you think that they have what it takes to beat Goticus's team as well I think they're going to play very well into God Kiss's team. I think this is this is a good death ball kind of composition, which counters a lot of the rats, in my opinion. I think them just sticking together, dumping their damage, applying support as they need, as long as there are good timings on that, they're going to be very, very hard to beat. You're going to have to get in. You're going to have to get a lucky snag with some sort of grab or CC that you might not expect, especially with Cosini and Alusha, though. They're both so tanky that if the other one is able to get heals, it's, it's kind of GG. The thing with it, though, of Alusha versus uh, Cosini of a Valkyrie versus Wizard is those Wizard utility skills are going to be uh, partially unprotected, depending on which ones, but the Valkyries are all protected. I would try to go for the Valkyrie if you got to pick one of the two. I think the Drac is the easiest kill, though. Uh, yeah, I think that Kairos has shown time and time again, that, like, although Lucian and Cosini can basically, because of the way their classes are structured, they can just stand on top of each other and keep healing and, and through any CC that comes their way. I think it is um, Kairos that uh, ends up with the short end of the stick, but in fairness, he's being, playing the best class in the game in basically every single format of the game because the developers have no idea what they're doing for balance. Um, on Goats' <laughs> team, uh, you have Godicus, Hoid, and Swinex uh, on this one. And I think that Godicus is going to be looking for Kairos uh, in this one. Succession Ninja, Awakening Draconia, Awakening Valkyrie. What do you think? I, I mean, this is another great team. I think in this one, Godicus, instead of being the strong point of the team, is actually going to be the weak point just simply because they're gonna. the other team's going to want to brawl. They're going to want to just be in a deathmatch situation, and I don't know if Godicus is going to be able to survive that. I think the, the Valkyrie and the Draconia are going to be all right. They kind of cancel out the other two. But I think the Awakening Wiz versus the Sock Ninja matchup is going to be a bit rough for Godicus. Yeah, no, I think as we move over to the versus screen here, um you make sure you get your bets in guys i apologize i hyped up that previous match but we'll see that next so honestly i'm just so excited about it um but it's rule 11 versus the goats make sure you get your bets in if you're a betting man here do you think that god is i think that rule 11 takes this again i really do i think that cosini and lucia uh take this but i think that if the goats is gonna take it they'll be on the back of god trying to catch kairos I I don't know. I I, I want to give it I want to give it to rule 11. Uh 
I, I think Godicus is going to have too hard of a time trying to get onto Kairos. Uh, we will see, certainly, here. Uh, as the audience thinks that is split as well, it is a, almost a perfect 50 50 split um, for both of these teams. Make sure you get your predictions in as the gates are about to go up and that prediction will end uh, on this one. Uh, Godicus has his work cut out for him as he does in every round here. The GOATS uh, family's surviving team of the tournament. They look so good. Family had to knock itself out twice in this tournament, but now backs to the wall against Ventus. And honestly, there's beef between Ventus and family. Those two guilds are constantly competing about which one is the stronger guild. And we're about to find out, um, who has the stronger uncapped 3v3 as this Ventus team did take third in the best in guild tournament of 2023. But this GOAT team is not to be understated. There's the Lava Field coming out. There's the Aqua Bomb uh, going out as well. Cosini throwing out um, the range that he can. Godicus closing the distance on this ninja right here. Can he get the grab? Oh my goodness, goes to the grab. And Alusha says, nope. Slippery as a seal, that Valkyrie is. As he just slides right away. Godicus has to disengage in both teams. Go back to looking at each other furiously. Um... Ooh, my goodness, Godicus just pretending to engage, looking for anything he can. Um, not gonna find the block jump engage there. Looks at Cosini, but they know that he's probably not the one they're looking for. They're probably looking for Kairos. Uh, and they looks like they do find Alusha on the grab, and he gets really low. Cosini taking a good amount of damage while Alusha is in V. Cosini is very, very vulnerable. Alusha all alone on the V, and it's Godicus that finds it. Sniffing, not... Uh, Sniffer of a Bloodhound, Godicus has. Absolute unit finding that V right there. Red Rain coming down. It is a 2v3. And the Rule 11 composition kind of falls apart when they lose a member here. Kairos going to go down as well. And Johnny the Goats looking really confident in round one. Very, very good performance from them in round one. Able to get the sniff on Alusha. Finishing off uh, the Draconia afterwards. Now it's just trying to kill, again, the brick wall that is Cosini. And it looks like I think they're just going to stall for it because... Did they use... Yeah, they did use some of their abilities there. So... Uh, I wonder... I wonder how Rule 11 is going to adapt to this. Uh, one of the big things I have to be careful of is Godicus's great skill set on his class and just as a person is going to be finding those Vs. You have to be careful with them. If you always go into the corner of the pavilion, you're going to be found. Yeah, no, I think that Alusha's V there really cost them dearly, and, and she just took a bad trade, and, Alusha, and um, Cosini didn't heal him, which was tradition, so, like, he felt like he had to V, and then he V'd away from Cosini, and he just couldn't come up with it there. Uh, 30 seconds left on the clock. It looks like they did. They are going to wait out uh, most of the cooldowns uh, on this one, so pretty much all of the class buffs that were used in that last round uh, are going to reset here. The GOAT's doing a great job managing their cooldowns uh, on this one. Uh, as they come around on this one, it is a 3v1. It does look like the GOATS is going to take round one. Loser is knocked out of the tournament here. So, Rule 11, honestly, with their back to the wall. As we look ahead to the next round, Gosini just getting CC'd there. There's the round ending. And Johnny, I think that, honestly, I think that Rule 11 looked good there. But, like, they, they just need to V to, like, a comfortable position. He, like, Alusha seemed to V where he thought was safe, but it really wasn't safe at all. I think it's going to be one of the situations with these matches being bigger. You have to have an, you have to have three wins instead of just the two. You're going to see a lot more adaptation out of teams, especially as the, the ones that are remaining are going to be especially experienced and skilled. Um, I think that Rule 11 is going to be able to adapt to the situation that they had, uh, even outside of just the Vs. But I guess we'll find out in this next round. Yeah, there's Alusha coming out very menacingly on that Valkyrie. Definitely one of the best Valkyries to play the game. Um, Standing tall for Ventus here. And Cosini, again, the best Awakening Wizard on the server without much contest. Uh, Kairos on the Awakening Draconio. You can see how defensively he is positioned. They are nervous uh, about the Godicus engaged. They're throwing out that Lava Field. Uh, they're worried about the Stealth engaged. They're wondering where this man actually is. So they're constantly throwing out skills and trying to keep themselves as safe as possible. Cosini climbs to the high ground there. Uh, doesn't actually get caught out or punished for it, though. Uh, as Alusha comes in on it, it does look like Alusha is the kill target for the GOATs here as they found him twice in the last round here. Uh, neither team really wanting to engage quite yet. Kairos and Alusha staying together. Cosini kind of off on his own uh, over there, but Alusha definitely within spinning distance here as, bo as both teams again regroup on this side of the arena. Just squaring off at the two-minute mark. 80% on the health bars. You think that Rule 11 
they're such a passive team but i think that if health bars go down to 50 percent, i think their team composition kind of falls apart because all of that support it doesn't just it just doesn't matter you can just get blown up uh at that point so the lower health pool you have the less the support really matters i'm not sure that rule 11 can play it like this and good on the goats for trying to force um this passive play style into a position where they feel like they have to engage and they run in they do engage they find Godicus, who's on the ground against right now down at 20 percent health expertly holds on to his v though uh as he does back up there but vent is getting the upper hand of that engage Rule 11 doing a good job of turning a passive comp into a passive aggressive composition, just like my aunt. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, as they regroup on this side, Cosini kind of off on his own, putting his back to the wall. Oh my goodness, Kairos taking a lot of damage, tries to get himself healed back up. And again, health bars are about to go down to 50% on this one. Uh, at the one minute mark, Alusha down at 20% health. Uh, and they are trading back and forth. So now we see the goats getting much more aggressive. Got a kiss with a good grab right there. On a Kairos, who's going to go down, it looks like, running for his life. Uh, Lucian Cosini trying to get to him to heal him. Uh, but Kairos does get out because he used a skill. Uh, and Swinex oh, goes down. Oh, no! Swinex goes down for the goats. That was... Honestly, not who you're expecting to go down for the Goats' composition, but Rule 11 threading the needle and finding the enemy Valkyrie right there. Kairos going in. All they have to do is play really safely for about the next 28 seconds. It is a 3v2, and Rule 11 is up right now, but health bars are capped. Godicus has a lot of damage. So does Awakening Draconia on the other side. They're just throwing out their DP debuffs. They know they have to come to them. There's the engage coming in. Godicus hard engaging on it. Not going to find anything, but Kairos gets down to 10%. Uses the skill, gets all of his health back, super balanced. Moves right back in. Alusha keeping himself healthy as well. Cosini looks like an unkillable monster, and they are going to win the second round right there. Johnny, what is going on? 1-1. One, one. I don't think anyone was expecting Swid to die inside of the pavilion. He ended up getting Cosini out of the V, trying to deal the damage that he needed to kill him, and it ended up being um, the other Valkyrie who just kind of came to the clutch with Alusha jumping in. Um wow like I, I wasn't expecting him to be able to just follow up and kill him like that but that was huge and it's i would say probably the biggest thing that won in the round that's a blunder but i don't think that's something that's you can keep doing every round yeah oh here's Godicus. this is why i'm trying to spectate him at least at the start of the round is he's gonna look for this stealth engage remember he's completely unprotected right now if they catch him with any of those skills they're gonna say oh my goodness there's the engage he gets the engage onto Alusha. that's exactly what they're trying to find he's on his back Cosini did not uh heal him so it looks like he had to be a clean engage out of Godicus. Godicus. Cosini's all alone. They find Alusha out of V right there. Can they get him healthy? They do, and they turn it back around. Godicus now taking the damage on that one. Cosini swoops in and saves Alusha right there. A much better V than we saw in round one from Alusha on that one. And both teams disengage with just Alusha's V being blown there, Johnny. <laughs> him coming out of V and not getting CC'd, I didn't quite uh, catch it all. I wasn't sure if it was a misplay or if it was a resist because that's one of the big things with no shies in the tournament is some people might not be capped on resistances. So if he just simply resisted, RNG is on his side tonight. Yeah, absolutely. As both teams squaring off against each other, Swidex, uh, absolutely no clothes on below the waist, it looks like. So, honestly, helps his Valkyrie just move a little bit faster than the enemy Valks here. Uh, as he comes in, honestly, you see how passively he plays on the side here. He's trying to keep his team healthy. Alusha's the one on the ground. No V there. No, Swidex is on the ground. Red Rain comes down. That's a DPD buff. No one dies. No one wants to give an inch. But, oh my goodness, everyone gets low. Swidex comes out of V, uh, and Godicus is there to protect him. But it does look like that Kairos... Oh, wait, no. Wait, who did we lose? Wait. Uh we lost Hoyd. Hoyd went Hoyd. down. Rule 11 bringing it back. Vent is saying we are stronger than family. Swidex is going to go down as well. Don Skeptic in absolute shambles right now as Ventus is taking yet another round off of his team here. Alusha doing a great job on this Valkyrie, getting caught at the beginning, but then bringing it back the rest of the round here. We're about to tick down to 50% health bars um, with Godicus. The only one left alive. We'll see if he can 1v3. Wouldn't that just be the highlight of everything? He'd need a triple CC to really make this happen here. And they are stacked on top of each other. Uh, so if... 
if he was gonna make it happen this this might be it if he finds this cc he is an absolute legend finds one cc there's the support there lucia tries for the heal doesn't find the other two though it's got a kiss on the ground now and it looks like he is gonna go down down he goes uh on that one there oh my goodness johnny this is so close very very close this is um for a best of five this is what we like to see first round to go second round to rule third round to rule next round be best give us the goats let the goats come out and shine for another one and then we get the last round to decide who is out of or uh, yeah to decide who's out of the tournament or not yeah and the gates are up and away we go oh my goodness uh, we are so excited oh that's a media it's charged media right there he's just charging that one up uh at the start of this one here as we warm up, Cosini, again, this is all unprotected range. Awakening Wizard really has to be vulnerable when throwing range like that. There's the Aqua Jail coming down again, trying to keep themselves uh, safe here. Godicus uh, moving back around, and Cosini sees it. He's not going to let him uh, get around on it. Throws out Cataclysm. Uh, moves in with the Mana Shield. Uh, Alusha, very, very healthy on that one. There's the Cataclysm again. That's an Evasion debuff, and Hoyd takes a bad trade on it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Hoyd is just really low on health. Cannot take that trade uh, as he goes in. That Cataclysm just does so, so much work. They have Hoyd pinned in the corner. Can they peel him out? Godicus doing what he can from the outside. Alusha trying to burst point down they do manage to get him out of the corner and Cosini is unable to find uh the debuffs to make that pick work hoyd lives to see yet another day on this one as both teams oh my goodness an aggressive double ttp you don't see that very often uh from Cosini playing like a top as it were swidex getting very low on health and Cosini gets Lots grabbed on the back on the side of it though yeah Cosini's on the ground taking a good amount of damage but stands right back up heals himself and goes right back in hoyd's on the ground taking good damage but it's Swidex is right there, supporting him. Who will give an inch? Godicus has to back up. Swidex has used every one of his heals. There's nothing left for Hoyd. He's going to go down right there. And that might just be the deciding factor for the GOATs right there. Godicus, I'm um, wondering what he can do in a 1v3 in this one. As he chooses to try to engage this, this might just be the end of the tournament run for family. And not short enough it was. Absolutely tragic. A great match from both teams right there 3-1 though i mean very good performance by both going to what you kind of expected with the 3-1 result um at, at first i was sweating a little bit you know i had that 3-0 prediction in there i was thinking Whew, i'm about to be proven wrong still obviously not the 3-0 but 3-1 a lot closer than where i thought that was going to go from that first round goats showing that they are very good players they're very capable but rule 11 showing they are just better pushing family out of the fight vent is trying to prove themselves in these kind of tournaments and i love yeah, to see let's, it let's see the game winning pick right there um they honestly they wore swidex down you can see how much healing he actually does get off on his teammates here swidex doing everything he can to try to keep his team alive here he gets them back to their feet twice but very tragically hoyd unable to get the disengage down they pin him against the side of the wall here and it is hoy that runs out of juice and it costs them everything on that one and then basically the dominoes fell uh where they would but absolutely incredible run for the goats through this tournament godicus's team did an amazing job family absolutely coming out and showing why that guild is so strong yeah i, I mean it's a um, it's the thing with events is going to be one of those classes on the come up in both wars and um, uh, tournaments. So it's good to see that they're having that impact. They're having the players in there, family being around as well, still proving themselves to be a very capable guild, having a lot of players come into the tournament and do absolutely fantastic. This is a thing, though, of when you have a tournament of this scale um, or of, with these kind of players, even in the top like 10 teams, these are gonna be good players. They're gonna be geared, they're gonna be known, they're gonna know what they're doing. But it's just when you get to that 1% and eventually at the very end, that 1% of the 1% is when you really see what a video player can um, get to in terms right. of how good they can be. Yeah, and now the match that I hyped up before, now for real this time, guys, it is Show Nation versus Black Rose in the winner's semi-final match here. Let's see 
what they've got. Let's take a look at C Team. Raiden GTR, Bobo Buddy, and DDoS. They need no introduction here. Uh, neither does the enemy team either. But, like, honestly, Johnny, let's just talk for a moment about what Black Rose's path to victory here is against this team composition. Where are the weak points here? The weak point that we've seen previously is Bobo Buddy. He is the number one warrior in NA, I would argue. But it's the thing of he's still playing warrior it's one of those classes that used to be extraordinary in the small scale it's still a decent class but it's just been kind of power crept with a lot of the classes that are in the tournament you have awakening valkyrie um you have strikers you have um draconius like with all these classes that are uh, wooses when all these classes are in tow you're gonna have a really really hard time especially when he's fighting something like the Wusa or the Awakening Zerker in, the, in this matchup, he's going to have a hard time. He can't do a lot of his uh, damage abilities. He's not going to be able to move. He's going to get caught from the clouds. He's going to get caught from the, the range skills from the Zerker. It's going to be something that he's going to be careful of. If he gets too pressured or sits in the corner, like I talked about earlier, there's a possibility of what he can do. That Zerker has three grabs that he can punish him with. It's going yeah. to be a tough situation for Bobo. I think it heavily rests on his shoulders. Yeah, I think so too. We've seen that. That's a theme among Awakening Warriors. They are the linchpins for their team, just like Goldstein was um, for Armin's team composition for Skeptic Love Shies earlier in the tournament. Uh, and this is Sinister Synergy, uh, the succession Wusa of Rujinx, which is... Oh man, he's one of the best succession Wusas I have ever seen across any server. Uh, Precision on the Awakening Draconia and Onichan on the Awakening Zerker. And where do you feel like the weakness is here? Because... Honestly, I feel like it's the Zerker. Um, I feel like the Zerker definitely can be the weak part of it. The one thing, though, is that if Oni really wants to, he can stay at range and just throw whatever he needs in and only come in an opportune time. I think he's going to have a fairly um, like easygoing chance of just staying out of the fight and not being pounced on. We might see something different when Divios has his class buff up, um, but it's the thing of Zerker is very very scary in the small scale especially in 1v1 scenarios when you have a good player like oni on yeah absolutely um i think that both these teams are going to be absolutely crazy this is one of the matches and i say this about every match now but this is one of the ones that people have been waiting for since the bracket came out um three weeks ago sinister synergy versus c team black rose versus show nation who do you think wins this one is it david or goliath do you feel like goliath wins this or are you screaming for the rose uh on repeat here we have seen both of uh cho and br take wins in major tournaments um uh, the last one for black rose was actually back in san diego where they went all the way to defeat eu uh in in the san diego tournament uh in the international tournament that cacao had uh, along time ago here but show nation has just been farming w since then um who do you uh, okay give me quick predictions johnny three one c team three one c team i think sinister synergy loses uh, i don't know man sinister synergy three two i'm gonna go the other way on it we believe but oh my gosh, I love Divios. I'm such a big fan, girl. Oh my goodness, he goes right in. That is not a good look for Precision. CC immediately. Look at the collapse coming down from Cho right there. Precision holding on to his V, though. Stands right back up. Um, gets all of his health back on Awakening Draconia and recovers the situation nicely. So nothing really lost there. Onichan's on his back now, too. This is not looking good for Black Rose. I would like to take it back. Cho Nation looking so dominant into the first round of this one. Onichan forced to V and Divios on the sniff. Not able to find it, but they did find him on the other side. And it's Oni Chan going back down. Like I said, sweep the leg on the Awakening Berserker right there. Oh my goodness. Divios looking so dominant in this tournament. Uh, as Precision doing his best on that Awakening Draconia, but he might be doing a little bit better uh, if he puts some clothes on, uh, as it were, as that Shell Bell outfit is extremely distracting uh, for a lot of viewers at home here. Divios actually gets CC'd on the ground, taking a good amount of damage. Uh, there's the re-CC, very clean right there. Ooh, Segunja Plum almost killing him uh, down at 20% there, uh, not able to receive healing from Raiden on the low ground right there. Oh, finding... Uh, finding yet again. another CC, yeah, onto Precision right there. He's scrambling back to his feet. It is still a 2v3. And Black Rose showing a little bit more life now. 
uh, as the fight kind of evens back out. Divios is on the ground. A good grab from Precision right there. Uh, I'm not sure if that they can actually finish the job uh, as Divios is down at half health, but they just can't kill him uh, as they don't have the damage. Down goes Rujinx, uh, and it is just Precision left alive in this one in the first round of this match, and it certainly looks dominant for Cho. Uh, Johnny. I, I mean, I agree at the start, but I don't think this is necessarily... Uh, just like a sheer class or player skill thing. It just looks like that synergy came out with a bit of a blunder. Oni diving so deep in the center of the brawl, getting killed fairly uh, quickly afterwards because he had a V. Um, Precision getting CC'd right off the rip. Those are, those are mistakes that you shouldn't be seeing now that we're in the, the semifinals here. It's one of those things that I hope they qu um, quickly correct. That way we can see the real performance of what these players are actually capable of. Precision actually doing a pretty admirable job in this 1v3. Um, I'm trying to CC people. They are playing with their food a little bit here, waiting for uh, cooldowns uh, a bit here. Uh, and Precision doing a, a decent job. Look, does look like he is going to go down on the backside of that one. Black Rose definitely not looking the best in that first round right there. But... I think that they just need to, they need to focus. They need to lock in, as Digital likes to say. Um, I think that Oni-Chan getting caught after Precision getting caught, uh, it's just a little rough uh, on this one. And again, uh, the distraction method not going to work from Cho, uh, uh, for Cho on this one, as I'm fairly certain that they're all playing on the lowest possible graphic setting, uh, sweating out of their mind uh, on this one. We got the potato uh, mode setting on. And a boy, yeah, gates up and away we go on this one. No CCs right out of the gate. Precision staying on his feet this time. Uh, immediately a better start. Uh, Rujinx, uh biding his time, hasn't even casted a skill yet, allowing Oni Chan to fire away. Uh, they know that they have the damage to kill Divius. They got him pretty low in that previous round, even in a 2v3. So they definitely have the damage to, to make this happen. And it's not a gear diff. It is just strictly down uh, to skill level here. Divios is on the ground. Uh, does uh, manage to roll back to his feet there. He's clearly not the target that they are looking for here. Bobo Buddy um, staying protected on that warrior. We haven't talked too much about him, but it's second grade mob ball soccer. Everybody dies on each other, and it's Precision that loses out on the trade right there. But that's okay. He's an Awakening Draconi. He should be able to get his health back in short order. Divios is on the ground. Look at the damage from Rujinx right there, and he is taking so much damage. He's going to go down. Bobo died. Divios is in full retreat. Butterfly step forward on the hunt is Black Rose in round two of this one. It looks like they might just take this back. C team not looking so good. Divios doing what he can to iframe and get himself out of trouble here. Butterfly step forward looking for the pick right there. Segunja Plum is going to finish the next victim off and Divios is the last one left alive for C team here. Down he goes. Holy moly, we got a game on our hands, Johnny. I think this is a lot more of what I was expecting there out of the synergy go, team than the first round. There we go. Yes, yes, sir. That's a, that's what we want to see. We wanted these. We want to see these players play at the top level against each other. Be consistent. Be good and put on a show. Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely put on a show right there. Uh, that is the Shell Bell outfit for Wusa. For those asking, every class, every female class has that available uh, Man of Culture outfit for sure, but make sure you look respectfully only as the gates go up here. Uh, and Raiden, Divios, and Bobo come out uh, of the gates. I don't think they're used to taking that much damage that quickly, uh, even against Black Rose. Uh, honestly, definitely surprised them a little bit there as Raiden plays the side of the fight. You see how passive he is on this Valkyrie. Looking for a pick. Double CC on the Divios and Bobo, they're both on the ground. He can't save them both. Rujinx gets a double. Oh my goodness. Rujinx is going huge. They found Divios out of V. Raiden doing what he can to try to heal him back, but he can't keep him alive. Even gods bleed. Down he goes. Black Rose looking so strong in round three here. Oh my goodness. Battling it back. Bobo goes down too. Raiden looking around like the monkey in the meme going, where is my team? Oh my my goodness, and Woosa comes in and cleans it up. Johnny, what's happening? Oh, the, I, <laughs> this is not <laughs> what I think a lot of people were expecting. This is an absolute performance these players are putting on. They're showing, like you said, that gods can bleed, and I don't think that they're gonna stop there. 
I don't think they're gonna do um, what happened at Thermopylae in the good movie 300 where he threw the spear to make it show to show that Xerxes could bleed. I think he's going for the kill. I think they're trying to kick them out of the tournament or at least put them in the loser's this bracket. This is it right they here. They want to take the W. Yeah, Show Nation, the favorite team to win this tournament is one round away even from being sent to the loser's bracket by their rival guild in North America. And the boys are excited. I know that Black Rose is all eyes on the boys. Good grab by Precision right there bobo's on the ground it's on the target too precision now turns back around he's on the ground now oni chan gets a grab as well and it's second grade mob ball soccer one more time but bobo's gonna give an inch he gets back attacked by the draconia he's gonna go down Cho nation in absolute shambles raiden trying to hide under the pavilion but there is nowhere to run against the rose oh my goodness divio's on the run as well he's gonna get run down the black rose boy are going to win this. He gets stuck below the arena, but I'm not sure it matters a whole lot, Johnny. That's going to be the end of it. Down they go. That is 3-1 Sinister Synergy. I just want to say I called it from the start. <laughs> I, I I think this was a situation of they they came out in that first round they came out a little bit rusty a little bit sloppy but they they quick uh, quickly changed their form they put on the tempo they put on the gas they floored it all the way through just absolutely blasting blasting every single round afterwards I don't think that was what anyone was expecting right and getting stuck in the floor. Um, at the very end, which is unfortunate, but I think even if he didn't get stuck on the floor there, he would have died because he had people trying to combo him and kill him within that pavilion. And because this is a small indie company, there was a little bit of a mishap and he got stuck in the floor. Yeah, I mean, like, he, his teammate had already died at that point, and they were running them down. I, I really don't think that you can use that as too much of an excuse uh, on the back side of that one. It's just absolutely insane same performance out of the black rose boys coming in here to come out and beat the favorites to win the tournament uh even with that and they don't have a valkyrie johnny very notably they don't have a valkyrie. people are saying valkyries have been broken all day you see sinister synergy they said no valk no problem nope i i think this is part of um what they're doing though is to deal with that is they still have the composition for it you have the zerker who can deal with a lot of accuracy the woosa does so much damage in some cases it doesn't even matter and then finally with the draconia dealing a good amount of damage a lot of sustain even if they can't one combo the evasion they can still dump a ton of damage that hopefully the follow-up damage from their allies allows them to secure the kills yeah absolutely insane result there and i'm sure that rule 11 is now looking around like wait why is divios spawning in what's, mm -hmm. what's going on with it you're not supposed to be here um <laughs> why, why are you here um because now rule 11 has their work cut out for them as sinister synergy sends them to the losers bracket sinister synergy awaits in the winner's bracket for the finals this is the third place match for the blue squadron open the winner, the loser of this match is guaranteed third place, which admittedly is only $90 because it's a very front-loaded tournament. Second place, the winner of this match is guaranteed $400. The winner of the first place match is a $1,710 winnings. Ooh. Sinister Synergy is waiting in the finals for the team they're going to have to fight. And I got to say, Johnny, it's probably going to be C team again, right? To, to see them again later on i i i want to say c team is probably the team that we will see later but as sinner uh, sinister synergy has shown that they can bleed they can be taken down and it might even inspire some confidence in some of the teams that they fight later to show what they can do and to try to take on this the c team instead of going in a bit of a doomer mode or hopeless yeah um I think that Rule 11 is definitely the underdog here. We talked about how strong their composition was before, but boy, they're up against some bangers this time. They did, I believe, lose to this team in the Best in Guild tournament as well. Um, so, But they definitely are the underdogs here. Ventus um, going to do their best. This is the third place battle for third player, or battle for second place, uh, rather. Uh, loser gets third place. Winner gets second place at least at a minimum goes on to fight in the finals here uh as we move toward the versus screen johnny i know you're probably predicting c team but uh, do you think that rule 11 can win this 
I think rule 11 is going to have a really, really tough time into this. I think there's there's too much protected damage um, from C team here. I think the, I mean, the composition isn't too different, to be honest. It's about the, the thing of the Awakening Warrior versus the Awakening Wizard. Yeah. Um, and it looks like the BSR is being reset, so make sure you get your bets in. This is probably pretty heavily favored, but the last one was probably also heavily favored as well, and we saw what happened there. The gates are down, and we are ready to start playing for the money, Johnny. Here we go. Third and second place will be decided in this match or at least third place will be decided gates up and away we go it is c team coming out very convincingly they think that i'm sure that they're already considering their next match is rule 11 uh is looking uh like a bit of a snack right now bobo's actually on the ground taking a good amount of damage they may have thought too soon but no raiden gets him healed back up kairos he's on the ground taking a good amount of damage but he gets healed back up as well he is an awakening draconia both teams trading really well i'm not sure cho was necessarily ready for that uh as kairos gets back to full health divios is literally just holding w and running through everybody like a titan uh, look at this man his knuckles he, in fairness he's running on all fours that's crazy uh that's how striker works divios teleporting forward looking to see if he can't find a cc is gonna find it gonna force a v right there and it's cosini trying to trade any amount of damage back as they sniff uh the v out on this one alusha trying to heal kairos back to full health as he rejoins the fight but they just can't get the damage down you see didios getting right in behind him sneaks that back attack damage in there to kill kairos and now it's just a 2v3 rule 11 um tragically just getting kairos just can't find a safe spot to stand against this show nation's team comp johnny i it's really really difficult here i'm even seeing some cc's on um bubble buddy that i was expecting to kill him but raiden coming in with the the heals and protections to keep him alive especially if he's going to be more of a tanky build on the class he's going to be able to survive a lot of those exchanges i don't know a rule 11 should have the damage to kill him though i would say with the draconia and the wizard and of course the Valkyrie, that should be plenty of damage to kill somebody on the ground. That's the, the warrior on the ground rather. Yeah, that's the leg drop right there. Down goes Alusha. Now it's just Cosini left alive as is tradition. Actually finds a couple CCs there. Pretty uh, pretty cheeky uh, for the Awakening Wizard there, but they're gonna make short work of him and they are going to go down in the first round there. C team winning out. Johnny, what, what do you think they gotta do to try to battle this back, man? I think they're just going to have to be able to keep the consistent damage on top of Bobo Buddy. There's a lot of things that can CC Bobo. He got uh, CC'd outside of his grab after grabbing Cosini. He was put on the ground. He got down to, I think, about 50% and Raiden just said, nope, you're back at 100. It's one of those things that if they would have been able to deal their damage sooner or quicker, they would have been able to kill him because there was a good gap of time before he got that heal. That's something they need to do is just be consistent on the damage and understand when they have the CCs. Right, yeah, we have Divios dashing across the arena. Kairos, clearly the kill target for C team here. Um, and he knows that he's trying to uh, posture very defensively. He's not trying to let him get behind him. But we saw in that instant replay there, we saw Divios expertly just sneaking in behind Kairos to get that back attack damage. Kairos does get caught, uh, is on the ground, catches no heals from either of his allies, and has to V on this one. Very risky V as they spread out looking for him. They are not going to find him. He is going to recover uh, on this one. Uh, as Kairos is, does breathe a little bit of life into this Ventus team composition. Down at 20%, and they are just running him down it's so difficult to try to pretend like you have an umbilical cord attached there's, this rule 11 team is supposed to stay next to each other kairos just doesn't feel safe anywhere and there's divios just running at him holding w gets the grab leg drop goes down and they find their man there it looks like oh illusion with a clean grab back on a divios right there putting a decent amount of damage down but raiden just not allowing anyone to die uh, on this one and they're bouncing raiden now on the ground too raiden's down at 20 percent illusion's the one that has the v though uh, on this one they are not going to sniff it. Cosini standing by himself. Bobo looking for the sniff. Not going to find it. They are going to get Cosini in the 1v3 that when they separate Alusha and Cosini, that is how you beat this composition here. And they are going to run him down uh, in round two of this one, Johnny. I mean, that's that's the 2-0 of what we were expecting out of C-Team. I think it's really, really rough for Rule 11 here. It's again, they have to secure the kill on Bubble Buddy. There's been a lot of times where he's on the ground. He's the main target. You got to focus him. You got to get it done. I understand it's going to be difficult with all three classes on the enemy team having to grab, one of them having two. But 
you got to do what you can do. You have to understand your target and you have to put that as priority. Yeah, and the gates are up and away we go. Bobo, we thought was the uh, the weaker link of the show team here on the Awakening Warrior. And he has been performing super, super well uh, in this match here as they dive across the arena looking for the first CC of the match. But Divios is the one that takes a bad uh, trade, but they find Kairos on the backside. Bobo with an excellent grab and it's Lucian. Kairos, they're all just laying on the ground first time uh, as they're in the corner together, all CC'd on top of each other. Bobo's running for his life. Lucia tries to give chase, not able to find him though as the fight resets a little bit uh no one even uh, uh has the guts to be oh kairos gets too aggressive immediately punished for that c team says you can't do that has to be divios is on the ground bobo slamming yet another one to the ground trying to find this v uh on kairos and not actually gonna get it here ground slam not gonna find it but divios finds the grab that is almost certainly the end of kairos's life no he's down at five percent health running for his life right now using those iframes takes dragon flight gets him to safety and the ventus team is scrambling but is still alive Cosidi, very low on health himself the show nation team bearing down on top of them mass tps his team to safety this Cosidi absolutely sick on the mass team to get everyone to safety, but it only buys him a little bit of time as he dies. Bobo actually forced to be on that one, and it looks like, oh my god, they killed Divios. It's 2v2. C team suddenly on the back foot, and their god is dead right now. Bobo and Raiden, the only ones left alive. The two shield classes, Cosini and Alusha, battling for everything they've got in the arena here. Bobo with an excellent grab. There's the jump in from Raiden. Alusha's gonna not die. He's gonna get back to his feet. Cosini gets the heal off, and they return fire it's a full weapon spree Cosini is not gonna let Alusha go down on this one Bobo just can't get he gets the grab off but he just can't make the finishing move here there's Alusha diving right in on this one who's gonna land the first grab it will be Bobo again look at that warrior go Cosini on the ground taking so much damage down he's gonna go no he's at one percent gets away can he survive puts Bobo on his back 50 seconds on the clock but everyone is still alive Cosini double TP's away he will get healthy Alusha desperately trying to disengage so that he can get with Cosini again they heal each other back up and the fight resets again we are capped at 50 percent hp right now it is a 2v2 cosini alusha barrel across the arena looking for raiden not gonna find him can bobo find one more grab he does onto alusha that might be the end of it slashing of the dead alusha gets back to his feet cosini will not let him die 20 seconds left you will live my son bobo just says just die it's like terminator 3 they won't go down they finally do alusha will die he will go down as well and c team will take it but in a much closer match than we thought oh my goodness <laughs> that last one that last round there i think truly showed uh, the uh, the disgusting nature of the awakening caster with the awakening valkyrie cosini and alusha just together over and over one of them gets down one of them gets slow no heal one of them is like gonna get jumped on one of them gets grabbed pa just over and over keeping each other alive that's what i talked about earlier you can't chip that team down you have to just blast them from 100 to 0 80 to 0 50 to 0 depending on where the uh timer is at and where the hp is capped at i almost think that if it didn't cap down to 50 percent, that it would not have ended i think it would have gone down to time uh there, there's no way that the the C team was able to get the damage off that they needed when the other one was supporting as well as they were. An absolute fantastic, fantastic performance from C team. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Rule 11 will take third place in this tournament. Uh, $90 prize pool for them. Uh, C team will move on to the finals where we will have what is Johnny the highest stakes Black Desert Online match that has ever taken place in the history of the game. There is more money on the line in this match here than has ever happened and it is a best of seven. But before that, I do wanna give a big shout out to our sponsors, Invicta Gaming is sponsoring this tournament, guys. Pearl Abyss is not. Invicta does PC optimizations. If you wanna play like the pros you see in this tournament, you wanna get the most out of your PC performance. Even if you have a bad PC, it will make the most out of your PC. Even if you have a great PC, 
you're getting the most bang for your buck, right? So they do PC optimization no matter what game you play. They also do custom PC builds, not pre-builds, custom PC builds. If you don't believe me, ask Choice. It's absolutely sick. Um, the amount of stuff that they can do with your computers. They have free consultations across the board. So even if you've never built a PC before in your life and you're looking for where to start, you should start with Invicta. They support the Black Desert community more than any other company does. They support this tournament. They support me and they support every content creator almost in this category absolutely recommend them every chance you can um okay johnny it is time for the highest stakes match in black desert history sinister synergy versus c team black rose versus cho nation except that it's sinister synergy that can they can drop the first so, so to be clear this is a best of seven if cho nation if c team wins the first best of seven because it's a double elimination tournament, they have to win another best of seven. C team has to beat them in a best of seven two times to take first place in this tournament. Sinister Synergy only needs to win four matches in a or four rounds in a single match to take this home. Johnny, who do you think takes this? I'll look over the teams real quick. I, <laughs> I think for the long time that a lot of people had the C team as the um the the clear winner here or as the favorite. But after that last match versus C team in uh, Sinister Synergy, whoo, I, I think my bets have 180 from where they were before. I think this is going to be a three, no, sorry, a four, two, uh, Sinner, uh, Sinister Synergy taking the, the W. You think so? You think they're not even? You think CT's not even gonna take one? Honestly, I was the only one that believed before. Everyone was like, "This is Cap. He's just blowing smoke." And then they took it. Um, Sinister Synergy coming out in that first match like that, and Divio certainly a Titan, but so is Rujinx, Precision, and Oni. Precision got CC'd right at the first. The first round did not look good for BR. I'll be honest, Johnny. If they no. dropped the ball like that, it did not look good for them. But they brought it back in the following two rounds there and knocked show right down in the tournament but honestly in a best of seven format like this you are 100 percent convincingly going to figure out who are who is the better team here and again there is a lot of pressure on these players soldiers or on these players um shoulders as it were as again this is the highest stakes match that has been ever been played uh in a black desert online tournament like this um 1700 dollars um on the line for the winners of this match and show nation is fighting the uphill battle here um Okay, Johnny, before we go into it, give me, so you said four, what, four, two? And you, four think, two. That, you think that Cho just loses in the first round? I I think it's gonna be the first match. I, I, I think it's really, really rough to just see that. I mean, obviously the first match was really rough for the Black Rose team, but just the sheer dominance they had in the following rounds, unless Cho, the Cho Nation team, the C team, has some sort of great counter to, to whatever happened that, that blew them away um i i think we're gonna see somewhat of a repeat and maybe synergy comes out not as hot as they were before but i have a feeling that c team after winning that last match is coming back for a little bit of a vengeance here wanting to prove that they're still number one that they are the ones who are going to win the tournament and so i think it's going to be two giants battling out and i am so so excited i would like to see 14 matches i would like to see 14 rounds I would like to see C team win the first best of seven. And then I'd like to see, I'm a, I'm a sucker for the underdog, but I absolutely uh -huh. love Divios. So like, I really would like to see it. Like Show Nation has won every major tournament in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Let's see Sinister Synergy take this one home. You know I, what I mean? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for the underdog. Coming down to the last match on the last round would be the so sick. biggest. The, yeah. So like, sick. We have the prize pool. We have an absolute monstrous lineup of players we've seen throughout this entire tournament. Shout out to all of them. Even if they didn't necessarily get any of the prize pools at the end, a lot of people really were able to perform and show what they were capable of as a player or as a group. And I think that's really impressive on itself. But now that we're getting to the final bit, the nail biting situation of who's going to walk home with that large prize pool, that large you know bag of money, um, this is where 
this is where the cookie crumbles and this is where we find out and it looks like the the chat is hyped for the underdog as yeah. well for the rose getting yeah spammed for over those of you wondering over. why for the rose is being spammed that is black rose's slogan uh as it were is they have farmed l's to Joe nation for years but can black rose battle it back divios has won every major pearl abyss sponsored tournament since they took over but fortunately for black rose they are not sponsoring this one sinister synergy versus c team gets your bets in boys this is for all the marbles on this one here as the gates go down and the bsr starts to reset Oh my goodness. Yeah, I just want to see it. I, I just want to see an amazing match between these two teams. I would love to see C Team take the first uh, match here. And honestly, it would be so cool to see C Team come back and win the second Blue Squadron Open in a row. I did get a chance to meet Bobo Buddy in person at the Oasis event recently. Uh, and again, he won the Blue Squadron Open with Raiden uh, in 2022. Uh, and again, I didn't have one in 2023 because they told me the Spectator OS feature was going to come out and then it never did. Uh, but moving past that this is the next one and here they are in the finals once again for this one the gates are down boys the match is set this is the highest stakes that players have ever played at let's see what we got boys raiden rearing to go here divios getting ready gates go up and the match begins on this one. Oh, they popped the uh they popped what's the what's the support belt? I forget the name of that belt. Tyback. Oh, that they popped a Tyback belt at the start of the round. Black Rose immediately on the back foot because of that. Interesting that Raiden would drop the Tyback belt right there. I'm glad we caught that, but they have a massive uh team advantage for this one at the start of the match. Precision taking a lot of damage now. Black Rose needs to try to disengage this for the next minute or so. The OD Chan on the ground as well. This is not looking good for BR as Odie Chan scrambles back. Raiden doing what he can to try to keep his team healthy, but they haven't actually been able to find a pick quite yet. Now, this BR team just a little bit too resilient. The tieback belt's buff is going to wear off soon, um, and they're going to lose its advantage. Precision down at 50%, down at 20. Awakening Draconi is totally fine, though, as he just stands up, uses the skill, and he's fine. Oni Chan gets a clean grab on a Raiden. That Bobo Buddy CC2! Double CC for them, forcing a double V, and Sinister Synergy is on the prowl. That Precision will Raiden find his sniffed. man. Raiden gets sniffed. Down he goes. Precision finding the first man. Divios on his back. Goliath on his heels. Black Rose takes round one, even with the tieback belt. Oh my god, Johnny. Oh. What are we gosh. watching? I got chills. <laughs> I mean, this is what you get to see, right? This is the final match that you want to have. You don't want some sort of, you know, 4-0 blowout. You don't want one team to be obviously way ahead of the other. You want a battle. You want two giants slugging it out for the prize, for the win, for the chicken chicken dinner, because, oh, those make the best shows. Yeah, and the gates are up into round two here. Chell cannot afford to keep dropping these rounds. They do not have the tieback belt, and he cannot unequip it. So he's actually just down on uh, stats here. And not that it matters too, too much for the AP bracket that he's at. Precision taking yet another bad trade, but it's Divios and Oni Chan trading one back as well. Both teams getting down at 20% there. Divios is actually forced to be. Raiden actually scrambling. He doesn't know who to help. Everyone in shambles for C team right here. Divios gets sniffed out of V. Can they kill him? I don't think that. Oh, they did. They finished Divios on the side of the fight. Black Rose cannot be stopped today. Raiden gets grabbed. He is on the ground taking a lot of damage from Oni. He's gonna V. Oh my goodness, we might just see um Black Rose take this all the way home. He is gonna Raiden is dead. Bobo, oh no, Bobo is dead. Raiden is the final one left alive. 2-0 sinister synergy. Oh wow. Uh yeah, you thought I, I talked about maybe not a 4-0 blowout, but after that round, uh, <sighs> it's a little rough, that... man. Look at, I mean, poor, look at poor Raiden here. He just doesn't know who to keep alive on this one, and he just can't keep Divios on his feet. He uses all the heals in his kit, but Divios still meets his end right there. And oh man, they are two rounds from losing this thing. They just seem to not have an answer for this Black Rose squad as Precision is just an absolute monster on this Awakening Draconia. You think that Awakening Valk is good, but look at that Draconia juggling Bobo. Bobo's on the ground. Too much damage. Does not be for the Rose spam in the chat.
that as they are up looks like it's gonna be three rounds Divios is on his back as well Raiden is absolutely beside himself he cannot keep his friends alive oh my goodness they look so strong the whole tournament poor Divios running for his life right now if anyone was gonna try to turn this round into 2v3 it would be Divios but Oni Chan gets a clean grab right there it just doesn't look like they have an answer for the awakening Draconia you thought Valkyrie was good and then you saw this woman spread her wings and start flying oh my goodness that is round three right there going ugh, going sinister synergies way again are we about to see a 4-0 shutout for the black rose boys in the finals here this round right here is for seventeen hundred dollars and match point the most money anyone has ever played for in black desert it's rujix they have to be trembling right now. They know the boys are in voice cheering for them. They know the chat has them at their back. No one thought that they could do it. Now it looks like they are right on the precipice of making this happen. The gates are up for round four. Cho Nation really needs to battle this one back uh, if they want to make anything happen. Rujinx moving through the arena on that Wusa. Oni getting the grab on Divios. Oni with the grab on Divios. Look at Sagunja Plum. Oh my goodness. Raiden barely gets Divios healed back up and he keeps moving no views right there but again sinister synergy finding the picks right there oni chan creating distance between him and his opponents look at him firing from range right there rujinx buying his time awakening zerker perfect positioning while precision moves around with the iframes of awakening draconia um rujinx waiting for precision to make a pick right here divios and uh, precision just squaring off both teams just looking at each other divios goes in for the engage here does get caught here comes Raiden in for the support right there gets Divios back to his feet again both teams still at full health Rujinx putting out his thunderstorms look at the thunderstorms ahead it is cloudy with a chance of Black Rose taking this one that and he butterfly steps forward chooses to disengage bubble down at 50 percent um and it looked Raiden is running low on heals now um as Divios gets grabbed again Oni Chan slams him to the ground oh that might just be the end no he's forced to be sinister synergy on the Prowl, Raiden has to V2. Now everyone is in V and Sinister Synergy finds Raiden. He will go down. And now it looks like Oni Chan gets the grab as well. C team on the back foot of it. Black Rose might just take it all the way home. Oh my goodness. It is C team on the back foot of it. Raiden's actually still alive. It was Bobo that went down. I apologize. It's Divios and Raiden staring down three people. Can they make a 2v3 happen? There's the engage. Raiden doing his best to keep Divios healthy, but Oni Chan lands yet another grab, and Rujinx uncontested. Look at the damage on that Wusa. It looks super balanced. It looks super fair. Oh my goodness. Divios doing what he can to kick flip around and try to make anything happen on his striker right here, but getting separated from Raiden is probably not what you want. You have precision um, and Raiden squaring off at a 1v1 over there. That's not what you want to see uh, for your Awakening Valkyrie is fighting an Awakening Draconian. It is still 2v3, and it is very tense. 42 seconds left on the clock. They could still lose this if they have a tragic catch right here. Uh, and they, Divios is really low. That might just be it. Divios dies from standing. Down they go. It is Sinister Synergy crowned kings of Black Desert. The winners of the Blue Squadron Open 2024 and the largest prize pool that we have ever seen for a tournament. 4-0. Good fights to both teams. Johnny, was that what you expected? No. Oh. <laughs> no. I, I talked about it before with the performance. I, I mean, like, if you asked me an hour ago, two hours ago, who's winning this? I'd be like, yeah, probably C-Team. I think Sinister Synergy yeah, is right. going to have I, a good time. Everybody thought that, we, yeah. And then we saw the first match between C Team and Sinister Synergy, and I was like, wow. They came out, they brought heat. They brought, they, you know, they slammed their foot on the gas and were just going for it. And then they get into this last match here for the finals, for the win, for the W. And Rujinx out here spreading his clouds all over the place, saying there's a, it's partially cloudy with a 100% chance of a W, baby, because we're <laughs> taking this win and we're taking this bag. And my God, that was a performance and that was fantastic by the Rose there yeah absolutely seventeen hundred and ten dollars to the winners there for sinister synergy c team an 
absolutely incredible performance in this tournament will come up with four hundred dollars for second place uh and then rule 11 will get third place for the north american bracket an absolutely spectacular tournament i do want to thank everybody that helped it out um you cannot do this as a one person job guys i want to do a big thanks to johnny five first for co-casting with me did an incredible job johnny why don't you give yourself a shout out here yeah my name is johnny five i do the node podcast on fridays i do the siege cast on saturdays um if there's some content for it i do vod reviews throughout the week um recently yesterday i was end up gone i was handling some things uh part of that is getting an editor so now we're gonna have youtube content coming out as well um i love doing uh tournaments like this with blue whether it be i'm hosting or he's hosting so check either channel out prepare yourself for some more tournaments because darn it we're gonna do it and there's gonna be another event coming up soon which is a little bit in the works and a little bit of a surprise yeah i would love to get an uh an interview with the winners here um if if Ru Jinx and the boys would would come into voice here um would be absolutely fantastic um so well, let me let me see if I can't get a hold of Rujinx and the boys uh, and get their thoughts uh, on the matter here. Um, but we will see. I also want to give a big shout out to our tournament director, which is Kiwi, who is in the chat as well. I'll give her a shout out. She is an amazing VTuber and she coordinating the matches. Guys, the reason the tournament looked so smooth was because Kiwi was behind the scenes, making sure that every match flowed seamlessly. Please go give her a follow. She supported this tournament in a really, really big way. And I absolutely love her to death. Thank you so much, uh, Kiwi. Um, Johnny, why don't you tell me what you thought was the best match of the tournament um, while I try to get this together here? Uh, best match of the tournament? Yeah. I want to say... I think one of one of my favorites, just because of the way that it went, was the uh, Rule 11 versus Skeptic team. It was the 3-2. It was very back and forth. It was very close. It came down to the 2v2, if I remember correctly. An absolute blast of a match. Exactly what I want to see. We we, I love the close ones. You know, we have the um, um, the situation where uh, Sinister Synergy came out with a 4-0 blowout against C Team. But those three twos, those like four three matches, those are always the best, and those are always what I love to see. Yeah, absolutely insane. We are gonna get a winner's uh, interview here. Uh, Johnny, why don't you hop over to a channel in my Discord, and I will drag you in uh, for the winner's interview here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to wait for these guys to jump in, guys. Uh, again, I want to give a big shout-out to Invicta Gaming for sponsoring the tournament um, so that I can put a big community tournament like this on, guys. Um, just can't do it with all the help. Uh, the idea of a self-made man or woman is a myth, as it were. Um, you are only where you are because of the help of hundreds, if not thousands, of other people in the community who have supported me um, over this amount of time here. So... Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, uh, let me tell, uh, let, let me have them move over here. There we go. Yeah, they were talking to Armin real quick. Obviously, everybody wants uh, a word uh, with the winners of the tournament there. Sinister Synergy having an amazing clean run all the way through the tournament. They only dropped, I think, one round of the entire tournament. There's Rujinx right there. I'll move him on up. There's Rujinx. Yeah. How you doing, man? Are we going to get the other two, too, or is it just you? Oh, there we go. Wait, wait, which one is... Wait, the, the other, other guy stays Rujinx, too. Wait, is it... <laughs> I need to get moved into that interview. Okay, all right, so wait. Hey, guys. Okay, there we go. All right, we got everybody in here. Wait, why does everybody all right, stop moving? There we go. Okay, we're, we're good. Guys, <laughs> did you think it was going to go that way? Did you? Uh, yeah, like, did you guys think that you were actually just going to come out and beat Cho from the beginning? You guys, We knew that you guys were one of the favorites to win the tournament. Um, did you think that you were going to come out this convincingly and take it all the way home? Yeah, uh, I, I, I want to say we, we thought we were going to win but we felt like we had like a really sh strong chance into them because their their comp is lacking like damage like crazy they have like the peels it puts a lot of pressure on raiden to have to perform but they're they're just missing out on being able to force like v's and force certain things especially if you're able to like punish them 
Yeah, so I'm curious, without the Valkyrie here, did you guys consider having a Valkyrie in your composition? What made you kind of go with the Awakening Berserker? Obviously, the Draconia and the Wusa are considered very good. But would you, Oni, Oni, did you feel like at any point, did you guys feel like you should have had a Valkyrie? Or did you feel like Oni was just the correct decision from the beginning on the Awakening Zerker? Well, I, I think I can take that. Uh, I think our options were really pissed or peed, but he, he already had a squad and... Ruji doesn't, I mean, speaking to it, he doesn't flex that good off anything else. So it was either pissed or if he was available, not playing with details, but it was kind of a tough one there. Yeah, kind of a tough composition. Uh, were you guys uh, at all nervous coming into that uh, that final round there? What was kind of going through your head uh, into the final round there? Did you guys just think you had it in the bag? Were you shaking at all? Uh, uh, I know the tournament I... jitters might be uh, might get to you. I mean, after the first the first game... We were just wanted, we wanted to do like the same plan again. We wanted to like feel them out, see like what what kind of builds, if they made any adjustments or swaps or anything like that. But like going into the game, we just basically said let's just like 4-0 them because the first game was not that not that close. Yeah, I mean they popped a tieback round uh, belt. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they popped a tieback belt at the start of the first round and still took an L. All uh, right. In that round there, yeah. it, Precision had me scared. I'll be honest with you. In the very first round when you guys fought them in the semis, uh, Precision had me scared. They came out of the gate. DBS immediately CC'd them. I was like, oh, man, this is not this is not looking good. But you guys battled back. What was your mental kind of like after you lost that first round there? A lot of nerves, I think. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. A lot of nerves, but a lot of composure on the team. So once we, once we had that chat about what we need to do, you know, tighten up a little bit use our use our composure i think that really brought us back into that match right there all right yeah right on well is there anything else you guys want to share are you guys are any of do any of you guys stream uh or do youtube at all no nope, we all keep our secrets hidden yeah no, so that's how vr has <laughs> always been yeah they keep their secrets close like that so uh is there any special shout outs you want to give to anybody uh any of the boys back home uh because you guys uh representing vr here Harold Beanbag for coaching us all the way through. Details for, you know, giving up his spot for precision. Yeah. yeah that Ollie, all Dan. That let, us, that let us scrim them, too. Because we basically got to scrim, like, almost every team in the tournament. So, thank you, guys. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank, thank Honestly, Cho, too, you know. Fun. We, yeah. we got to thank Cho for showing up and, and wanting to compete. I know with the no-shy thing, there was a lot, of, a lot of controversy if they were going to show. But, you know, hey... Here we are, you know, we, we proved what we can do without the shies, right? And I think Cho proved what they can do without the shies. I think that's probably the biggest thing. <laughs> it just wouldn't be VR if they weren't trying to VM on the back side of it, man. How did you guys feel about the no shies rule? I know it was kind of controversial from the beginning, and it's why PA pulled support in the first place. Did you guys like the no shy rule? Did it make you more excited about the tournament or less excited? More. There's just, like, more class compositions and variety that you see in these comps yeah um i assume the rest of you felt the the exact same way there oh they're just not they're, they're all muted they're <laughs> yeah, like, he sorry. speaks for all of us he speaks for all of us you're good um okay anything any last thoughts you guys want to add i just want to say congratulations make sure you guys send me your paypal so i can get you guys paid uh in good order there um, and that goes for all the winners of the tournament. I want to say a special thanks to all the teams that came out to compete. It's just not a good tournament unless everyone comes out to compete. And we had so many teams. We had 20 teams in this tournament in a double elimination format. Absolutely incredible. And we loved watching every single one of them. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Shout out to Johnny, too. Thanks yeah. for casting everything. You guys did a great, great job. Good job, yeah. fellas. Yeah, thank, nice you, job. thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely, guys. All right. I'll move you guys out back down here. All right, Johnny. What else do you want to do? Is there any, any final thoughts you want to give? I honestly, I, I just thought it was an absolute fantastic tournament. I was very happy that the decision to, to not have shies was there. It allowed for a bit more of a composition um, switch than what we've seen in the past. Obviously, there was a very heavy set of Draconias and Valkyries to kind of make up for that. Um, but I mean, still, it was something different. It was something nice to see. Um, overall, the sheer amount of players that came out to the, the tournament itself, who applied for it, who played in it, who showed their stuff, really appreciate that. 
um, as a caster and as somebody who enjoys this kind of content. Thank you for you guys for showing up for this. It's you guys who make these tournaments just as awesome as everyone else. So thanks for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Big thanks to everybody that came out to support the tournament in any way. Um, CPC, PSC, you in the chat. You guys did absolutely amazing too. I love seeing you, Mef, and Multi uh, play together every time. From all of us here on the caster desk, guys, um, we wish you a great rest of the day. The tournament is not over yet. The EU bracket is at 12 p.m., so noon Central European time tomorrow. We will see the EU finals as well. Uh, that is, I think, something like 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, or my time uh, in NA, so so um, make sure you catch that as well. And again, all of the highlights and everything will be on YouTube from all of us here that helped the tournament. Have a great rest of your night, guys.